sorry. So it looks like we're set up for the next run. And it's gonna be Dragon Warrior 2, any percent by some Diener. Take it away. Thank you very much, Bria. Um, as, uh, as I said, my name is Sum Diener, and I'm gonna be playing Dragon Warrior 2 Game Boy Color version, any percent speedrun for you guys today. Um, I'm joined uh, by two of my friends here, so why don't you guys introduce yourselves really quickly? Uh, my name is Purple Mario 920. And I'm Shiner CCC. I just commentated the Dragon Warrior 2 TAS that the Axeman made for the NES version. Yeah, that TAS was a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to see something slightly different with the RTA. Just a little different, you know? Um, I'm glad you guys are here. These are some good friends of mine and fellow Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, RTA um, runners. So. Um, Without further ado, we're gonna have time and opportunity to introduce the run and talk a little bit more about it once we get started. So I would really much just like to get started. So I'm gonna ask that the uh, donation incentives for the, the names, the bid wars for our names, all three characters be cut off at this point. And I'm gonna need the winning name first for the Prince of Laurasia. So the Prince of Laurasia mm -hmm. um, will be named Capital B D D. Capital B D D. Oh, that is awesome! I'm so happy to see that name. Uh, that's actually a name I use for my practice files. So <laughs> it's a nickname given to me. I'm told me I was kind of a big deal. So I'm big deal Deaner B D D. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna um, also pick the uh, the message speed here. Um, the this is for the battle tech speed. We actually pick eight, which is the slowest. Um, what this does is it's um, it, the battle messages are gonna wait for my input. So my turbo mashing will actually be faster than uh, the fast message speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. Normally this is where the run would begin, um, but since we can uh, actually name the other characters in this version, we uh, went ahead and had donation incentives for those as well. Normally, as we saw in the, the NES version, the other two characters are named based off of whatever I name the first character. But in this game, with my file selected, if I hold start and hold left on my D-pad when I select my file, it should give me a name entry screen for Prince Canock. So now I need the uh, winning name entry for Prince Canock. Okay. And it looks like box with one hundred dollars. Box, my poor Sama box. Okay, great. And then we're gonna do the same thing, except hold right on the D-pad, and we'll get a name entry for Moonbrook. So it's time to cut off the donations for Princess of Moonbrook. A last-minute upset. Uh, oh. Meow is the name of Princess oh, Moonbrook. Meow. That's really funny because she gets transformed into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got our, our three heroes named and it's all start, we're all set to start the run. So are you, are you guys ready for Dragon Warrior 2? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah, I am too. So um, I'm ready to uh, start. So um, I'm gonna count it down and we're gonna get started. So three, two, one, go. Okay, the start of the run here is actually a, an unskippable cutscene. It's approximately five minutes long, but uh, once this cutscene is over, there are no more cutscenes like this in the game. It's until the run is over. So once we get control of our character, it'll be pretty much full steam ahead. So right now, this is uh, the Game Boy Color version of Dragon Warrior 2. Um, it was based off of the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo version, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2. So you get both Dragon Warrior 1 and 2 on the same card. Quick RPG Limit Break history lesson. The uh, Dragon Warrior 1 version of Dragon, or excuse me, the Game Boy Color version of Dragon Warrior 1 
was played at a previous RPG Limit Break, actually the very first RPG Limit Break, all the way back in 2015 by my good friend Jire. So I'm really excited to be here and uh, getting to complete the, complete the adventure here. So this is a direct sequel to Dragon Warrior 1 uh, in terms of story. It's 100 years in the future, and uh, the hero of Dragon Warrior 1 and his descendants founded three kingdoms. Uh, Lorasia, which is known as Middenhall or Midenhall in the original NES version, Canock, and Moonbrook. Our game in the cutscene here starts in Moonbrook Castle, as the peace is going to be interrupted by uh, the vile forces of some warlock, whatever his name is. I'm sure we'll meet him at some point. Possibly. For those of you who are familiar with the original NES version, or if you saw the TAS earlier, the general overworld uh, quest objectives and flow of the, the game is going to be pretty much the same, but in terms of monster difficulty and whatnot, the, the game has been significantly rebalanced. Um, my characters are generally stronger, spells are more powerful, and we have access to some better equipment options. Monsters have also been sort of toned down in their degree of difficulty, and uh, in particular, much more vulnerable to status effects like sleep. And initiative, uh, the turn order in battle, is actually quite a bit more predictable, a little bit more stable. Isn't but, this the Dragon Warrior Monsters boss music? Uh, I'm not sure. But this was uh, added for the uh, SFC version, so it was from that. Oh, maybe that's why it sounds um, familiar to so, me. So, um... The main focus of this game is actually going to be dealing with the game's dangerous random encounters. Even though the game has been rebalanced, it's gone from being basically brutally unfair to being fair, but very difficult. Um, most of the situations that I'm going to be finding myself in, my characters are going to have very good weapons and armor, but my levels are going to be absolutely rock bottom as we progress through. So it's up to uh, the runner, me in this case, to make good decisions about how to progress in the game. Um, whether that be moment-to-moment -moment decisions in the middle of battles, how to best to budget my resources over the course of a long section, or even making adjustments to my route based on how the run is going. So um, it requires a lot of knowledge to play this game very well, uh, and practically an encyclopedic knowledge of every single monster, their strengths, weaknesses, um, their endurance, their vulnerability to status effects, and things like that, in order to make all of the decisions I need to to progress safely. Uh, it's approximately a four-hour run. Uh, estimate is four hours and ten minutes. Um, and about three-quarters of that run is going to be spent progressing through the game and completing the various quest objectives that we need to do to unlock the final dungeon. And the last 25% of the run will be spent earning more experience points so that we can actually conquer the challenges at the end and then taking care of business when it comes time. So, all right, well, the uh, tragic fall of Moonbrook has happened again. Yeah, they, and, they designed uh, the courtyard differently, made it safer by not having that narrow causeway that the king would get trapped in, but he still got wrecked by that spellcaster who came in and hit him with Blazemore from behind. Okay, so we're almost done the cutscene. There's some dialogue where I've actually got control, and we're going to very soon meet our first hero, Prince Lorasia. Prince BDD of Lorasia. And um, Prince Lorasia is, uh, is our classic soldier archetype. He's going to have access to all the best weapons and armor. He's going to have the highest HP, defense, and attack power and whatnot. But he's also the slowest of my three party members, and has access to no magic spells at all. So... The other two characters are going to have magic, but BDD here, he's going to have no magic. Just swinging the sword. It's good. Okay, so I'm going to get control here, and like I said, once we get control, it's pretty much full steam ahead. I'm going to head downstairs, and my dad is going to give me a treasure box uh, filled with 50 gold and a copper sword, and I'm going to take that to the item store. I'm going to buy and sell some specific items in a very specific order. Uh, Mario, you want to talk really quickly about what's going on here? Sure. So basically, um, there's a very intricate list of uh, sellings and buyings of everything here. What Diener is doing is basically taking the 50 gold and a sword and turning it into all the advanced equipment that we need to be able to survive by getting um, lottery tickets, basically. Um, each one of those is worth 53 gold. You do this by basically, um, there's like a formula where the remainder after dividing by 16, um, the game decides if you get a lottery token or not. 
Um, so you do that a lot by like selling herbs, buying herbs, selling herbs, and then buying something else. He's also going to get a couple shields and um, a couple herbs in this first round. There's going to be a second round um, in a little bit. Um, this is definitely something that you uh, work on, and it's very precise, so you want to make sure that you get it all right. Yeah, I'm referencing a little note card here that um, was made by my very good friend Evilash25. Um, so uh, he put together this chart. There's actually some intricacy with this because there are two possible outcomes based off of the frame that you speak with the merchant on. I'm just checking my equipment, make sure I have everything. After those 19 transactions, uh, as Mario said, I have two leather shields. One of them is equipped, the other one we'll give to Prince Cannot shortly. Three slot tokens that we're going to use to get money for another big buy-sell kind of thing when we get uh, our second character, Prince Cannot. And we have four medical herbs, which we're going to use to help complete the uh, things that we need to in order to get Prince Cannot in our party. That's going to be our first major goal of the game, is recruiting our other two characters to went too far north there. Um, so to get Canok, there are three quest triggers that we need to activate. Um, the first one here is in Canok Castle, so I pet to the north here. Oh, fight right outside it. Good. And I need to speak with the king here. Um, we're going to be running away from all the monsters until I recruit Prince Canok. Uh, part of that is because I sold my sword and I don't have a weapon, fighting things would be kind of tricky, but also because, um, my son box. Oh, there's some stairs going up here. Those aren't there in the NES version. Yeah, he's got a little, uh, bedroom up there. Ah, quality um, of living has improved in Game Boy Color Land. Um, so, uh, but also if I were to defeat monsters, I would earn gold, and I don't not want to earn gold just yet. Um, we definitely want to earn gold later, but in the early part of the run, we do not want to earn gold coins. We want to uh, complete this section with zero gold in my bag. Right now, I'm holding a single gold coin, which I'll drop in a little bit. Yeah, when you die, you lose half your gold. Looks like it's rounded up. This game is merciless. Okay, so the second thing we've got to do is head over to the Spring of Bravery. Run luck is being a little bit bit rough. Um, when I attempt to run away from monsters, the first time I try is a 50-50 chance. The second time is also a 50-50 chance. The third time I try and run away, my odds are, go up to 75%. And uh, the fourth try and beyond, my odds go up to 87.5%, a 7 eighths chance. We actually never gain a 100% run rate, unless we're a very high level, which rarely happens in this speed run. Um, Another interest, or important thing to know about attempting to run away is when I fail to run away, all of the enemies are going to take an action. And this can be very, very dangerous. It's why running away from monsters later on in the game is generally a horribly bad idea, because they will they will uh, do a lot of damage. And, uh, oh, uh oh, that's fine. I chose defense, so I still have enough HP. That was a missed input, but that's okay. All of these enemies pretty much here are a lot faster than... Than my, than my hero here. So if I want to be, um, if I want to heal myself in battle, I need to be proactive about it. I need to make sure not to wait too long because otherwise if I go to heal and I'm very weak, the enemies will just go faster than me and kill me before I can. So um, it requires me to understand very specifically how much damage each of these enemies is capable of doing to me and um, adjusting accordingly and being proactive about, about healing myself in this part. I'm down to one medical herb, which is a little bit, starting to get a little bit more tense. Uh, but I hit a lot of encounters in, so far in this cave, so. 20. Uh, let's just go ahead and use the last medical herb. a small chance I could have gotten upset there, but we'll just use the last metal card to be as safe as possible. Nice. Good, we made it. I'm going to take my equipment off as, and then talk to the old man. Good. So this is the second flag to recruit Canoc. The third one is back in Lorasia Castle. So we're going to be performing something in, called a death warp. Uh, and as, as Shiner said, when you die in Dragon Warrior and Dragon Quest games, you don't get game over. You get sent back to the last place you saved the game, and we lose half of our gold, which is actually what I want. Uh, so we were sent back to Laurasia, and then immediately I can talk to my dad. This is the third flag I need to recruit oh. Tanok. 
You didn't have to come back here in the NES version. Nope, this was added. I accidentally talked to him again, so we're just going to really quickly spam through that text. And always equip. Yeah, get suited up again after having mm -hmm. a bath at the spring. Okay, good. With all three of those things taken care of, no problem, we're ready to head over to Left Wind Village and meet up with our good friend, our cousin, Prince Box of Canal. So if we just go a little bit further, it'll just be blue slimes and slugs, so hopefully this is not a big deal to get there. Although since I have no gold, I guess if I were to mysteriously die on the way to left win, it would not be a problem. Yep, just gotta make the walk again. Yep, so we want to come here with this section with zero gold and three slot tokens. We're gonna do another very big buy-sell transaction set up here. Uh, once I get Prince Canock, here he is. Oops. <laughs> We're, we got to show off the new upstairs in the Game Boy Color version. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. Oh, we can talk to him across the table. Yep. The quality of life is so big. Okay, so we've recruited Prince Box of Canock. Canock is a mid-range character who's going to have some strong weapons. He can equip the light sword in this version, but his armor options are pretty bad, and he has pretty low defense power. Uh, he's got some good magic spells. Um, but the really important thing is that towards the end of the game, he's going to learn some very powerful spells. Well, he is a bit of a uh, weaker character compared to our other two characters in this version to start for a good bit. He's going to uh, get his opportunity to shine at the end of the game. Uh, I've got a lot of buying and selling to do, and it's important that I concentrate on this and buy these items in a very specific order. Um, so if I could pass it over to the host for a minute, um, feel free to, to read some, some messages for us while I set all this up. I'd appreciate it. Um, so, we've got some donations. Um, Michael and Charlene Dean donate. <laughs> Hi, Dad. $400. Uh, hey, some Diener, if you need help landing that damn bird, give me a call. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oops, I think I got the wrong game again. Oh, that's, that's totally fine. And hey, you know, um, Mom, uh, there are in fact going to be orcs in this game. They are in fact going to be evil, and we are going to have to fight them, so... Uh, Thanks so much. I love you guys. Um, Big Fum Balls donates twenty dollars. Had to stay up for my boy Giga Diener. I can't. Hey, Vic. Good to see you. I can't wait for you to conquer this run so you can bust out Castlevania Three for the next year's limit break, since it's for sure an RPG. <laughs> Good luck and have fun, bunny. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh oh. Are we? Are we having a problem here? I think we might be having a problem. I think I messed up. Uh-oh. Um, where was I? Power of math. What, what modulus are we looking for? Oh, I don't know. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, oh, oh, okay, I know how to fix this. Yeah, again, our, our chance of getting a slot token in this version is based off the, the ones digit of our gold, basically. Okay, I have 335 gold, let's... Um, I think I missed a couple of things, but if I'm missing the antidote herbs, I guess that's probably not a problem. Wait, what the... No, this is... This is really wrong. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm actually gonna have to reset the game. That's fine, it happens. It's just a short walk from Laurasia to left wind. I, I'm really sorry. I, I messed something up on my on my sequence and uh, I don't know what happened. Oops. If you're wondering why we do something like this at the very beginning of the game, if you've ever played Dragon Warrior 2 or Dragon Quest 2, you know that um, in order to get the uh, to grind up the cash for all the best weapons and everything, it takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, so basically, this just saves so much time. You immediately get the best uh, weapons that you need, need to be able to fight off all the enemies, and that allows you to go further quicker. Mm -hmm. You can see the potential is humongous. We're, we're level one with zero victories, and already we're carrying around about 350 gold. We're 
We're way beyond the curve. Yeah, in terms we're gonna of we're gonna try and get about 450 gold worth of uh, items and supplies here. Um, unfortunately, I I made a mistake, and that's on me. Maybe I'm just a little nervous. That's all good. It happens to all of us. Yeah. This, these these menus, uh, the the first thing that you learn when you when you pick up this uh, run, and and um, I can speak from experience. It's it's you drill, you drill, you drill, and then you get it into a run, and you're like, oh, did I forget one thing? Yeah. Oh it's... no. And then your mind starts to try to fix it because you understand how the math works, and then it just becomes kind of a should I just reset or continue trying to fix it? And yeah, but yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. It's going to cost me a couple of minutes, but um, it's not the end of the world. Definitely not the end of the world. I'll just take a deep breath, and I will concentrate really hard this time and do it correctly. I like how so. Prince Box teleported across the table to mm -hmm. get in line behind you. Yeah. So we're selling the three slot tokens. I might narrate it a little bit. There you go. Myself. We're going to buy herb. Uh, sell herb. And then buy it back and see if I get a ticket. I did not get a ticket, so we're gonna sell the herb and buy it again. This time I should certainly get a ticket. Good. Now we're gonna buy two antidotes. And then I should have two tokens. One. The menu has also changed ever so slightly based off of how many medical herbs that you've used in the first part too. So. The music in this version is also enhanced. Like this, this section of the music is not in the NES version of the soundtrack at all. Two hundred and twenty-five gold. Okay, sell token. Uh, there's the other one. Two. Uh, okay, I have three hundred and thirty-one gold correctly. Okay, I'm being very deliberate about doing this correctly. I do not want to make a mistake again. Okay, we're gonna buy an antidote. And we're going to sell the two antidotes and the club. And we should have 378 gold after this. Okay, then we're going to buy the three wings. Okay, almost done. Uh, oh, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to do some... Oops, goodness. Advancing the text and the confirm button are the same button here in this menu, so I need to be a little bit careful if you see me fussing with some menus there a lot, then that's probably what's going on. Okay, we're going to buy two more medical herbs. Then we're going to sell two tokens. Okay, we're going to buy herbs to max. There should be six in all. Yeah. Use my turbo a little bit here to get this going nice and quickly. Um, we should be at 329 gold by the end of it. Okay, so my character's inventories are full now. We're gonna sell slot token, and then one more slot token, and I should have 430 something gold. Five. Good. Yep. Perfect. Good. All right. Awesome. There we go. There we go. It's a really long menu, um, and it's I. It's it's really hard to do this while talking and or having anyone talk around you. So I give him all the props in the world. I've never tried to do it with anyone else in the room, except maybe a nephew or two. All right. So by the end of that, we've got a chain sickle for uh, Prince BDD and a copper sword for Prince Box. Now that we're armed up with some better weapons, it's ready. We're ready to actually advance the game now. Um, so um, we're going for silver key right now. No. No, we don't go to, for the silver key. We're going directly to Hamelin Village. Or, oh. oh, it's a little further west, right? Yeah. I thought it, I thought the gate was straight south, but nope. no. The geography we, should be the same as the NES yes, version. Yes, yes. The geography of the overworld should be the same, and uh, where all of the items are hidden in the game world is, is the same. Okay, cool. So we're going to be seeing something a bit more common uh, thematically with the run, which is me fighting random encounters. There's a lot of random encounter fighting in this game, partly because of how dangerous the monsters are, but partly because that's the only way we can earn experience and gold to progress the game. I'm kind of surprised BDD is only doing like five damage with chains. That's like that's the one. minimum damage roll he must have hit there. Yeah, I got a seven right after. 
does, spell. Does Prince Box start with heal? Yes. Okay. At level one, he has heal spell. And um, we're going to be working on getting ourselves to Hamlin Village, which is good. 12 experience points we get to level two on Prince BDD. Uh, the stat gains for our characters are 100% fixed. We get the exact same stat gains every time we play this run, which is extremely important. We're uh, counting on having certain amounts of HP or strength or attack, you know, defense power at specific parts of the game. Um, and uh, uh, if our stat gains were not the same every time, that would be a big headache. Oh boy, that's not good. Poor Prince Box already getting sent to the Sama Box. Darn. Ooh. A tough fight here to take at level uh, two, level one, but um, I was trying to progress forward. It looks like I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit though. I get a big boost of strength at level three that's gonna make progressing a little bit easier too, but wow, I'm having <laughs> quite a few setbacks at the start yeah. here. Uh, Don't go right. through alone, it's dangerous. You have to take Prince Kanek with you, and then yeah, 30 and seconds then, later, one died. guy comes back alive. That's pretty much what happened. Am I gonna die here too? <clears throat> no, not with the 435 at two! That's... Oh wait, right, we spent it. We spent it on gear. Yeah. That's still some decent capital though. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I need to revive my poor Prince Canog, so... Oops. Yeah, the, in the NES version, revive costs were really messed up. They blow up out of control way too quickly. Um, yeah, in this game, it's I have to spend 20 gold for every character level. Unfortunately, he died so fast, he didn't level up. Like so. linearly? Yes, it's 20, 40, 60, oh, 80, they, 100. They kept some of that meanness from the NES version, then. It means that the early game reviving... Oops, really you chest. It means reviving is very expensive. All right. Yeah, in Dragon Warrior 4, revive costs are like, they stay at 10 for the first three or four levels, then become 20 for a few more, and Oops. then they start going up by 10 or 20 every uh -huh. level. There's kind of like some, some mercy levels in the early yeah. going, but no, not in Dragon Warrior 2. No, not so much in this one. I'm trying to avoid dying as much as I can, but... This I'm... is definitely the second hardest game in the entire series, other than 7. Or maybe 11 with some Draconian challenges. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm definitely having a rough early game here. Uh, Ain't no more. Partly my own fault and partly the, partly the snakes. The great thing about this game, though, is that no matter how rough this one segment is, the next segment's just gonna completely turn around and be something mm. completely different. Yeah. Um, and, uh, while I am having a little bit of a setback, I've already earned some of the levels that I'm gonna want later, so, uh, it's not all doom and gloom having to backtrack a little bit there but we're trying to get the hamlin village to add our third party members yeah, as early at, as at, possible at, at this timing i would prefer to already be in hamlin with moonbrook recruited but we're a little bit behind that's okay extra experience for the princes yeah it will make getting the mirror perhaps a tiny bit easier um but yes we're working our way to hamlin village where we need to um, um complete a quest to recruit our third character you know, BDD's damage is already getting better from mm -hmm. some natural strength. Yeah, uh, level three, he picked up a good five points of strength, which is going to make progressing through here a lot, a lot easier. Um, if you are uh, uh, not quite so confident in your your abilities here, it definitely makes sense to grind up to level three before coming in here. I tried to come in at level two, and I got immediately one of the hardest fights and. Yeah, I, I blinked and missed how the Cobras took you down. I was busy conducting the battle music, which has a, a measure of 3-4 in it. There's one missing beat in there somewhere. Okay, well, we made it much much easier through the cave that time. Um, before I reach the town, it's going to also be one of my objectives to get Prince Sama to reach, or excuse me, Prince Kanok to reach uh, level 3. Uh, once he reaches level 3, he's going to learn a new spell called Fireball. Fireball is an attack magic spell that does 16 to 20 damage which is a lot, but there are also a couple enemies around here who, there we go. There's Firebell. Uh, who um, have very high defense power and it's gonna be hard to fight them. And I actually do have a little bit of MP if I needed to use it. I'll use one, three of my MP, half of my MP to heal, but I have enough to cast either spell now. Were you walking west and east on the edge of that forest because it's the boundary of a new encounter zone? 
trying to force an encounter before heading through this There's territory. A lot of monsters. This is so stressful. Okay, I'm out of antidote herbs, right? Mm -hmm. but, oh, right I thought you had one. Uh, I had two. I used one when oh, yeah, the first set of snakes and uh, the other set um, on the other. But that's okay. We'll buy another antidote when we get to the town. Poison's pretty gentle in this game. It's one HP every four steps. But yeah, there there are some encounter zones further as we get closer to the town. I do want to stay on the uh, left hand side there. The right hand side, we're gonna run into baboons possibly. I definitely don't want that. Not right now. Okay, good. We made it to Hamlin safely this time, and uh, I stayed at the inn. And I'm gonna purchase an antidote herb because I'm poisoned. I think it's cheaper than uh, asking the priest to heal you. It's probably faster because I avoid a jingle too. Yeah, I don't you know also if he does avoid the revive the... jingle, the full revive jingle or whatever. Yeah, that's sus four, sus two yeah. resolution takes forever. Okay, we've reached Hamlin here. I'm gonna save the game in this town. There's two important reasons why I'm saving the game. Woof woof. Um, the dog's gonna come with me for a minute here. Um, well, the first reason is because we need to get Raw's mirror, um, and uh, it's actually pretty dangerous to go through here passing through some of the encounter zones here specifically, I might run into the baboons I just mentioned, which, oh, these are ants, these aren't gonna, these aren't gonna be a problem. But I'm gonna take some specific pathing around the more dangerous encounter zones while I work my way towards getting Raw's Mirror. Raw's Mirror is a quest objective item that I need in order to break the curse on Princess Moonbrook and recruit her into the party. I'm gonna run from many of the monsters in this part just to keep it quick. Uh, but if there are some dangerous enemies, like uh, the sleep ant, the magic ant, if that guy shows up, I might have to deal with, might have to deal with that. Okay. Uh, but these guys, the smokes are basically harmless. They're not gonna, they're not gonna bother me. Are the encounter rates the same on every type of terrain? Or um, do they vary like the um, old no. NES games? No. And in fact, this game uses a much different system to draw encounters. Uh, every time I head onto the overworld or get out of a fight, the game draw picks a random value. And as I'm walking around on the overworld, that value is counting down to zero. And when it hits zero, uh, I get a fight. Certain tiles cause that value to drop faster than others. So the grass tiles deplete at the slowest. Well, actually, the ocean tiles deplete at the slowest. Grass tiles deplete at slower than the forest tiles, which deplete at slower than the hill tiles, which are are the fastest uh, encounter zones. So there's also some degree of uh, pathing around the terrain to reduce my encounter rate as well. Okay, good, we used Ra's mirror, it's called Lar Mirror here, to break the curse on Princess Moonbrook. Princess Meow of Moonbrook. She's joined the party, she's not a dog anymore, she's a cat. Meow. Meow. Perfect, now I've got all three of my party members together. I'm gonna give her a medical herb just to hold on to and maybe use, and we're gonna save the game. And I'm gonna start working on earning some experience points. Now that I've got all three of my characters, all three of my characters are gonna earn experience points when I uh, complete random encounters. I'm gonna save the game just in case something goes really wrong in this fight. Ooh, this is an easy fight. And I'm gonna work on doing a little bit of level grinding here now that I have all three of my characters. I've recruited Princess Moonbrook, who is a very powerful spellcaster. Um, she gets access to some extremely powerful spells and has tons of MP and is far and away the fastest character in my party. But she's a, a wizard who basically has no powerful uh, armor or weapons, the lowest HP of everyone in my party. Um, but uh, she is going to learn some very powerful magic spells uh, combined with her high agility. She's going to be my, um, my way of uh, um, handling dangerous situations by hopefully going first and hopefully neutralizing many of the more dangerous monsters before they have a chance to neutralize me. Yeah, but the random encounters in this game are, like, the buff spells in this game are basically useless, and uh, the enemy's HP is such that you can, our uh, Prince BDD is almost strong enough to one-shot them, so maybe with the casters they can add a little more. It's kind of like kill them before they kill you. There's, every, every fight is just an all-out scrap, mm -hmm. very tactical. That's why I'm doing a little bit of level grinding here. Moonbrook starts with the heal more spell, uh, extremely powerful heal spell, un but she doesn't know anything else. Once we earn 100 experience points, though, she's going to learn a new spell when she levels up called Sleep. Sleep spell is one of the most powerful spells in the entire game. Combined with her high agility, it's the uh, 
the most important tool I have for uh, fighting enemies that can be put to sleep. Any enemy that can be put to sleep, I'm probably going to try and try and put it to sleep. So good, we, we reached level 2 and we learned the sleep spell. Additionally, she's going to learn another very useful spell at level 4 called Infernos. Infernos is a group attack magic that actually has a very high damage range. It can do as little as 16 damage and as much as 36. Uh, it's actually a very useful spell that we're going to be using a lot uh, as well throughout the whole run. So we also want to work towards getting um, enough experience to reach reach that threshold as well. So we're going to continue. Uh... Yo, nice, nice, oh, nice, guys. nice critical hit. Get him, Linda. Meow, meow. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm just going to focus on hanging out here and fighting a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra monsters. I'm also very much interested in trying to build up my gold pool as well. Uh, by the end of this section, I want to make sure that I've acquired at least 1,500 gold coins uh, so that I can purchase a new weapon before we leave town. Uh, Diener, what monsters down here would you think would be the most time efficient to grind off of? Uh, yeah, um, I'm really looking out for the lizard flies, the tasty lizard flies. Um, compared to some of the enemies out here, they give a good bit of experience. I think they're 28 points apiece. Wow. They're very easy to kill and generally not to, uh, uh, here I go, sleep on the lizard drackies. Like I don't the whole group. Sleep much more likely to land in this version yes, compared to any Yes, they greatly changed the monster's resistances to status effects. They tend to be a lot more vulnerable to them, and that's really important. Um, like I said, combined with uh, Princess Meow's super high agility, we're pretty much counting on that to get out of some, some of the more dangerous situations we're going to find ourselves in. Okay. I believe Dragon Quest... Five, maybe even six was out by the time this game came out so by then enix had gotten much better at balancing these games so uh i believe this was kind of remade from the ground up to more resemble the later games in the series the spells were rebalanced like a uh, sap and defense oh wait sap doesn't exist in this game but yeah it's just... the group attack version defense uh works like the other versions like the other games where two casts of it will reduce the enemy's defense power to zero mm -hmm. it just takes away half it's more like uh Shin Megami Tensei games where it's like or even uh, Dragon Quest 8 or 9 and 11 where just two stacks makes their defense basically zero. Oh, tasty. Nice. Ooh, tasty lizard flies. Alright, this is a good fight here. I was uh, thinking uh, the armor feeds would be great for a reward but you have to use your magic. Their defense yeah. is too high. Yeah, they can be a little bit slower to beat. I want the lizard flies. I can usually beat them two at a time and uh, get a lot of XP that way. Good. always makes me smile when Prince BDD goes first. Yeah, the uh, slowest character going first, huh? Yeah, agility rolls. He's not that much of a slowpoke in this game. He er is slower, I but guess. not as slow as other, uh, like, meathead archetypes right. in other Dragon er Quest early, games. Early on, we won't, we won't see it be too bad. When we fight some of the final bosses, he's almost certainly going to be slower than them, though. Okay, uh, right now we are going to... Um, we're going to need an item called the Wind Mantle to progress the game forward. It's hidden in the tower, the Tower of Wind, um, but we're not quite ready to go there yet. Oh, they didn't even see me. That's kind of nice. Uh, thinking about the most efficient way of dealing with this, I'm just going to attack to beat this one. Then I can do um, attack plus fireball. Should hopefully clear everything. If not, the baboon is almost dead. I'll finish it off. Sleep is so good. Yeah, sleep is our one of our most powerful spells, and hence you can see why we uh, took the time to make sure we got it We're as quickly as possible. Like, we have our starting leathered armor gear, so those baboons would hit really hard, but think about it this way. Do you want to use 5 MP for Moon's Heal more at a time, or just hit everybody with sleep for 2 MP and take zero damage? And that's a very good point. You'll see, generally speaking, that... Um, attack spells and status effect spells are a lot cheaper to cast than healing magic is. Ooh, oh, metal get, uh, get crit, 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 oh, crit, oh, oh. Oh, oh, he's gone. Getting a thousand, that tease. getting a thousand experience points here would be pretty nice. You help me get caught up. I think the critical hit chance in this game is pretty low. Yeah, it's not great. I've got to wait for this flame spirit to move. I hope he doesn't move up. Oh, nice. Oh. He moved left. I've almost never seen I, him move I didn't left. know he could move left. <laughs> <laughs> this was Final Fantasy for NES. He absolutely would have blocked the passageway and made you wait. It, I thought it was like Zoolander or something. So, um, 
yeah, I was saying earlier, we need to go to the Tower of Wind. We're not actually quite ready to go there yet. Um, I want to make sure I get level four and learn the Inferno spell before I head to the Tower of Wind. That's kind of way we've made this detour over to Moonbrook Castle. There's an item hidden here in the basement. While not strictly required, it's a life acorn. Uh, PM, you want to talk about what a life acorn is? Yeah, so basically in the Dragon Quest series, there's all these seeds. Uh, seeds of life, seeds of magic, agility seeds, strength seeds. Um, and um, they really add to um, your stats. So basically these seeds of life, we're going to be getting, I believe, four in this mm -hmm. uh, particular run. Three of them are going to go on the prince, and they help us survive. Without them, we would not even survive the first round of a mini boss fight later. Um, and yeah, in, in some of the other seeds, you'll see that they really basically take us like a few levels up above where we should be. And because of that, we can fight more dangerous enemies earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are uh, four life acorns we're going to get. We're going to get three of them pretty early on in the run and give those three to Prince Box. Uh, and get his HP bolstered for some of the more difficult stuff coming up ahead. We'll get a fourth life acorn uh, in the midpoint of the game, and we'll give that to Princess Moonbrook. Uh, I didn't earn really any experience. Yeah, the there castle. was like no nothing, fights in there. Or nothing was really worth fighting. So, yeah, those zombies have about 40 HP each. They and can they, they cast can defend. surround. They can also defend, which yeah. cuts damage in half. That's really just a slog to beat them. So. Yeah. Even versus spells, defending. Halves damage from spells in this series, too. It's honestly a pretty good move. I mean, the Dragon Quest series is one of the oldest there is for RPGs. There's usually not any gimmicks in it. it you have very limited options, so you got to use what you can to your advantage. So it is going to take me a little bit longer to get the experience points and gold I need. Good. BDD reaching level 7. He gains a whopping 9 points of strength. It's one of his best level ups. Um, and that nine points of strength actually makes fighting in this region a lot easier. I'm not sure I needed that in, but whatever. I'm a little behind and uh, experience is a little low. I think, well, it's not the safest thing to do. I think oh. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Tower of Wind We're doing and, it. and earn it along the way. Getting level four before we head to the Tower of Wind is preferred because not only does she learn Infernos at level four, and I can use it right away, um, she also gains nine points of maximum MP which ends up adding up to three additional casts of Infernos. I have a lot more resources if I wait to get to level four before I set out. While the Tower of Wind is not usually a dungeon that I'm really uh, taxing my resources a lot, um, if I do gain that level four before setting out, it makes this part very comfortable. Um, we've come here a little more aggressively because I'm be a little behind, but uh, and I don't want to spend any more time there, but... Uh, Hopefully it won't be too bad. So far, it's there, good. there we go. She's got level four now. I was close to nine. Oh, oh, we I got, got a, a I drop. Got a, I got a slot token drop too. Nice. It's an extra fifty-three gold. Mm-hmm. When we complete an encounter, the last enemy that we defeated on the screen—that's the enemy that can potentially drop an item. Each monster has a different item that it can drop, and at a different specific rate that it will drop that item. Uh, I am interested in collecting more gold in this early section to purchase a more powerful war sword, like I said earlier. Uh, perfect timing on... Uh, actually, let me do this slightly differently. Okay, there we go. Uh, perfect timing on getting Infernos. We can see how powerful Infernos is. It's actually guaranteed to kill these lizard flies. They don't have enough health to survive even the minimum damage roll from, from uh, Infernos. So they're going to go down really quickly. Spell names in the series have been interesting. And I earn a lot of experience from a fight like that, too, so I'm, I'm very happy. Some, I'll go ahead, Peter. Oh, uh, some of the other encounters, like more zombies and smokes and snakes and stuff. Again, we're not interested in fighting those. Yeah, I think the spell names in the original Japanese were sort of supposed to be more onomatopoeic, so translating them into English. In Dragon Warrior 1, they were just in all caps and just explicitly what they did, like yeah, heal it's, and hurt. It's, it's pretty obvious to tell what many of these spells do. They literally tell you what it is that they do. Although, yeah. Uh, which is kind of nice sometimes. It's, it's, it's not confusing. You don't get... Yeah, nothing confusing like wizardry or like uh, uh, Mahalito or SMT spell names like <laughs> you know, Bazinga Dine or whatever. <laughs> All right, good. We've made it here to the Tower of Wind. We're going to uh, progress through here. Um, the lower floors are going to have mostly weaker encounters, but as I climb further up, we might see the ghost rats. The ghost rats are 
a little bit stronger and I'm gonna have to make sure I fight them. There are three treasures in particular I'm looking to get here. I mentioned earlier the quest item I need, the Wind Mantle. I'm also gonna open up that box there. It's got money in inside, about 350 gold. The exact amount of gold that's in that box is actually slightly different every single run, but it's always about 350. A couple of percentage points here and there. It's not a big deal. And we're gonna make our way around the edge here. Okay, yeah, here we go, Strats. We definitely want to see uh, battles in here that we can take because we have a specific amount of gold and experience that we want to have, or at least gold for sure, mm -hmm. before we continue on after this tower. And the more gold that we can get here, the easier that becomes. Let's just go ahead and cast Infernus again and kill the, the bonus one. Okay. Those guys give 25 gold apiece and are generally pretty easy to beat if I get the jump on them like that. So happy to earn some gold from them. I'll be able to check how much gold I have once I finish the uh, dungeon and I get ready to warp. If I have 1,500 gold, then we'll be able to progress. And if I don't, I'll have to spend a, a moment getting a little bit more. So there we go, we picked up the Wind Mantle and then we're gonna backtrack because there's one more very important treasure chest I want to get. Hidden on the top of the Tower of Wind is a treasure chest that has an item inside called a Wizard Ring. PM, you want to describe what a wizard ring does for me? Absolutely. Uh, wizard rings are basically how we accomplish this entire run. Um, they um, basically recover MP for you, but they have a 10% chance of breaking. So they're absolutely until the very final place in the game, in the for the final grind and the final bosses, they are emergency only, or you can use them after you've just made a save and you can reset if one breaks. But yeah, you hands off the rings unless if it's an absolute emergency yeah so the wizard ring is an item it's the only thing that i can use outside of a town to recover my mp each time you use it it recovers about 20 to 25 mp and it has a small chance of breaking and once it breaks it is gone forever we're really? gonna, sorry go ahead we're going to be picking up four of these wizard rings in total throughout the run Two of them we're pretty much going to be reserving for the final bosses at the very end of the game. And the other two I'm going to be using to facilitate earning experience points at the later part of the game. And as, as Purple Mario mentioned, um, if there is some kind of emergency situation, if I'm stranded in the middle of a dungeon and I don't have enough MP to keep going, I will need to use the Wizard Ring to, to keep going. Um, attempting to progress forward in dungeons when you don't have any MP on your characters or if um, one of your characters is dead, for instance, is a very bad idea. You will not get very far. Uh, I'm very much relying on my spells, as you can see, to, uh, to defeat these enemies and without my magic, I... Uh, Kind of helpless, especially Princess Moonbrook. She doesn't do a whole lot if she doesn't have any magic. Um, Dean is very experienced in, in the longer dungeons. He, he has uh, many different ways of uh, conserving as much MP as he can so that he doesn't have to use that. But sometimes things just happen. Yeah, over the course of the run, while the encounter rate generally averages out the same, sometimes you go through a dungeon and you just get a lot more encounters than usual and you just have to deal with it. And then sometimes you have the encounters that you get are just have a lot of powerful enemies that take more resources and you just have to deal with it. So knowing how your resources are doing in any particular section can help you adjust some, some things uh, as far as that's concerned. Looks like we're just short on money. I do have the slot token that I can sell, but I'm just going to wander around out here a little bit and fight some things really quickly to earn a little money. Um, uh, if I could pass it over to the, the host really quickly uh, to, to get some messages read, that would be, while I earn up this gold, that would be perfect. Yep. Uh, let's see. Grimbora donates $100. Thanks, Grimora. And good luck on the run, even if there aren't enough goof-offs in the party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Canock might be a goof-off. I don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll settle for a serenade during the credits. Oh, yeah. Bring uh, on the singing. Yeah, please. Make sure that incentive gets yeah. me. Speaking of that, um, that is one of the incentives for this run, seeing the ending song. Uh, it's at 385 out of 500. Uh, so just with the slot token, 115 dollars yep. away. Um. All right, awesome.
awesome. Okay, looks like we've got enough gold now. Um, I doesn't look like I have 1,500 gold, but we've got a couple of items in my inventory that I can sell to cover the difference. Uh, Prince Canox's old copper sword. We're going to be finished with that. And we picked up a slot token. That's going to give me just enough money, right? Yeah, here it is. Awesome. And then I can buy this steel sword. And I'll go ahead and purchase. I don't have any money, but I'll buy one medical herb. All right, let's do some inventory management. We're going to give the old sickle to Box and the wind mantle to Box as well. The wizard ring is going to go to Meow. Please don't break it. And we're going to always equip. Always. Always. The wind mantle does need to be equipped in order for it to work, so uh, don't forget to do that. Does it matter who equips it? Does it affect nope. their stats? Nope, it doesn't affect any stats. It's just one character has to have it equipped in order for it to uh, do its thing. So... All right, we're ready to progress forward with the game now. With the Wind Mantle acquired and equipped, we can proceed to the next town of Leonport. Um, normally, we can't get to Leonport on foot. There is a channel of water that's blocking our pass. Um, but there are two towers by that channel of water called the Dragonhorn Towers. What we do to get past this part of the game is that we uh, climb up to the very tippy top of the South Dragonhorn Tower, and as long as we have the Wind Mantle equipped, we can flying squirrel our way over to the other side and uh, reach the town of Leonport to the north. So we're going to pass through a shrine here. This guy is actually standing in your way if you don't have Princess Moonbrook in the party. So yes, recruiting Moonbrook is required. But in this run, oh goodness, yes, you would, you would, absolutely, oh, bait. You would absolutely need her. All right, if you see Metal Slime in fights like this, yeah, as Mario said, it's, total, it's totally a trap. Um, the monsters are really powerful, and if I stop to try and fight that Metal Slime, uh, the other guys will kill me. So, uh, if he sticks around, that's you know, I get a chance oh, to Oh, nice. See. I got a bonus medical. Yeah. Every herbal. Take every herb right now. Mm -hmm. I only have like three or four, so a couple more definitely won't hurt. We did use a lot on the first trip to the spring. Mm, actually, we're going to do it like this. With the new weapons, the Steel Sword and the Chain Sickle, I'm actually strong enough to usually beat a Baboon just by attacking it. I don't need to cast Fireball on it anymore. This Megapede, however, has about a billion defense power, so... Um, <laughs> Not he's, an exaggeration. He's going to need some fire. Great. Right. 120 gold. The rewards are kicking up pretty quickly now. Mm -hmm. We need every cent of it, too. Yeah, um, there are a lot of parts of the game where we're trying to buy better and better armor all of the time, and the sooner we can buy better equipment, uh, the, the better it's going to be. Um, when I use when I fight groups of baboons, I, you'll see me still using Fireball. Um, Infernus isn't quite strong enough if it rolls low, that we're just going to want to use Fireball to improve our chances of beating those baboons. So you may have noticed that uh, Diener's strategy on dealing with um, all these uh, groups of enemies has changed as his levels have gotten higher. That's one of the things that you learn as you're um, um, learning this run is that you basically have to have multiple strategies for every single encounter in the game. And it's something that the great runners do um, and he has done his homework. So definitely take note of all the little things that he's doing if you, if you notice them. All right, good. Excellent. Um, yeah, and as I said earlier on the run, that's one of the reasons why it's really important that the stat gains per level are exactly the same. I can count on very specific levels being uh, breakpoints, essentially, for different strategies. Uh, certain characters will gain big boosts of particular stats, usually like agility, and that actually greatly can change uh, how uh, I, can, I can approach some situations. All right. So we're here in the South Dra Dragonhorn Tower. It's a six floor tower, so we're gonna walk back and forth uh, two different times, basically, on these floors to get to the top. So that's once to the left, and then we'll head back to the right, trying my best not to fall into the chasm. Are you gonna go to the North Tower right away or wait yes. till later? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a hidden item on the third floor of the mm -hmm. North Dragon's Horn Tower, which we can't do anything with for probably uh, like 90 minutes or more. Mm, we're actually, we're going to get the water flying close probably faster than that. Oh, but, okay. But uh, we'll see. Probably, sh oh, I was okay. going to cast Fireball, but I got Stop Spelled, so it's probably a good thing I didn't. All right, good. 
The Medusa Eye is pretty dangerous. It can cast Sleep on me. And as if you can see how powerful me casting Sleep on enemies is, it's absolutely devastating when enemies use it on me. Um, so I want to deal with that guy very, very aggressively. Also as another bonus, as I said earlier, item drops are determined by the last enemy you beat. Uh, oh, this is an interesting fight. Let's do it like this. If I get good damage rolls, I can at least kill... Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, oh, there's the sleep. Um, yeah, you do have medical herb. Okay, good. May I cut in real quick? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we just got a donation from Vax Herd for $256. And we met the incentive for um, singing the ending song. Oh, awesome. Yes, I was absolutely hoping we would. Um, perfect. Um, and Vax Herd says, is it really a Dragon Quest run if you don't sing the ending song? No, it's not. Good it's luck, some Diener. Thank you so very much, Vaxer. Vaxer's another uh, fellow Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior speedrunner. Very knowledgeable about like game mechanics and things like that. It's been very helpful for us uh, to learn uh, all kinds of different speedruns. So um, thanks so much, Vaxer. I know him for his runs of uh, the NES game, The Guardian Legend, which is an interesting uh, shmup adventure hybrid game. One of my old favorites. Sounds interesting. All right. Do you have time for any more? Or? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Give me one more. Um, Ravanon donates $25. The Prince of Canuck hath been cursed. Thy marathon content hath increased. Here's a five pack to get a $5 train started. Let's see some more of the game. Perfect. And yes. I wanted to ask about that. There's a Prince of Canuck side quest, which is yep. not present in the NES version. Yep, there is a special little side quest that normally when we speed run the game, we go out of our way to avoid it. But uh, I have an incentive for this run, if it is met, to actually show off that little, little side quest. Um, about 75 minutes into the run, about maybe a half hour or so from now, 20, 30 minutes from now, is the first opportunity we're gonna have to see it. But even if the donation incentive is not yet met at that point, we can actually meet it later and I can show off the quest uh, a little bit later on in the run. So that's not to say that you should sit around and wait. Um, definitely get the, those donations in and uh, meet that incentive. Uh, I'd like to show that cutscene off. That's how Gigabrain Diener is. We're gonna be there before we know it. I'll do my best. It's been a little bit of a bumpy road to start, but I think we're hopefully gonna settle in pretty nicely. So yeah, we come here to the third floor. As Shiner mentioned earlier, there's a special item hidden here called the Dew's Yarn. We're gonna combine the Dew Yarn with the Holy Loom that we get somewhere else uh, and hand those over to Uncle Waterflying Clothes, who's going to make us a very special piece of equipment called the Waterflying Clothes. Uh, the Waterflying Clothes is a set of armor that any character in my party can equip, even Princess Moonbrook. It has very high defense power, but it also comes with a special property, a built-in 50% damage reduction from spells and breath attacks. It's the strongest of such uh, damage reduction effects in the game and is absolutely important uh, for us to get our hands on it. Uh, we're gonna be doing some stuff to try and get, our, uh, get it uh, very quickly, as soon as we can, basically. But So we're definitely gonna want the uh, uh, the uh, the yarn there, and we're gonna get the loom. All right, good. We've arrived here at Leonport safely. That's fantastic. I'm gonna save the game here because I've got to fight a mini boss, a couple of gremlins here. And while this fight usually goes okay, they have the sleep spell, and if they use it and I fall asleep, then I'll probably die. I don't think you can save here in the NES version. I don't think so either. They added a couple of save points. Uh, help! Help! Evil has come. Uh, no. I'm a, I'm a hero. So we're not going to hand over the girl to the monsters. We're going to fight the monsters. Come on, magic. Uh, you don't want to join Team Rocket? So we're going to... Oh, I got one hit for low damage roll oh. and fire oh. bonus. Oh. And, yeah, yeah, that's no good. Faster uh, to reset than pay gold to revive. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, I need I need my money to buy a uh, better set of armor. The, the Cloak of Evasion here in a moment, so... Yeah, that's going to be relevant all the way to the end of the game. Yes, actually it is. So, um, Good investment. That's why we saved the game. All right, let's try that again. Maybe if I say yes this time, I agree to hand her over. Maybe they'll be a little kinder. Let's find out. 
Let's, let's go turbo controller. Auto fire A button. Oh, they say that anyway? Alright. Come on, magic. Alright. Nice. Two hits, one good damage roll. Heal is it? That's, that's fine. That's just him wasting time, pretty much. Very good. Good, good fireball hit, yeah, so that's going to kill go. him. I'm going to use Inferno, so we should be able to beat the other one. Oh, there's still spell resistance in this version. Yeah, certain monsters can resist my attack damage spells. Um, some resist better than others. Those guys usually don't resist very often, so I'm... Kinda, we got the surround spell now. Kind of disappointed to see them <laughs> miss that many times. The screen is going to slowly scroll to the right. Slowly scroll to the right. Slowly scroll to the right. Okay. By okay, helping by it. helping this little girl, uh, her grandfather is going to let me uh, borrow his boat, and that's going to be really important. Um, the boat is going to allow us to access a ton of different places in the world that we obviously can't get to on foot. So, all right, we've got access to our boat. I'm also going to stop here in the corner and pick this item up. It's a shrink seed. These stat boosting seeds are not in the NES version at all. They weren't nope. invented until Dragon Warrior Three. I'm also just a little bit short on cash for our Cloak of Evasion, so I'm going to go ahead and get on the boat and sail around a little bit, and hopefully some monsters will show up here really quickly and I can take them out. Yeah, not only does the game really open up once you get the boat, uh, naval enemies are pretty easy to defeat and give an unusually high amount of rewards. Mm -hmm. Especially the sea slugs, um, if I can find a group of, of them, hopefully. All right, this looks pretty good. When I use well, these these sea slugs have really strong spell resistance in the NES version. Yeah, they're pretty hard to hit with attack magic. Although they're supposed to fall asleep 85% of the time, I miraculously only hit one of them, well, which is really bad. Careful, they can uh, use sweet breath. Yep, they have reverse card. They have put you to sleep. They have sweet breath, um, which um, I didn't. I don't know if I mentioned it on the man eater plants when we saw them earlier, but it is effectively the sleep spell, and uh, it's bad. All right, no, it's asleep. Yeah, this should be okay. It's gonna take me a little bit to beat this thing if BDD stays napping the whole time. Oh, all right, it's dead. It doesn't have any evasion. I'm going to go faster than it. Okay, good. So we earned 370 gold from that that fight. So that's that's a ton of a ton of money for this part of the game. I can safely stay at the inn now again. And uh, we can buy our evade cloak, and we're ready to move on to the next yeah. part of the. Our next coffers part of the game. got 20% bigger from that fight by itself. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. Uh, you can defer this if I, my gold was really low. I would actually just go ahead and try looking to buy this thing later. But getting it now is going to have a lot of advantages. So especially for uh, a little bit of marathon safety, we'll grind the extra encounter and uh, make sure we get it now. We'll sell our old clothes. We don't need those. Got to clean up our inventory and keep it as empty as possible. Mm -hmm. Inventory management can be somewhat of an issue. Uh, we don't get like a giant bag that I can just start throwing things into and, and forget about them. Although we do have access to a, a bank vault that I can store unneeded quest items into. I'm going to do that a couple of times in the run with a few items once we're done with them. Do you, yeah. know, do you know the specific percent that the click of evasion adds to evasion? Uh, I think it's 15%. Okay. That's not um, right. So, yeah, it's also got 35 defense power, which is substantially more than the clothes, which I think is like three or something like that. So, so yeah, Princess Meow here is the Cloak of Evasion. She has now a much higher defense power and a much a much higher uh, dodge than usual dodge chance. Well, that 85% there. It's um, independent events. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> It's a non-zero <laughs> chance for it to fail, and it's failing a bunch. Okay. We have our boat, and we're going to start sailing around the world to a bunch of very specific locations in specific orders. Um, the way that I'm navigating around in the ocean when I can't see any landmarks is I'm sometimes counting the, the animation of the ship bobbing up and down. That's how I can help determine where I am when there are no visible landmarks in the wild blue yonder. That island with the shrine on it is one tile longer, so I guess the geography is not one-to-one -one exactly the same as the not NES version. Not quite, I guess you're right. Well, there's okay. also uh, palm trees here. Okay, uh, we've, any other we've come here to um, the the seaside village of ooh, slot token, Zahan. Of Zahan. And here in Zahan, I'm going to purchase a couple of extra supplies and pick up a very important hidden key item. Literally. 
I it's, appreciate that. It's, uh, it's a key. It's the golden key. It's cryptically hidden right here in a slightly different spot. Right here. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, that's where I thought it was. I remember watching the NES task. I'm like, wait, that's where the golden key is? I thought it yeah, was to he, the right of the dog. He, he walked to a different spot there, and I was a little surprised. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I didn't remember that. Yeah, you're, you're used to this newer version, which is based on the Super Famicom remake as mm -hmm. well. Yes. Okay, so this gate here will take me straight back to uh, actually conveniently Lorasia Castle, where we started the game. And since I have the gold key, I can get into Lorasia's treasury using the gold key uh, and grab the items inside here. Um, there's going to be some stat seeds, some extra gold, and a special quest item called Lodo Seal, uh, also known as Erdrick Seal. They're using Lodo here. It's closer to Roto, as his name is in Japanese. Uh, I'm just going to check my... Also conveniently fewer characters for the, the tinier Game Boy Color screen. Yeah, that's, that's also part of the, the reason, I think, here. So we got a string seed, a stick nut, Lodo Seal, and the herb. Which I don't actually technically need, but now yeah, we'll fill out our bag with some extra medicine. Why not? Uh, we're gonna use the life acorn on box. Nice plus six. Nice. He's up to ten. And Mystic Nut will give this to Meow. She got five MP. That's the maximum on the uh, Mystic Nut as well. So that's good too. The acorn seeds, of, uh, the life seeds can be four, or five, or six. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just like the life acorns. So yeah. Um, in the NES games later on. So we're gonna give three of them to. Uh, Prince, uh, or excuse me, Prince Box. Uh, so he'll gain somewhere between 12 and 18 maximum hit points, with the median being 15. So far, he's on on pace for 15. We're gonna save the game here. Um, there's some extra dialogue since we've got Moonbrook in our party. So we saw earlier um, when I use Warp Wings and the Return spell in this game, I do not get a list of towns that I've been to that I want to go that I can go to. Nice plus three there. Um, I was gonna say, if you got one plus one, would you reload and go again? Uh, yeah, actually, I would try and get a better value than, than plus two on that. But plus four is solid. Um, yeah, four on both uh, combined is average. We don't get a list of towns to go back to when we return, so um, saving the game there is very important because I want to come back to this part of the game a little bit later. So we take advantage of that in a couple of places in the run, saving the game in specific places to help with transportation. There's also a little bit of a mechanic here with the encounter rate um, system. So I'm going to force a battle on the land and get like some battles with some slugs. You can't tell here on the ocean, but certain parts of the ocean have more powerful monsters than others. Much more. And uh, I'm doing my best to avoid those encounter zones as much as possible. There are some parts of the ocean that I, I, can't, I can't avoid it. Um, but we're going to try and minimize our time spent in those dangerous uh, ocean zones. So you'll see me sa taking some specific sailing patterns. Oh, I hit a land battle here. That's bad. Oh, and it ambushed Ooh. me. That's extremely bad. These gases as are a little stronger than what we're used as, to. As long as I don't... Oh. oh. Yeah, well, sleeping e characters don't wake up when they get hit. Oh, she's asleep uh, too. I'm going to need to reset the game. Yeah. <laughs> The good news is we just saved. Yeah. That dying there is a really big problem because it moves my boat back to Lorasia Castle, which is definitely nowhere near where I need to be. It's like the literal opposite side of the world. This will be way faster to just simply reset the game. Yeah, Zahan is very And now we're going to get a, even a better string seed roll. That's what we hope for, right? Plus one. Plus one. Or not. <laughs> one plus one, no good. I think the, the string seeds are one to three. Yeah, yep, one, two, are. or three. Uh, we're going to get a whole bunch of, I think, six string seeds in all and just give them all to Prince Lorasia. As our main fighter, it's going to make sense to improve his attack power as much as possible. All right, well, we're definitely having the, the bumpy Dragon Warrior 2 to start. That's nice. Okay, there we go. Ooh, Great. I'd, I'd save again. But I, I have Dragon Warrior 4 brain where <laughs> you really got to max out your rolls on those to stand a chance in Chapter 2. So how much damage does each uh, attack power uh, stat, like each point of attack power, like do? Uh, yeah, so you can think of like the easy way to calculate damage is that every two points of attack power you have, you're going to gain one point of damage. And for enemies, or, or for my characters too, every four points of defense reduces incoming damage by one. It's a pretty linear formula. Um, 
The range can be pretty big, though. Yeah, from there, it then goes up or down by about 15% or so. <laughs> oh, I got ambushed by these guys? Wow. Give me a break. Thou hast fallen right one, into two, my trap. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Um, fortunately, we really didn't... We died pretty early, and I didn't really fight anything, so it's not like I lost a lot of time. We might see something dangerous here. It's a bunch of lizard flies. Wow. This I didn't know they were in the ocean. This encounter zone has lizard flies and smokes, which are completely harmless, and it has gargoyles and vampiris, who will probably kill me if they show up, so... I'm kind of grateful that we ran into lizard yeah, flies. Yeah, that's a good one. Kind of. <laughs> All right. Now we're back on track. We've reached the uh, fire shrine here. There are three doors. We're gonna take Traveler's door number one. And behind door number one is... Oh, we're coming back for the uh, string sun crest later. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up here, but I'm just grabbing the string seed. Oh, okay. There's a string seed hidden in the corner there. <laughs> that's why we've come over here. Again, not an NES that's, version. There would be no yeah. point to... That's very well hidden. I would not think to search that tile. Yeah, I don't know how everybody found all of these uh, these seeds, but they're in here. Oh, I should probably use it. I want it to work. Nice. Oh. Nice. Plus three. Oh, we're already up to plus eight strength. That's pretty sweet. We're going to get three more strength seeds, I think, so we're, we're on target for a pretty big bonus there. All right, now we're going to take door number three. This is technically the only time we're actually go to the Aleph Guard continent. This shrine is technically there. We're going to show this guy Lotus Seal that we picked up, and he's going to step aside and let us take Lotus Helmet. Lotus Helmet is the most powerful helmet in the game, defense power-wise, that can be equipped. Um, Prince BDD is the only one who can equip it, and it's good for 20 points of defense power, which is 20 more than our current helmet of nothing. So we're going we're gonna to put this thing on and, right away and basically never take it off. Great. We basically doubled our defense power. Mm -hmm. Being the descendant of Lodo pays off. And we're gonna search that spot right there for a cryptically, more cryptically hidden quest items. It's the Sun Seal. If you saw the tasks earlier of Dragon Warrior 2, then you know that the five elemental seals are required to, should have forced an ocean fight, are required to get Rubus's Charm. Rubus's Charm is a important quest item that we need to, uh, it's essentially a key to the final dungeon. And then right there is the World Tree. The World Tree is an important spot because if you search that tile and you do not have a World Leaf in your inventory, then you get one. Really quickly, Purple Mario, tell me what a World Leaf does. Oh, a World Leaf is the only way before you get the spell revived to revive someone away from a priest. And it, you get to use it once, and that's it. And then you have to go back and get another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very powerful item. Uh, it can be used to revive characters um, from death. And similar to the Wizard Ring, I'm going to use this kind of as an emergency option um, when my um, I have to force an encounter here to get a little bit more money to purchase the Jailer's Key. So I'll oh, figure so I got a uh, Ghost Mice. That'll be like another 10 more, I think. Yeah, it's not going to help. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and sail south to Canock and then back north. Uh, oh, yeah, with the golden key, we can get uh, Lotus Shield there. Mm -hmm. There's another very powerful piece of equipment we're going to get that's hidden here at Canock Castle. Um, Lotus Shield. Again, Lotus Shield is the best shield in the game for, for Prince BDD, where it's good for 30 defense power. We're going to equip it and basically never take it off. This is a beautiful encounter rate if you didn't want an encounter. I know. <laughs> It's a shame I need money. Better to get an ocean encounter than something on land. This... I, I was going to say, you know this game's geography so well. There's just kind of like two giant land masses, and then the rest is islands scattered all over the place with nothing to aid you with navigating your way all to right, them. All right, here we go. This will give me this is a good encounter. plenty of money. Yeah, uh, more of these sea slugs, another 350. Hey, and sleep actually worked. What do you know? Does that oh. jellyfish on the left have a, a sleep on hit attack? Yes, yes, they can uh, cause my characters to fall asleep if they hit me. Yeah, in later games they have a separate uh, paralysis status, and if all your characters are dead or paralyzed, you actually get a game over. But mm -hmm. when the battle's over, you take about ten steps and paralysis wears off. Yeah, paralysis so, is a weird status. Yeah, very, in, very in, weird. In Dragon like, Quest, Dragon Warrior. Very games. uncommon in the early games too. All right, we come here to Cannot Castle. We're gonna throw away our old leather shield. Because, as I said, we're going to upgrade to Airdrick Shield, Lotus Shield. Takes too long to go shopping. 
you should have walked into the intersection in town so that the guy could see you throw away the leather shield and just completely insult him. Like, I, I know, know you'd give me nothing for this, so have nothing he'll, for he'll, it. He'll find it. He'll pick it up and he'll use it. Or maybe sure. some monster will get it. Yeah, the, uh, the economy will be saved. Okay, yeah, so this shield is good for 30 defense power, 26 points higher than the leather shield we had. So between those two pieces of armor, Prince Lorraine, or yeah, Prince Lorraine, or BDD, his defense power is increased by 46 points. Uh, that's huge. Um, Basically and, tripled it overnight. And uh, this is really important because he's leading the party and is actually more likely to be attacked by monsters' physical attacks. So reducing that incoming damage is really good. It's going to let him continue fighting in situations without having to defend and wait for healing. He can just keep fighting and beating monsters. And, um... Yeah, very important to have him attack every turn. Like, defending with him is pretty much always a mistake. It's, it's also a situation where if I can reduce my incoming damage, I can be more efficient with my resources, too. If he's taking lots of damage from attacks, then I have to heal him every single time. But if he can go a little bit lower, then, uh... Uh, then I can get away with um, waiting a little bit longer to heal him, for instance. So that's why we needed 2,000 gold, why I had to force an extra encounter and make a little bit of a detour. I need 2,000 gold to purchase the, ja oops, the Jailer's Key. The Jailer's Key opens these locked jail cell doors like this. And I can come in here and talk to this guy. It's our good buddy, Mr. Fastfingers. And he hands us the um, Tons Dam Key. This isn't a key that opens locked doors, but rather a, oops, a special quest item that we are going to use um, uh, when we get to Tun Village um, that is required for us to progress the game at one point. Can you talk to that lady on the corner to change the music in no, this town? No, I tried. And oh, she doesn't. only in the NES version, yep. then. Unless I was talking to the wrong person, but I talked to a bunch of people and, whoa, that was weird. These evil trees are, are pretty Did nasty. Did they, they just take a bunch of my MP? Only four and a five, I bit. think. In the NES version, their dance actually steals like 15 to 25. It's honestly insane. That is way it's, too it's, much. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this was the That's... early Wild West days of RPGs before the math was figured out. It yeah. was not properly balanced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I keep, I keep emphasizing that the um, characters and, you know, the difficulty's been rebalanced to make it easier. And it certainly doesn't look a lot easier. I'm not making it look very easy, huh? Um, that We're just goes to that. that just goes to show you how powerful the enemies are in the original NES version. They're not even fair. Yeah, you're just like the Seventh Saga, Etrian Odyssey, too easy. Go play the NES version of Dragon Warrior 2. Have fun. All right, we've come back here to the Silver Key Cave. I believe yeah. the, the developers probably intended you to come here pretty much as soon as you recruited Prince Kanok. We are going to come here at a higher level. This has two advantages. One, the enemies are very, very weak, and they won't hurt me. And two, since Prince BDD has reached level 10, I'm actually a high enough level that I can repel the monsters in the overworld with that repellent, and my run rate in this dungeon is 100%. Well, it was 100% there, and they didn't see me, but... The only way that I should be able to take any damage in this dungeon is if enemies ambush me. Which, yeah, I've been ambushed by snakes and then poisoned in this dungeon. So. <laughs> still making you spend MP. You have a guaranteed Classic. run rate, and I still manage to get poisoned somehow. Yeah, that's, that's what happens here. All right, so we picked up the agility seed there in this box is our third life acorn. We're going to grab this. Oh, nice, and BDD's inventory was full, so it went straight to box. Oh, wait, it's... You you still get to pick <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, Dragon yeah. Warrior 4 mm -hmm. for NES, where whoever's holding the seed item Uses eats it. it. They can't yeah. give it to someone, just whoever's holding it. <laughs> yep. As long as the character's alive, then anyone can use the seed on anyone else and, and, and get its effect. So we get another five hit points there. That means we got the exact median value. We got the very average Prince box today. Um, and that means his max HP should be right now 60 points which is pretty good. Who gets With, the outside spell in this again? Um, uh, Prince Canock will get it first. I believe Moon gets it eventually, but uh, Prince Canock is going to be the first one to outside. We're not a high enough level to have outside yet, though, so we're going to have to just uh, backtrack our way to the, to the entrance. I have to ask because, again, this is the second game in the series and they hadn't quite figured out what to do with magic. And by the time they got to Dragon Warrior 3, they figured out, okay, the, the pilgrim slash priest, uh, like white mage equivalent, uh, just gets healing magic and uh, defensive buff spells, maybe uh, Infernos to attack with. And 
It's always the wizards, like the the attack magicians, who get return and outside also get some of yeah, the field traversal think of spells. Like, X ray, like, uh, like day gray. night, open if you really grind super hard. I yeah. can't find the final key. I'll just get my wizard to level forty and open all the doors that way. Yeah, in this version, the spells are a little bit mixed up. Both characters are going to have healing magic. Both characters are going to have support magic. Both characters are going to have attack magic. So. Yeah, it really and, supports my head cannon. This and, game and, is and, chaotic. And, <laughs> and in some in some cases, that uh, both of my characters will learn the same spell. So both characters can learn the same magic spell. Yeah, it means both our spellcasters are quite versatile, quite mm -hmm. unpredictably dangerous. Uh, let's look at this encounter. What do I want? This is a pretty complicated battle here in the ocean. Not one I see very often, but we'll hopefully defeat the Jellyfish with Inferno spell. Good. And Stop spell will keep the Medusas from doing anything. Nice. Very high success and rate in this version. It's one, uh, a Stop spell on these enemies is actually 100% guaranteed to work. That's a good strategy then. Oh, I'm thinking of the Gorgons that only yeah. appear in the Aleph Guard region that have ex extremely high defense power and also cast Oops. Increase to make it even higher. Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that like, was a missed oh. input. I actually wanted to kill that thing, but eh, well, whatever. It's not a big deal. Yeah, this isn't like the Final Fantasy X task we saw where you get partial rewards for running away. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to menu things quickly, obviously, and uh, yeah, well, I make mistakes. I'm not Taskbot. I'm human. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Oops. Okay, great. Nice. All four. That's more common. All right, we're almost made our way back to Zahan Village, uh, which we were at earlier, but there are two uh, very useful treasure chests in the back that we actually couldn't get because we didn't have the Jailer's Key. Nice crit. Um, so now that we have the Jailer's Key, we can pick up the two items in the, in the back of the town. Um, while I get set up for that if, um, and finish getting back to the, the town, um, Priya, if you have any anything to read over at the hostess station, um, now's a good time for it. Sounds great. Leonia donates $10 with no comment. Thank you so much for your donation. Creative Ellie donates $25. Some Diener showcasing Dragon Quest is a must watch. Shout out to Purple and Shiner on the commentary. So, so stoked to see the DQ representation at RPG Limit Break. Please put this towards singing the ending song. Let's get this met. You won't be disappointed. Good luck, Diener. Thanks so much, Ellie. If uh, you didn't catch Ellie's run of Dragon Quest XI with Andy Perfect earlier on, then four or five, then you can definitely check out the VOD um, later. But thanks so much. And um, the, just a reminder, the ending song did get met. Thank you, Creative Ellie. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm navigating oh, these. Oh right, barrier tiles do less in this version. Uh, I'm navigating these barriers very carefully. I take seven damage when I step on these uh, blue ones. One, two, three, four, five. And I don't want any of my characters to die. It's quite a, quite an inconvenience. Quite expensive Old, to revive. It's them. always an inconvenience for characters to die. But then we've got two treasure chests that were hidden back there. One was the Holy Loom. That's the second item we need to get the water flying clothes. And that box there had a wizard ring, and we definitely know how valuable those are. While they're technically not required to finish the game, they're pretty much required to finish the game. <laughs> and then now that we're done, we use a warp wing. This takes us back to Laurasia Castle because we saved the game here a while ago. And now we're gonna gear up and fight the, um, the monster in the dungeon. Um, this guy is, he's no clown. He is not clowning around. He is the upgraded version oh, yeah. of a mace master in this version. This enemy here is extremely powerful and extremely dangerous, hence why I've saved the game. It's probably like a 40% chance he kills me, and given how this run is going so far, he'll probably kill me twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Evil nah. Clown in the NES version, but this is the st much stronger palette swap version from the final dungeon. Mm. He's got um, the Exploded spell, which does 45 to 65 damage to all three of my party members at the same time. I don't have the Jailer's <laughs> Key, what are you talking about? <laughs> Proceeds to use Jailer's Key twice, yep. So we're gonna heal up and fight this guy. This is actually a pretty complicated fight. I wanna try and stop spell him to keep him from casting magic. Then I'm gonna use surround on him to lower his accuracy and then cross my fingers and hope he proceeds to miss a bunch of times. So we're gonna fight the Magus here. There's exploded. Oh, poor box died. <laughs> so even with all the life acorns. As you can see, even with the life acorns, that was still one more HP than we had maximum. So like 
Without yeah. all those life acorns, he would have no chance at ever surviving. Yes, his max The H minimum. His max HP, if I did not use the life acorns right now, is 45. And I said yeah. earlier the damage range. Minimum damage from that spell is 45. Yeah. So that's how important these life acorns are. At, at 60 HP, he's got about an 80% chance of surviving that spell. All right, one um, point for Magus. Unfortunately, since Prince Canock is the only one who has stop spell right now, he's the only one who can cast stop spell, and him dying on the very first turn is is horrible. So there are plenty of other things that uh, this this guy can do, uh, like cast increase or defense, both of which are pretty obnoxious. But um, yeah, he casts exploded a lot. Um, he's also actually an extremely fast monster. He always goes faster than I do. All three of my characters, he's going to go first. Okay, defense. Stop spell didn't work. I know, that's bad. Defense again. Ooh. Okay. That's it's dangerous. I'm going to defend while I try and surround him. Okay, good. And now I really just need to pray that he keeps missing me. The two princes in the front should have enough HP to survive if they're at max, but... If he splits targeting, he, that's okay, too. He can start missing any time now. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, that surround there spell we go. should give him 50% miss chance. I'm using attack magic on him as well. This fireball spell could dodge me out. Yeah, I'm kind of um, kind of spooked that even BDD can only hit for 20 damage. Mm -hmm. He's got about 180 hit points. Fireball has about a 50-50 hit rate and does about the same damage as my sword does, so I need to hit him about 10 times to beat him. And if Meow gets hit while not defending, Meow's dead. Yeah, my defense power is completely yeah. gone, so she is absolutely going to die if he does oh, Nice. Good. Victory. Good. Big reward for this, too. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the 700 experience we get is really important, but we also get an item called the Bolt Staff. The Bolt Staff is extremely powerful, but it also sells for an enormous amount of money. The old NES trick that lets you get multiple Bolt Staffs does not work in this version. We're only allowed to get one, but um, it's... Yeah, the... uh, it's very important we get this for uh, for money reasons. Okay, good. All right, we're ready to move on to the next part. Um, I've dropped my leather armor as I'm about to get much better armor for Prince BDD. And uh, I've used some repellent here. Of course, this is the level one starting zone, so we are sh hopefully strong enough to repel through here. Also, for that, for that Magus fight, we did not use my world leaf. And you still have a lot of MP. Yeah, yeah, which is, which which is, is great. great. Fireball's accuracy was really good in yeah. that fight. I, I, it usually is not so great, but I needed it to be mm -hmm. um, to get through that safely. All right, this Traveler's Gate to the south of uh, the starting area leads us to Oster Fair. We're going to sneak behind the counter here and get the Gaia armor and a knife. And then I'm going to do some inventory management, make some room for the Bolt Staff, which we're going to give to Prince Box, and then we're going to equip some stuff, the Gaia Armor, and the Knife. And then I'm going to do a little bit of, oops, a little bit of an equipment management thing here by equipping the Bolt Staff and taking off Canox equipment, and then re-equipping it back. What this does is uh, it redraws the order of the items in his inventory so that the Bolt Staff is now the first item in his bag. This is going to be really helpful when I go to use the Bolt Staff as an item in battle. I won't have to look for it. It's going to be the first item in my inventory, in his inventory all of the time. So I can very quickly um, uh, uh, grab it and use it. The Bolt Staff is a decent weapon attack power wise, but it can also be used as an item to cast the essentially the Inferno spell for free as many times as I want. So having two people now who have some AoE magic is pretty handy. Checking my HP and MP really quickly. Because we're now we're going to do the Oster Fair Challenge. Step forward into the center, and we're going to fight this Saber Lion. It's Lava Kitty. Bigger version of Meow. So um, yeah, this guy we're going to surround. Um, Surround is guaranteed to right. land on this guy. Uh, once it does, then uh, his accuracy is now lowered, and hopefully it'll be an easy fight from here. The Saber Lion has big-time magic resist, especially in the NES version. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Saber Lion is just basically immune to all magic in that one. Nice. All right, perfect. Nice fight. Defeating uh, the Saber Lion, uh, the King of Osterfair will reward me with the Moon Seal. And I'm going to save the game here. Uh, the Moon Seal is our second elemental crest, and we have two now. We're going to take the opportunity to 
safe scum these agility seeds. Nice three. I'm actually curious if we've Four. met the uh, uh, prince incentive at this point. Uh, yeah, actually now is a good time to ask if the Canox side quest incentive has been met yet. Um, I think we're still at $55 out of $250, so we still need $200. Fair. Okay, um, yeah, that side quest can be done later on in the run, but um, get your donations in if you want to see that. Yeah. Uh, some unique uh, remake-only content. All right, we grabbed the uh, strength seed that was hidden in the corner there. Oh, boy, I got a land fight even though I used return. Uh, this isn't great, but we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, Bolt Staff makes this realistic. I think these guys have 60 HP each. Well, I hit one with sleep. That's not great, but it's a start. They are really going aggressively with the uh, the jig. Yeah, the, the evil MP stealing dance. Uh-huh. Now he's giving me a good bashing. This is typically not an encounter I would fight, but um, it should give me some decent XP and gold. So it showed up. I'm going to have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't bad at all. Pretty sure having the bolt staff was the camel breaker in deciding that. Yeah, I would say so too. Okay, great. I have a world tree leaf in my inventory and decent MP because we just stayed at the inn, although I did get drained a little bit by those guys. It's not too bad. Our next destination is going to be to head to Tun Village. Um, from this point on in the game, if the game has seemed kind of difficult, it's now going to ramp up to, I was going to say 11, but it's more like 15. <laughs> um, the, the Pretty much the degree of difficulty from here on out for the rest of the run, in my opinion, aside from one dungeon, oops, I said that, um, is going to be at its absolute max. Um, enemies that in the region that I'm about to head towards are very, very strong, and um, uh, my survival is going to be partly dependent upon which encounters I get, partly dependent on how cooperative they are, so, and on top of, you know, I do have to make the right call each time as well. Any mistakes I make in this region are probably going to put my characters in into poor little coffins. That's right, they're coffins. Back back to being coffins in this version and not ghosts. Alright, definitely want to top off my HP before we start sailing up the river. And yeah, we get different encounters on this river. These as, are not ocean encounters. As deadly as these enemies are, once I make landfall, there's actually technically a small chance we might run into our good friend, the Metal Babble. So, I hope that's you, Metal Babble. Yeah, not the super deadly and absolutely not worthwhile NES version that has like 25 HP and only is worth a thousand experience. Ooh, nice. Oh, hey, look, they, nice. fell, they, fell they, they, they do this time. fall asleep. We were practicing this earlier. <laughs> I got an encounter like this with the orcs, and they repeatedly spammed sweet breath on me until I was locked out for like 15 turns. I could not do anything at all. Um, they couldn't damage Hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BDD yeah. survived. BDD. The other two characters got mercilessly porked. <laughs> uh, many turns ago, and, oh. it was, and it was not a lot of fun. This part of the encounter, uh, the part of the map, actually has a weaker encounter zone, which is why I've rushed my way up to getting up to these hills. Oh, isn't this the Southern Moonbrook region? Yeah, actually, same, this is the same zone, yeah. This is the uh, region that we would uh, be at if we were heading toward the Dragonhorn Towers. Yeah. So we're going to have a couple more battles with some weaker enemies before getting closer to the village. The encounter zone is going to, uh, again, uh, go right back to being very hard. I should have watched out there for dodge, but that's okay. We hit him. Um, this is the encounter line right here. Uh, if I get a fight right here, it'll be with something fairly easy, fairly tame. But if I take yeah. one step further south, I'm going to get very hard monsters. Yeah, DQ3 SFC strats. We're going to force the encounter here to fully recharge our aggro so we can run as far as possible into yeah, the dangerous gonna, zone it's before gonna, getting an encounter. It's going to give me the best possible chance of minimizing my encounter rate through this more dangerous section. Statistically speaking, by doing this, we'll hopefully only see one random encounter from here to the town. In this version, I've actually gotten all the way to the town from here without any battles at all. That would be very nice. If I do see a battle, just I really hope we don't have to run into fight warlocks. And there's those. Oh, nice. It's awesome. four Santa. Nice job. Awesome. 
perfect. So we made it here to Tun Village. There's two things that I really want to do, aside from just staying at the inn and recovering my HP and MP. This is the home of Uncle Water Flying Clothes. He's called Don Mahone in the NES version. I don't know if he has a name in this one. It's Uncle Water Flying Clothes. Yeah. Uh, we'll Good give name. him our yarn and loom, uh, and he says to come back later and they'll be done. The flag to get him to finish is actually a, a game reset, so we're going to need to reset the game in order to get him to finish, which obviously I need to save the game at some point to uh, oh, we got to more reset. stairs in this version. Every town is just a single screen in the NES version, I'm realizing now, but this really is on a stronger engine on the Game Boy. Yeah, the original SFC version was built on Dragon Quest V's engine. And I think this is built on Dragon Warrior Monsters engine. Uh, yeah, partly. Okay, so we also come in the back here, and we're gonna. This is where we use the dam key. The dam key opens this gate here. Oh, much nicer animation than the NES version. All right, good. We're oh, we don't see the water spread out though. Okay, I spoke too soon. All right, that takes care of what we need to do there. First try, easy. Good. We didn't, right, even, we didn't even use the leaf. We only took one difficult fight, and really it wasn't difficult. It was two sleepy orcs. And we didn't even have to see a land encounter there this time. Yeah, I didn't see any Outside hunters. Oh, so fair. <laughs> no hunters, no hibabangos. I don't think I've ever stuff. seen a land encounter after using return there. Oh, well, uh, my spells didn't work very well in this encounter. That's okay. Are we going back there right away or, or later to get the moon fragment? I have to save and reset the game in order for the water flying close to finish. There's actually a couple of other things that we're going to take care of um, in this part of the game instead. Um, when you first are learning the route, there's basically two thing, two ways that you can go at that after you get the moon crest, and it's completely determined if you have a leaf or not. So if you have a leaf, you go straight to Baran. If you do not have a leaf, you can go uh, and do the part that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And it also involves shopping um, and certain amounts of money that you have. And But anyway, Dean is probably going to talk about this. Yeah, what's our next big purchase? We're probably going to sell the bolt stuff for what, like 18500 or so? Uh, 195 yeah. Yeah, yeah. This really is also cool. a good opportunity if I needed to to pick up another world leaf. I actually don't, which is surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's, it's very common to need to use it in that ton region, but we got pretty friendly encounters. So. You can use it in battle for a, and do they come back at full HP or one HP? Yeah, you, the world leaf can be used in battle, and it's a full revive at full HP. Oh, that's really good. Which is, uh, yeah, it's very important. All right, we've come here back to Welgarth. Welgarth Weapon Store has some pretty powerful weapons that are only sold here. So we're gonna very quickly sell our bolt staff for tons of money. We're gonna buy a light sword. A light sword is a weapon that Prince Cannot can equip in this version that he definitely could not uh, in the original NES version. His best, most powerful weapon is Iron Spear, which is not very good. He can equip the Falcon Sword, which lets him attack twice, but his base strength is so bad that the Iron Spear is actually just better. Yeah. So, um, yeah, getting a much better weapon here in this version, the light sword, he actually has very high attack power. And it, right now, actually, it's interesting that his attack power is probably pretty comparable to Prince Lore's. Um, um, if I had more money at this point of the game, instead of buying that giant hammer for Prince BDD, I would have instead bought the Dragon Sword. The Dragon Sword does have higher attack power, it's 15 points higher, but it costs twice as much money. I don't have enough money in this run so far to buy it, so I won't. The good news is that I instead invested that extra money I had into purchasing amulets. Amulets are a pretty special item. Um, if a character is an amulet in his or her bag, it greatly protects against stop spell and sleep. Um, the chances of those effects actually working on my characters has now dropped to something like 3 out of 64 chance. I believe it's about 5% for those effects to work. Sleep spell used to be one of the most dangerous things that I was absolutely worried about in the run, and now it's actually something that I kind of want monsters to do, because if they cast sleep, it usually doesn't do anything. Usually. Every now and then, though. All right, good. You can have a sleep proc as a treat. All right, we're gonna keep sailing west until we eventually reach the Baron continent. Uh, we're gonna head over to there and save the game there. Of course, we're gonna perform our reset to get uh, our water flying close finished. But Baron is generally speaking going to serve as our um, our headquarters for a good chunk of the run. The next probably two, two and a half hours or so, we're gonna use Baron as our main save point. Yeah, just like the TAS. There's also a bank in Baron. 
Mm -hmm. Wait, is the bank everywhere? I just saw uh, you using it there in your practice. There are at least two that I know of. Three that I know oh, of. Oh, right. Amulet only protects you from sleep spell. Like, yeah. Not just from Sweet Breath. That's I was a just, physical phenomenon. I was just about to mention that, unfortunately, Sweet Breath does not count as the sleep spell, and the amulets don't help against them. Any a monster that has Sweet Breath is still super high priority to deal with. All right, cool. No land battles there. That's fine. We've made our way here to uh, Baron. And I'm going to save the game in the corner here, and we're going to reset the game. And that's going to allow us to, to pick up our water flying clothes. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Where are you going? May I cut in with some donations? Absolutely. Uh, chat followed through with their $5 hype train toward the uh, Canuck side quest. Um, so... Noddle donates five dollars. Choo choo. Uh, the burning hunter donates five dollars. Let's go, Prince Box side quest. LM Matos donates five dollars. Chat chanted the spell of heal more. Donation total increased by five dollars. And um, Miria donates twenty five dollars with no comment. Thank you for that. Thank you. Code and Data donates $50. Good luck to some Diener on your DQ2 run. Always excited to see DQ games highlighted in these marathons. And... Ico donates $25 with no comment. Thank you so much. Oops, I forgot to... And... That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Von Star donates $250. This one goes out to all the runners and editors who use their ep expertise to set up the VODs for us nine to five lamers that watch these <laughs> after the fact. <laughs> and yeah, keep the $5 train going. We're 70 out of 250 now. Okay, great. Getting closer. All right, now that we've accomplished that little task, uh, I went and searched in the corner back by that shrine to pick up the last agility seed. Um, it looks like my total agility is only plus five out of the seeds, which is the lowest that I'm really kind of happy with. Yeah, but, that, that one roll really hurt. But that last one, given the way that the, the run has been progressing and I've had to, to do things, there isn't going to really be a good opportunity for me to scum that one, so I just went ahead and used it. Uh, but it's why I made sure that the other two that we used earlier in Osterfair gave me at least plus four. I would have ideally liked the seeds to get me a less, at least six MP, but um, we didn't get that much. Also, Prince Sama has no MP. Yeah. But um, I'm okay with that. We had enough a minute ago, and then and then those trees. Yeah, stole, trees. Trees stole, gonna tree. Yep. Stole a bunch of MP again. That's all good. We probably won't need too much of his MP to progress through this part. Uh, I would only use it to heal. Okay, now we're going to head back to Tun. Since we used the dam key, the desert tiles cleared out and are now water tiles. And I can take my boat all the way up there. So we're going to take this other river path up this way instead and get back to Tun. Not only faster, but uh, uh, the encounter rate will hopefully be lower too since these are all water tiles. It's also important to take my boat up this passage because the next dungeon we're going to go to is the Full Moon Tower, which is on an island here to the south. The only way to get there is to first get and use the dam key and then bring your boat through here. What an encounter rate. Whoa, nice. I went all the way up river and the land without seeing monsters. Apparently all the ton monsters are just, just napping. Totally fine with me. Let's, let's, let's progress the game forward and get, yeah. caught, get caught yeah, up a little bit, please. Yeah. All right, I'll well, stay at the inn here because I definitely don't have a lot of MP. This is, oops, I forgot to get my dress. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought you were doing that second. <laughs> no, I, I should have just gotten it now. There's no real point to backtracking. Okay, so Uncle Waterflying's clothes should now be done with his namesake, and he'll give me this. Well, oops. <laughs> I didn't need to talk to him an extra time, but. Um, dialogue advances with the A button, which is also the interact with 
things button, so when I'm mashing, I sometimes trigger an extra dialogue. He does say, see that the princess wears this. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna give well. it to um, Princess Moonbrook, although she's not going to wear it for the entire run. Oh, there's no moon. That's fine. Let's make some room. Uh, evade cloak to box. Okay, we're gonna equip the evade cloak on Canock, and we're gonna equip the water dress on Moonbrook. As I said earlier, the water dress provides extremely high defense power, but also a built-in damage reduction from spells and breath attacks, which is super important because, um, oh, I gave it to her, uh, which is super important because uh, her M HP is the lowest, so those spells and stuff that do fixed flat amount of damage, being able to reduce the amount of damage is going to actually improve her yeah, it wasn't until ability a lot. It wasn't until Dragon Quest Nine when they finally Im implemented a magical might and magical mending stat that changed spells from being a fixed range to actually scaling with some sort of stat, so the spellcasters don't get completely outscaled by physical attackers later in the game. Yeah, would have preferred to fight those Hibabongos, but uh, since they fell asleep, but they hit me with surround before I I, I knocked them out, so. That would have just been a long time to fight that. I don't really want to spend a lot of time there. All right, here's the Full Moon Tower. The first box we grab is the Strength Seed. There are several treasures that we really want to get here. Oh, yuck. These things are very slow to fight. I'll take my chances. We've just started the dungeon, and there's a church right at the entrance of, of Tun. So if I get in a little bit of trouble on the first floor, I can backtrack without without losing too much time. Without consuming your leaf and having to go get yeah. another one. As I progress forward, if someone dies in this dungeon, I'll definitely use it, but I would... That close to the entrance, though, yeah, I might as well mm, take a do-over. Yeah, over. let's do it. It's a little bit of a risk to box, but I need to be a little aggressive here to deal with uh, Puppet Man. Okay, that looks good. Uh... Yeah, the gold orcs are in separate groups, so we can't sleep both of them at once. Yeah, these are the evil orcs I mentioned earlier. Um, orcs, gold orcs, and orc king are the three different orc types that we can find in this in this game. Um, orcs tend to have tons of HP, tons of defense power, and hit pretty hard. And they're so big that they only show up in formations by themselves. It's never two gold orcs together. It's always gold orc plus another gold orc. Yeah, they're, they're so, a bit solitary. They don't so, like each other. Yeah, exactly. It makes using sleep on them that much, much, much more difficult. Okay, Vampiris are a pretty common enemy in here. These guys are a little strong because they can double attack. It's our first enemy that uh, we've met so far that can do that double attack. In this game, if a monster double attacks, uh, attacks twice in one turn, it always chooses the same target with both attacks. So it's extremely deadly when monsters do those double attacks. Um, because it's it's a focused combo attack, and uh, it really adds up. The program classic double physical. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's a medical herb that I can use to save a little bit of MP. Bought some tougher battles so far. This box has some money. I want money. About 1,200. Ooh. Yep. Don't die, or half of it goes away. Man. Oh, we got a different mural on the ground. There's yeah, one in the, the wind uh, tower that looked like Malroth. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed Griffin that in the task. It, it looked much more like Malroth. All right, down on this detour, we get a defense seed. There are actually two defense seeds in the game, and they're both in this tower. We're going to grab them and immediately give them to Princess Meow. They are, unlike the other seeds, are always giving you plus four defense power, um, which is pretty helpful. So this is effectively going to reduce incoming attack damage to Princess Moonbrook by two points when we grab and use both of these defense seeds. Coming down here, and we're gonna grab the other one along with another 275 gold coins. Not bad. Okay, good. The monsters from here on in this part of the the tower are extremely powerful. Um, uh, okay, that's not gonna do anything. 14 more defense. Wow, good job. Yeah, his defense power is low, so adding 15% or 50% more, excuse me, is not not a big deal. That guy can cast Firebane, which does a ton of damage to everyone in my party, and I'm glad he didn't use it. Um, as dangerous as the enemies are in the upper floors of the Full Moon Tower, we can also technically run into our friend Metal Babble, the Liquid Metal Slime. Um, I haven't talked too much about this guy. He's very rare, but uh, if we do manage to encounter and defeat a Metal Babble, it's worth a whopping 10,000 and change experience. 
10,000 experience basically levels everyone up in my party three or four times immediately and will take a lot of pressure off of the, the difficulty of this run and um, will also save us some time too. So I feel like uh, this run's been a little bit behind so far. So if we could kill a metal battle, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, we got the moon shard, right? What else is here? Hang on a second. I need to uh, figure out what one. I figure out what I want to do here. Uh, <laughs> not good. Not good. Who's got to leave? Good. Drop spell won't work. Let's get out of here. That's fine. That's nothing. That's fine. That's nothing. Evil Clown's awake. 75%, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, that was a little close. We're almost done this dungeon, so I'm going to just try and finish it without reviving. I need that to go leaves. just a little bit further. There's this treasure chest. Oh, boy. There's more monsters. I chose wrong. Okay. Uh, okay. This box up here is not required, but it is our third wizard ring. Nice. Let's go. It's done. All right. Well, that was a little scary, but... Oh yeah, dungeons in this Save game uh, leave. have a ceiling, right? Like if you cast return in a dungeon, you bonk your head on the roof and yeah, you can't but, leave. But the on the top that... floor of a tower. No yeah, there, there are certain dungeons where you are able to return on certain floors, but not all of them. Hargon's Castle, you can return on the first floor, but not the second one. Yeah, I guess the, the illusory first floor. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little it's a little different. Yeah, okay, the... great. We uh, we completed the full moon tower successfully. That's a pretty dangerous dungeon. And now we're going to backtrack towards the Great Lighthouse. The Great Lighthouse is the dungeon I mentioned earlier that is the one dungeon that's actually not super, super duper deadly uh, for the rest of the run. Um, so... I was wondering if there's any armor you could move from Prince BDD. Oh, I, oh I, he's I wearing don't. that yeah. wearing that Lodo exclusive stuff. Yeah and uh, the Gaia armor, which is also something that only he can equip. I'm not worried about it. We've made it here to, to Leon Port. At this point, the ocean monsters are a lot less powerful than they were. Um, oh, okay, I thought you were going straight to the lighthouse. No, I need to revive my, my guy. I'm not going to do the whole dungeon without... without yeah, I guess BDD. we could... It, the bad. encounters aren't dangerous, but if we can win them easily, let's pick up free experience. Why not? Yeah, we will fight our way through. It's going to be a situation where... Um, Fighting enemies is going to be more about using techniques that will kill them quickly rather than techniques that are focused solely on survival. Uh, and that's kind of what I mean. But I do need all my party members here to fight them. Uh, we also come here to Leonport uh, to purchase a wizard staff. This is a item that we can equip on Princess Moonbrook. It's probably the one of the strongest weapons she can equip attack power wise but i don't really care about that the wizard staff can be used as an item in battle to cast the fireball spell for free um yeah, we're done with the knife so we're going to do another little equip trick by passing this item to herself it pushes it down in her inventory effectively pushing the wizard staff up so the little bit of a heft trick there we'll get the wizard staff on top of her inventory and when I go to use it as an item in battle, it'll be the first item in her bag and make it very easy for me to find. I won't have to look for it. All right, now we're going to head to the Great Lighthouse. Uh, the, while the Great Lighthouse is not necessarily a difficult dungeon, it is actually quite long, though. So, especially this very lengthy first floor, I've got a lot of traveling to do. Um, but uh, the monsters aren't going to be too dangerous. We're going to see things like Gorgons that have high defense power. But uh, we've got some pretty powerful weapons. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to work our way through the starting floor here. Oh, looks um, a lot fancier in this version. If I can pass it over to Host for um, any, any comments for, for a while, uh, that would be perfect while I work my way through the bottom floor here. Sounds good. We got a few more people on the $5 train. Yeah, let's go. Jason LaRose donates $5. $5 train. Powered by caffeine, hope, wiggling EVs, turbo controllers, and Osu. Yeah. Thank you so much for that donation. And the Axeman donates $5 with no comment. Thank, thank you. you. I really enjoyed that task earlier, so thank you so much for, for showing that off today. Level 14. <laughs> wow. 
Gramora donates five dollars. Side quest, let's go. And we're at 85, oh, 90 out of 250. So almost, or $160 more, if I do math right. <laughs> um, the Altar Maven donates $15. The Cat Dragon casts Donate. Nami becomes more effective. Command, command, Come command. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, for your donations. Yeah. Um, keep them coming in, though, for that uh, Canox side quest. Yep. And there are some prizes that you can get that are only available till the end of this run. Um, Dragon Quest 5 DS, um, provided by Miria, is a $20 minimum donation. Dragon Quest Mousepad 2, donated by Purple Mario 920 is $5 minimum donation. And Kenshin Dragon Quest game, donated by Hoisin, is a $10 minimum donation. So, yeah, get those in. Yeah, there's some cool prizes that you can win. Yeah. I wouldn't mind getting myself that Dragon Quest V cartridge myself. But, uh, Damn. I'm a little bit busy playing the actual run. I don't know that I'll be able to be able to, to, be able to handle that right now. Dragon Quest V, a great entry if you're new to the series. A Dragon Quest V is one of my absolute favorites. Oh, hey, look, stop spells working, even though like, really you shouldn't. <laughs> Through it's... two amulets. Oh, oh nice. we got another one. Nice. And then they dropped an amulet. <laughs> so all these drops, everything that we can save for money at this point is really actually still important. We, we, we only have like one thing left to buy, but we can buy it multiple times, and it's very, very, very helpful for the rest yep. of the rhyme. Yep. An amulet isn't like the most valuable item drop, but it, we can sell it for 480 gold at this point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's not bad at all. Um, Vendors buy for 75% in this series. Yep. That's pretty good. Yep. Which is another reason why the dragon, the dragon sword is actually not as much of an investment as it looks like. Yeah, it costs twice as much as the big hammer does, but you get twice as much gold when you sell Whoa. it back. So yeah, we can kick back the hammer for 75% of what we paid. It's only about and a thousand gold investment to buy that stronger sword, not four thousand when you really think about it that way. And we just got four eighty of it is paid for now with that amulet drop. Yep. Um at this point, um though we won't bother changing weapons um until we get you know, I'll just beat him. Until we get uh, the more powerful Thunder Sword, but Oh yeah, you're right. BDD and Box are both hitting for 45. Oh, the claw. Oh, the claw. <laughs> I got a mummy claw. That will be tossed. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that'll reanimate into another mummy boy here in a second. <laughs> yeah, we, which we could. It did. Oh, there he is. Ooh. All right, great. Okay. Just needed so. one more bandage to appear on stream. Okay. There we go. Wizard staff should kill him here. Other than, of course, the required quest item that we need to get, which is the um, Star Seal, there are a couple of other boxes I'm going to grab along the way. That one right there has a bunch of money inside. I like money. Um, yeah, as Purple Mario mentioned earlier, that item we're trying to save up for is something called a Heal Shield, called the Shield of Strength in the original uh, NES version. Um, the Heal Shield is... Uh, very, very useful. Uh, we'll, we'll explain a little bit more what it what it's a, what it does uh, once we get it. But um, it does cost twenty one thousand five hundred gold, and a good chunk of that money is actually going to need to come from just fighting monsters or getting item drops from those monsters. There are plenty of opportunities to grab some extra money in some treasure chests. And if I'm really desperate for money, there's an out-of-the-way item I can get to sell for an enormous amount of money that should probably pay for it. Um, but if I just get some lucky item drops from the monsters, then I won't need to won't need to bother with that little, little detour. Okay, we need to fight the gremlin first, and then let's get the gorgon. We've made a detour here in the lighthouse for this treasure chest. 
enough to finish with two surrounds now. Oh, the surround on Meow doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, nice crit. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, I got him. Ah, I got the hit through surround. Very nice. Yeah, excellent. This treasure chest has a life acorn in it. It is our third, or excuse me, our fourth life acorn. It's the last one. And we're going to give this one instead to Princess Meow. And she got five HP. Good. The median. Very, pretty good. Yeah. And um, those additional hit points will come in handy as we start getting towards the really dangerous um, dungeons a little bit further on, particularly when we start running into Roboster, also known as the Killer Machine. Um, getting that extra HP uh, built up now is going to improve her survival a lot. Oh, nice crit. We'll take care of him. 55 gold. That's kind of the replacement for the gold man. In yeah, this game. he's um, the enemy that gives extra money. Pretty much every Dragon Quest game has one. Yeah. Uh, the dragonflies are the most dangerous enemy I could find here. Uh, and I didn't kill that one in one hit. That's nice. Well, that water flying cloth really paying off here. Mm -hmm. Taking one These things spawn with 32 to 40 hit points. If I do at least 40 damage, I'm going to kill one. Okay, 39. That was enough, apparently. Uh, but they can use that Fire Breath attack, which does uh, up to 20 damage on all three of my party members at once. Moonbrook, of course, is taking half damage because she has the Water Flying Clothes. And on top of that, she was probably defending there, too. So I oh, saw yeah. him taking absolutely no damage from that. Uh, but we got through there care correctly. Taking a look at my experience, my levels, ooh, they are very, very low. Um, not that it's going to matter here, per se, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm noticing, I don't, I don't even think Canox, think he's like level 12. Mm -hmm. I normally reach level 13 on him in this dungeon, and he's like a full level behind of where I would be. But that's a consequence of not really fighting anything in the Tun region, and not really fighting much in the Full Moon Tower, which, um, given the pacing and whatnot um, that I feel like I'm on, I would rather move forward and try, mm -hmm. and, get, try and get more experience points from the more difficult enemies later on, even though they are going to be that much harder to beat at my level. I think we'll still manage to finish just taking a peek at the timer right around two hours of the lighthouse, which is not exactly fast, but not exactly slow either. So given the fact that I'm a little under leveled, I'm not surprised this run has been uh, a little bit tougher on me, but uh, you guys are getting to see the uh, how ferocious this game can really be, and I'm fine with that. Okay, so we followed a gremlin who disappeared and instead oh, has... We didn't see which staircase he went into because of the smaller Game Boy yeah. screen. Uh -huh. You mm -hmm. have to guess in this version. Um, and now we're going to follow this old man, this mysterious old man, who apparently didn't see the, where the gremlins went. Or perhaps it's because he is actually four gremlins in disguise. Four gremlins with a robe and a fake beard. <laughs> We're almost finished this dungeon. Um, my resources look plenty healthy. Yeah, um, you have a ton of MP. Uh, Moonbrook has 33 MP. We'll have no problems finishing this dungeon. So we're going to keep following the old man just a little further. Um, the magic ants were dangerous earlier because of they have the sleep spell, but we should be pretty safe because of the amulets. Excellent. I probably didn't need to critical hit that thing, but what do you know? It's dead. All right, good. Uh, the mage staff in this game, is it a little different than the SFC version? Yes, actually it is. Um, it's It casts straight up fireball spell in this version, which is 16 to 20 damage. In the Super Famicom version that I'm also fairly used to playing, it's slightly stronger in that version. It does a little bit more damage. Doesn't it? Doesn't it out just actually kill a gorgon on its it, own? It actually can kill yeah. a gorgon. In this version, it almost never is enough to kill the gorgon. Mm -hmm. You need a high damage roll on the staff and a low HP gorgon. Sure. Something I didn't explicitly mention in this game, though, when the random monsters appear, uh, it was mentioned in the task run. But yeah, monsters appear with a range of their max HP. Um, I believe it's. Uh, 80 to 100 percent of their maximum hp in this version so for instance if a monster's maximum hp were 100 it can appear with anywhere between 80 and 100 hit points 
So sometimes enemies have a little less HP than you might be expecting. Um, the bosses and forced encounters in this game, though, always spawn with their maximum value of HP, unlike uh, in Dragon Warrior 2, where even the bosses can be spawning with less HP, which, uh, that might be kind of nice. Could you imagine Shido with 20% less HP? He's got almost 2,000, so that would be a lot less. It'd be a lot less. Sorry, 2,000 in he's this got, version? He's got 1850, yeah. I believe. Oh, the box was empty. We were so gullible. I can't believe I was fooled by this old man. Not again. And his gremlins. Okay, so this is a forced encounter with four gremlins. They always appear in these formations, 2 1 1. So uh, we're going to focus on killing the ones on the left. But generally speaking, these guys aren't too bad. The worst thing they can do is that fire breath attack, but since they're mostly mostly already out of the picture, then I shouldn't have any problems here. These are the same gremlins that you fought getting the bow, correct? Yeah, yep. wow. they're the exact same ones. Yeah. So same there's, color, four, same there, there, there's four of them now instead of two. Yeah. But. All right, great. Defeating the gremlins rewards us with the star seal. If I had a little bit more MP, I would have cast uh, outside. Um. Oh, <laughs> a brutal hit. <laughs> Wow, if I had more MP, I would have cast outside and not gotten this battle. But hilariously, I got this fight trying to walk off the edge and got brutal hit and killed. Like, that's actually... Wow. Box in a box. I, it, it doesn't matter right now because the dungeon's over. Yeah. But that was hilariously unlikely. Yeah, someone learned outside. Was it was it Box? Yes, yes. he has oh, outside, okay. but he yes. didn't he have enough. He's only got four left. He didn't costs... have, yeah, he didn't have enough MP to cast it. It cost six MP. So I was just going to walk off the it, walk off the edge of the tower to get out. Six or eight? I'm not, it seems to vary in it's, the early it's games. It's six in this version. I think it costs one in DQ11. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to cast Repel. That's what I want. Couldn't remember what I wanted there. Yeah, yeah, casting Repel here. We're back in the country of Moonbrook, so Repel should get rid of everything mm -hmm. here. Yeah, we're heading back towards Hamelin Village right now, and uh, these monsters, we were fighting them like an hour and a half, oops, an hour and a half ago. Now I need to cast Repel again. Um, so we can safely Repel the encounters in this zone without any difficulties. Okay, really quickly, I'm going to check my... Uh, yeah, let's do this. And uh, my poor, my poor Prince Sama box is uh, dead again. Reviving doesn't restore MP. It yes. kind of varies yes, from it does. the version. Okay. version. Oh, how convenient! Expensive, yes, but we don't have to go stay. Yeah, at the end. it's the only, uh, the only saving grace we have. But I will stay at the end after this, after we're done this anyway, because Moon's MP is gone. But we're gonna come down here and we're gonna deal with these guys here, the Oswargs. These are more powerful gremlins, yeah. um, but they're very vulnerable to the sleep spell. In fact, if I hit them with sleep, it always works. Oh, I got wow. bad agility, but it looks like we're going to be okay. This is fine. Everything is fine. The this one is on the fine. left is dead, and the yeah. one on the right is asleep. The jail asleep. cell's on fire, but this is fine. Yeah, that was a little scary, but it's pretty rare you get killed by that fight, but it's pretty bad time loss if you do. And we definitely got the water seal. Yeah, never forget. Never. <laughs> never not even gonna, once. Not even once. We we're going to forget <laughs> the water seal. We're going to make sure we get it. Okay. Um, our next destination is going to be the undersea cave, which is the happiest place on earth, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, that wizardry needs to go to Meow. Yeah. Right? Now she has three. Oh, let's give one to Box then. Okay. Managing my inventory here. We're also going to go upstairs to the bank vault. It's time to put away a bunch of our hard-earned gold. I've got 6,000 I can put in the vault. That's not bad. Yeah, I'm also going to put away some unneeded... Oops, wrong character. Put away some... Oh, wrong item. Possible menu. Uh, we're going to put away some unneeded items. The wind mantle, the lotus seal, the dam key, and the silver key. We are done with those. Um, yeah, the, the task completely skipped the silver key, and all it's used for in the meatbag route is getting the bolt staff. It was also capable, I saw earlier, of just dropping quest items on the ground, which, yeah, we're not allowed to do that in this version. If I could drop the silver key or the wind mantle, I surely would have a while ago. All right, so I'm going to stock up on some additional... Oh, clock. <laughs> now that I don't need them anymore. Oh, this reminds me of running EQ3 SFC with turbo. Yeah. Oops. 
put my very fast turbo auto fire on here yeah, to there's... help me buy some medical herbs and get so rid basically of that slot token. Dino's uh, stocking up on herbs just to save more MP in the undersea cave that's coming up. Yeah, that's all it is. Walk I over I said tiles. it I said it was the happiest place on earth. It is not. It <laughs> is full of deadly, dangerous monsters, and it's a pretty long dungeon. From my personal experience, this is one section that I was repeatedly having to rely on the wizard rings to pr make progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really don't want to have to do that. Um, but I found that if I packed myself like five or six extra medical herbs before we set off and make sure I have at least one warp wing, yeah, I've got two, then uh, it actually cuts down on how bad the, the MP spending tends to get. Um, but depending on the encounter rate and the encounter mix mixtures that I get in this cave, it can be a pretty brutal slog. I hope uh, I hope we don't see too many too many saber lions. And we're going to see a few. Yeah, but, it's inevitable. But hopefully we won't have to fight twenty of them or whatever. Because Diener saved his leaf earlier, he doesn't have to go get another one now. So yeah. that saves a little bit of time. As much trouble as I've been having, I haven't really had to use this world leaf much. Um, wow, nice encounter rate. Yeah. We're going to use the moon shard here. This is what it's for. When we use the moon shard, these, these reefs will, uh, will fall under the water to the tide, and we can gain access here. I'm actually going to force an encounter before I go inside. The encounters oh, on this section. part of the ocean are not super easy, but they're way easier. Oh, it's a bunch of smokes. Those are super easy. They're way easier than monsters right in here. So by forcing an encounter, I'm going to get a longer walk into the dungeon before my first encounter, on average. Um, the undersea cave is pretty interesting here. It's got full of lava tiles that are going to hurt me every time I step on them. But it's also nice. kind, of, kind of unique. Good, we got through the first yes. floor there. In that every single floor of the dungeon has different encounter, different monster possible, possible monsters that can show up. On the upper floor there, we can possibly run into two monsters in particular that I kind of don't want to see. The evil eyes that can drain my MP uh, and the... Um, Oh, yeah, evil clowns nasty. that cast Firebane, which is just a ton of damage. All right, we're going to do some inventory swap stuff here. Uh, as we move further down... Oh, there's no room. Uh, the... There's no room. Somebody's got room, I'm sure. Uh, the encounters are going to get really strong, and Prince Box is basically going to be a liability if I try and do anything with him other than spot heal something. That really needs help. Um... Right or right, we got the three saber lion fight. This is a nice, tough encounter that's going to take me a little bit of time. But um, surround, as we saw earlier, is 100% effective. And by giving the powerful light sword to Prince BDD, he's strong enough that he's going to always kill um, the saber lions in two attacks. They have a maximum HP of 80. So uh, I've got enough damage here that I can guarantee killing them in two hits with the light sword, which is why I've given him the light sword with the big hammer. I might not kill them. Okay. Yeah, level 14. We're strong enough to do the task route now. <laughs> yeah, we won't be finishing the game at this level. In fact, level 14 being earned now in this cave means that, yeah, my experience is definitely a little mm -hmm. bit behind. This part of the cave, we're making a detour to pick up this. It's a wizard ring. <laughs> That's the last one that we're uh, going to find from treasure chests in the game. Technically, we can get some more wizard rings if we're really lucky. Um, they are very rare item drops from a few specific enemies. And late game, one enemy actually drops at a decent rate of 1 in 32. Um, about 3% drop rate. But everything else is sub 1% dropping wizard rings. They almost never drop extra wizard rings. If I did get my hands on an extra wizard ring in the end game from um, Bullwong, I would absolutely be happy. But All right, we're going to backtrack through the second floor. The second floor is filled with mostly gold orcs and these bloody hands, the grag gragoopies. Well, they're called grabupies in the NES version, but they're the, the palette swap version of goopies that appear in the Alephgard continent that we never went to. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, most of these monsters are just really slow to fight, um, and I can 
not safely run from them, but I do have the, the World Leaf if something really bad happens. They do very little damage to Prince BDD, but they do some pretty solid damage to my other two characters. Yeah, those Drag Oopies can call reinforcements. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Right. Medical herbs. Okay. Interesting to note is that Princess Meow is equipped with the Water Flying Clothes. She actually does not take uh, damage from the... Oh, nice surprise. From lava Tiles. Uh, oh. And I fell asleep to the mummy. <sighs> oh, Meow died. Oh, oh no. and Box died, and I'm lava. asleep. What? <gasps> hmm. Well, this is going to get interesting. I am not 100% sure how I'm going to make it through the rest of this dungeon with my dead Prince Prince Canock. Our guy with outside is dead. Uh, getting out of here is not going to be a problem. If I can actually finish, I'll just All oh, right, we, we spent our money. I'll okay, just, so yeah, we can yeah, yeah. just pay the price of a ticket out. But uh, getting through the dungeon is absolutely another matter entirely. Still got to beat the double evil clown fight at the bottom, yep. too. Yep. And I'm thinking I might put the water flying clothes on Prince BDD to reduce the damage from Firebane even more, uh, because he's going to be the only way I can fight stuff now. These guys should go to sleep 85% of the time. These guys will fall asleep. But I can still beat these guys. Okay. So there's two more items that I want to get here. One treasure chest that I'm about to pick up that has... Um, Um, a suit of magic armor. Magic armor has the same defense power value as the uh, Cloak of Evasion, but it also has, instead of the additional dodge chance that the Cloak of Evasion has, it has instead a built-in 25% re damage reduction from magic spells. Um, this is going to be pretty useful in the late game, and uh, it's going to be one of the better pieces of armor we give to Prince Box. Can BDD but, equip it? Uh, yes. In fact, normally that's the strategy we'd use here in this particular part. All right, I'm in a lot of trouble. Um, but like I said earlier, I might actually just give him the... Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to completely redo this, how I handle this encounter, I think. Oh, geez, there's so many dangerous monsters. It's frankly a miracle my party is still standing at all. Well, I think we're one staircase away from those double clowns. We're almost at the end. Um, the important quest item at the very bottom, however, is the, uh, the thing I need to progress the game forward. It's called the evil statue in this version. It's known as the Eye of Malroth in the original one. Um, yes, and we absolutely need the Eye of Malroth to progress the game forward in two different places. So. Uh, let's use the medical herbs. I want to keep my MP intact as much as I can. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. This box has stop spell for this. Uh, can the clowns be put to sleep? Yes. Um, what I'm actually going to do is... Okay, I'm going to give... Oh, he ended up with the magic armor. I'm going to keep light sword and magic armor. And I have water dress on moon. I'll try and do it like this. This is not the strategy we'd normally have, as I would have an extra character at desperate times. I'm going to really oh, have to rely on groups. sleeps. Yes, they're separate okay. groups. Good. That was good turn order, and I got the one on the left. Nice. Oh, one shot oh, wow. with a light sword. Oh, we got it. That's actually not... Oh, wow. Great. Actually... Two one shots. Okay. okay. No, we got to get we got to get the statue still. Yeah, we, we got to make it just steps. a little further. Uh, I guess I don't care about my MP now. The only way I'm getting out of here is by dying. So nice. Oh, okay. Wow. Oof. Statue acquired. Oh, well, that was uh, <laughs> not how I drew this one up at all. We but take off our I will. I will take it. Oh, I'm just gonna look for monsters. Monsters oh, okay. will kill me way faster than the lava will. True. I've never seen anyone do it with those two before. I'm used to seeing um, Princess Meow die during that fight, uh -huh. and uh, Box and BDD being the two that survive. So I didn't know how that was going to work. When you could actually hit Metal Hunter with magic? That's. And I crit him. <laughs> <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs>
Uh, item. I just go for the win at this point. No, I definitely want to get out of here. All right, good. There you go. All right, we made it away. Or made a way out one way or another. All right, while I go ahead and focus on recovering my condition and going in to get another world leaf, I'd like to turn it over to the host uh, for some for some for some commentary. Awesome. Uh, so, oh, let me refresh a little bit. All right, so we're halfway through the run right now, and we're about halfway to the goal for. Uh, Prince Canuck side quest. Or Prince Box. Prince Box, yes. <laughs> Which I think it's funny that it says curse and then help the Prince of Canuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. He's going to end up getting cursed by Hargon's magic and we're going to have to help him. Um, so, Creative Ellie donates $5. Wait, Canuck learns thwack in this run? <laughs> Does that mean he becomes a beat boxer? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, beat and defeat in the NES version. He is, he is literally a beat boxer. Well done, Ellie. Well done. Sorry. Completely approved. <laughs> Sorry, had to throw a Dragon Quest pun. Yeah, I, totally appropriate. Yeah, there's no beat in this game, but it is called defeat. This was the old localization. Mm -hmm. The spell names changed into more cutesy, punny names, starting from Dragon Quest VIII. Anyone else in chat have puns? Side quest train hype. And uh, Regicide donates $50. Oh, yo, Regicide, good to see you, man. Best of luck to Diener for the rest of the run. Hashtag D. Thanks so much, dude. SUMD. No. It's a friend of mine from back home, so thanks so much for watching, man. All right. Um, our next major cavern is the second to last dungeon in the game. It is the Road to Roan. Um, this is a particularly uh, long and dangerous dungeon that's also filled with a bunch of things like pitfalls and infinitely repeating hallways and mazes that will make you wonder if you know where you're going. Fortunately, as speedrunners, we've got a little bit of clairvoyance and we're gonna know exactly where to go in the dungeon. And that's gonna help us a lot. But what's not going to help our progress is the monsters we're gonna have to face. <laughs> There's box lost consciousness. Primitive paralysis status. Yeah, yeah well, that's okay. Shouldn't have a problem here. We're going to need to... At this point in the game, there's a huge checklist of things that I can do, and I'm going to try and complete some of them in whatever order makes the most sense at the time. Um, heading into Roan here, um, the important thing to do is there are some of the best weapons and armor hidden in this dungeon, and I want to get my hands on those pieces of equipment ASAP. So our first trip into the cave is mostly going to be focused on actually just pulling out the um, the good stuff that I need um, out of the dungeon. I guess I do need to vault um, the moon shard. We're done with the moon shard. Um, so we're going to head to the back of Baron, which is where we're going to get access to this dungeon. I'm missing a little bit of MP, but... Well, I went to get that leaf, but I'm not too worried about it. We're not allowed to stay at the inn here um, until we meet that donation incentive. So uh, if you want me to be able to rest at an inn in this town, then let's get those donations in, guys. All right. We're going to take this Traveler's Gate behind through here. Those uh, yellow zigzaggy barrier tiles actually deal 15 damage per step um, instead of the other ones that were dealing 7. So we should have enough health to traverse through okay here. Um, we're not going to get stop spell uh, for quite some time. So, or excuse me, uh, step guard. Did I say stop spell? I yes. meant step guard. Uh, we're not going to get step guard until level 17, Prince Box. So uh, we're going to just have to deal with with stepping on the barriers for a while. Actually, let's get the head of Oh, the hunter falls asleep 100%, although I still got bash a good bit. 
Yeah, how nice that Dragon Quest games let the... They always like wizards having high agility. They're not just like strong nukers, but going first makes them very good at their job. Yeah, it's... Most it's, RPGs are like, I'm casting a complicated spell and it'll be ready at the end of the turn, and then everything will get nuked. But uh, Dragon Quest really want to encourage you to think about the magic uh, tax spells you have at your disposal. Mm-hmm. All right. Got a little beat up on that fight, but that's okay. All right, so we use the evil statue here. Uh, it's in your bag. That's perfect. Lovely animation for this, by the way. Yeah, it's very fast. All right, so this cavern rises up out of the ground, and now we've made our way into the road to Roan. And, um, yeah, a similar to... Oh, boy. Similar to um, the Undersea Cave, there is a great variety of monsters that we're going to fight, um, depending on which part of the dungeon that we're at. And this is a very bad situation. It's my defense power is lowered. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just die. Sure, why not? Yeah, fine. That was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Classic Road to Rome. Better to be merciful early than string me along for a few minutes, I guess. Yes, exactly. But, uh... Didn't lose our leaf, we can just pay the cost and go right back yeah, in. Yeah, we'll just dive right back in. Well, that was pretty road, sad, man. but now you get an idea of how bad, how dangerous the enemies are actually in here. So that's the first floor. Yeah, that's the very first floor, and I got one of the Out absolute... Of, uh, and seven or eight, just I seeing think? that encounter, yikes. Yeah, that's got to be one of the worst encounters that you can see in the dungeon. Yeah. Right. Even as, even as we move further up. Like, three power, well, two powerful physical attackers all in separate groups, and mm -hmm. then the evil clown casting defense to mm -hmm. make you take, like, 50% more damage. Yeah, no, those I, I, uh, after the... Unfortunate after, targeting, too. After I got hit by, um... After I got hit by defense and I saw what the situation was like on turn one, I should have just run away, tried to run away. I thought about it, but... Tried to stick it out and didn't work so well, but that's okay. We'll just try again. Okay, so we're gonna head back into the cave now and um, uh, try to get the first uh, item I want. The we're gonna make a quick trip over to the staircase on the right hand side that I was almost at and head down into the hork pit. We didn't see any Horks in the Hork Pit in the Tass because we didn't see any random encounters, really, that we didn't want to. And, uh, but, but uh, yeah, we might run into a couple of Horks down in the Hork Pit. That's okay. In the Hork Pit is, of course, the Life Seal. And the Life Seal, once I pick this up now, should complete my set. I have all five oh, of the... Oh, swamps down here in this version. I have all five uh, Elemental Seals now, so... Yeah, here are some Horks. So now I can get uh, the important quest item, Rubus' Charm. Yeah, Horks are pretty tanky. They have 80 to 90 HP each. Really not worth uh, spending MP to get Yeah, just a big group. Of, oops. If it was just like one or two, I'd probably fight them. But three or four is definitely going to take a lot longer. They're not as vulnerable to sleep as I would like them to be. And they're instead just going to follow and counterattack me with their sweet breath. Yeah, if they were as susceptible to sleep as ghouls, it'd be different. Okay, these are two separate groups, but the mo mo majority of them are in one group. Oswargs are uh, guaranteed to fall asleep. As long as Meow casts sleep early enough in this encounter, then it should be uh, uh, an automatic win. Oh, uh, Box still has all my medical herbs. That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's efficient to heal in the middle of a battle instead of stopping to open the menu after, because the interface in this game is so fast. Yeah. It's quite I, satisfying. I, um, as much as possible, am trying to try and top off my HP in the middle of battle, as it will be quicker than... Wow, she's level 10? I fought nothing in the Undersea Cave, I guess, so I guess that makes sense. Wow, yeah, she's true. level 10. That's... What are you doing in this cave with Moonbrook level 9? We're in the Road to Road at level 10! 14-something and 10 for levels? It'll, it'll work itself out. I mean, I, it, it has to. There's yeah. no other option. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All four, all four of these guys in the same formation, then Moonbrook going first. They're all asleep, and uh, we'll take care of these guys one at a time like this. 
Um, and I'm just going to carefully read these sleeping messages. Once I see somebody wakes up, we'll just cast Sleep Spell again. But, now, uh, is now the most important thing about Moon's uh, or Meow's level is, is how much agility she has. So, Absolutely. like, the further up you get in this climb, the more sh you just need her to go tell. first and cast Sleep or cast whatever. And if she doesn't have the agility, she's probably going to get outturned by something that's going to try to kill you. Yeah. Um, in particular, she's going to get big boosts of agility both at level 13 and again at level 14. Both of those agility boosts make progressing through the top part of this this cave uh, a lot safer. But if I'm still level <laughs> 11 or 10 right. or whatever it is, I'll simply try anyway. Yeah. But uh, I tell you what, this would be a perfect time to see our mm -hmm. friend Metal Babble would... and kill him. Ideal. I would get yep. very quickly caught up on the experience I'm missing and put this run back into back closer to being on pace. All right, we've taken this left path here on the third floor to start. I'm going to take this passage up and grab the treasure chest that's here. This is the magic hat. Um, the magic hat is really uh, kind of unique. It's the only helmet in the game that either Box or Meow is going to be able to equip. On its own, it's only worth eight defense power, which is not, not bad, not, not to be ignored. Not but, nothing. But the real advantage of this thing is that whoever is equipped with this magic hat their spells, when they cast them in battle, are now cheaper. Moonbrook's um, spells, now that she's wearing this hat, now cost three-fourths of their usual value rounded down. What this means is that our Heal More spell, which used to cost five MP... Oh! Yeah, that, he's still oh, here! Oh, oh, crit, oh, oh, crit, oh, oh. Guys, guys! Two damage, not bad. Stay, stay, stay. Oh. <sighs> We might get some more chances. To I, see. We're gonna have some more. Oh, we better. Yeah, we're we're not trying to one time the entire journey through Road to Rhone. This is this is where the series kind of started this tradition of like an extremely long cave with lots of good gear, but also a lot of very scary enemies that leads to the actual final area oh? where the where the big bad lives. Oh. So he's teasing me. There's no way we're gonna have enough resources to one time the whole trip. Okay, this is the most common battle that you see on this part of the dungeon. Orc, Orc King plus Gargoyle. So you definitely need to know how to deal with this fight uh, efficiently um, as it's like 40% of the encounters are basically the same battle, just rearranged. Yeah, um, understanding the strat here, the, the Orc King is too tanky to take out first. Like the Orc the, is taking out in turn one. The Orc has low that. agility and should be defeated before it is able to do anything because it has sweet breath. It's got to go first. Yet another mural on the floor there, looking a bit like Zorlox. Oh, oh, oh you didn't see me! Oh. Get it, get it, come on! Oh, two come on. good start. Three hits. Come on, stay. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Yes! Ah! Yes! Yes. Yes. Uh, Saved. Okay. Ooh, yes. All right, we'll see my characters go up a lot of levels. Everybody's going to go up probably two levels from it. Yes. Oh, the sweet, sweet, sweet sound of level spam. I, 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 I'm I, sorry for anybody with headphones that we shouted into the, the headsets <laughs> for, but yes, that is so, so exciting. That makes me feel a lot happier. I'm sorry for your and ears, but that's it. Yeah, that's basically it. And <laughs> I was about to, I was going to say a little bit earlier, uh, a second ago, that I was going to pledge a $50 donation if we could kill that metal battle. Oh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, I promise I'm going to make that $50 donation now. Oh, I'm so happy we killed that guy. Oh, oh it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> also I also got a thunder sword now. I just breathed a huge sigh of relief by killing that thing. Also, now that we're kind of caught up on EXP. Um, basically, every metal metal babble kill you get in here, if it if it kind of puts you over where the grind uh, grind starts, it kind of saves about ten minutes of the whole game. Yeah, that's generally what you're thinking. But right now, it's just kind of like giving you buffer levels to get through all the way to run. At this point, with how many things have gone wrong right. in this run, I've probably lost. 10, 10 minutes worth of time, so this is yeah. mostly getting me back on pace. Exactly. But yeah, no, that not only makes this makes me feel better about where we are XP-wise in the run, but again, it's going to make progressing up the, 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 
the cave that much safer when we do. Also in uh, SFC and Game Boy Color, a lot of people qualify their PBs as um, zero um, babble kills, one babble kill, two babble kill, three babble kills, and that's because um, you Got might have a, a, you might have a better against. run that has no bab babble kills compared to a run that, with a better time that has three. Right, and you're it's, just more proud of one or the other. It's, it's just it's, completely it's, it's different. It's kind of an interesting and an interesting aspect of it. Obviously, if we're looking at getting the absolute best times, we want to kill lots of metal battles, yeah. of course. But there's no way to really manipulate them to show up, and there is no real way to for us to defeat them effectively either, other than just preying on something like what just happened earlier. Um, so yeah, this... defeating them to earn experience is not really a thing that we can reliably count on. So that's kind of why we why we specify it like that. Um, it's mostly just for our own for record keeping. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, if you finish the the game with a three hour and fifty time and you killed one metal babble, that's a pretty good time. But if you got a time of three fifty and you didn't kill any metal babbles at all, that's actually a much much faster time you know, when you think about it in, in those terms because uh, you needed to earn more experience the, the hard way, let's say. As for me right now, I'm happy to earn experience the easy way. And if we could kill maybe a, another metal babble, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be upset. Oh, good targeting there. Oswark C woke up and then BDD reacted and targeted mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, the targeting actually is not based off of whether the monsters are awake or asleep. They can't, they don't see that. They actually use different logic to do their targeting. There, she got nice. level 13. Yeah, you were telling me about it earlier where uh, your characters guesstimate monster HP and think, I can finish this guy off and we'll go for it. But sometimes they guess wrong. Yes. Um, typically speaking, um, my characters... Oh, I actually want the magic armor equipped. Uh, I'm also going the wrong way, but that's okay. Is uh, level just 13 trying. where Moon gets a nice little agility boot? Yep, she picked up five points of agility there, and she's going to get another six points at her next level up, too. So um, that's definitely going to make progressing forward a lot easier. Um, it's so funny seeing Gargoyle here, because the dangerous parts of the ocean where Gargoyle and Vampyrus appears, it's like, oh no, flying enemies. But here, Gargoyle is probably the weakest enemy in the Road to Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to try and use sleep and stop spell a lot, which should not work because of the amulets. Occasionally they do, of course, but most of the time that's pretty much a wasted action. Yeah, uh, running Dragon Quest is about uh, playing the odds. Exactly. This is 100% a, a, a game about playing the odds, and the only way you know how to play the best odds is by having very intimate knowledge of what's going on in the game, how powerful all these enemies are, how fast they are, and all this other stuff. So What, what spells they're vulnerable to. Exactly. Um, so knowing all that information is, is very important to mastering this game, and... Um, it's a lot of information you got to keep track of, and there's a bunch of, of, of advanced uh, strategies that we that we try to utilize to to do what we need to do. All right, one last item I'm going to try and get here. I didn't really mention it when we grabbed it. I was still really excited about that metal mm -hmm. battle, right? Right. Uh, we got the thunder sword and equipped it on. Oh, BD. sorry. Um, the Thunder Sword is the most powerful sword in the game that we're going to get. Um, technically, the, the Sword of Destruction, the Devil Sword that we saw earlier in the task, is more powerful, but it's cursed, and we don't have a way of avoiding the uh, negative effects of the curse in this, um, so we're not manipulating any of the RNG. So we don't want the, the Sword of Destruction, the Devil Sword it's called in this version. We're going to use the Thunder Sword, but the Thunder Sword is a very powerful weapon in terms of attack power. Uh, it also can be used as an item in battle, the same as the Bolt Staff, to use this Thunder effect. That essentially is the same as a free cast of Infernos. Uh, we're going to throw away my old armor. It actually doesn't sell for very much. And yeah, because you get it for free in Austin mm -hmm. And pick up Lodo's armor, Erdrich's armor, the best armor in the game. And now we've got the full complement of Lodo gear, and I am totally out of MP, so let's get out of here. Nice now, first trip. Yeah, yeah that, got cause, all three cause, good cause, items. Because that, really, that really was the first trip, and not actually technically the second. One. I saw, I saw, I saw <laughs> no other trip other than that one. Yeah, that, same. All right, oh. I'm going to um, actually do something a little bit unusual here. Um, 
and I'm going to intentionally kill one of my characters. Oh. I'll take a take a quick break here, meow. Uh, we mentioned earlier that there's a little bit of a cutscene here that happens when we stay at this inn in Baran. We're going to try and avoid that until the donation incentive is met. Although, well, actually, I should have asked really quickly. Have we, how close are we to that incentive now? Still exactly halfway there. $125 needed more. Okay. So, so we'll continue doing this this way for now. Um... But we can, uh, we can complete that incentive a little bit later, uh, all the way up until basically when we get to the, uh, the final boss rush. Once I start the final boss rush, I might just finish the game, and at which point I will not have an opportunity to backtrack and do it. However, this cutscene can be avoided. This is typically what we do in the speedrun here to stay at this inn, is intentionally kill one of our characters, and then we can stay at the inn now. The cutscene will not trigger if one of my party, any of my party members is dead. And then we'll walk over to the church and revive Moonbrook. Okay, good. I don't think Canock is 17 yet. Uh, Hero just, or uh, BDD just became 18. Okay, yeah, we're just short of, of 17. Yeah. Fox learns us step guard at oh, 17. Right, so yeah. I would have preferred to not step on the barriers. Uh, step guard only costs one MP, Yilmore still costs five. Um, but uh, not quite there yet. Should be really close, though. All right, let's heal up. And then we're heading back into the cave now. Um, uh, now that we've collected all the fancy weapons and armor out of the, the cave, it's time to... Okay, these guys were super scary earlier, but I'll probably be able to beat them now. Hmm. First week, oh, yeah, super you're targeting. Right. They're, they're not looking for sleep. Yeah. Oh, nice crit. Um, generally speaking, when monsters, or excuse me, when my characters choose to target monsters with uh, enemies where there's more than one monster in the formation, typically speaking, they always choose to select the enemy in the formation that has the fewest remaining hit points. In that case, you notice they actually targeted different enemies there. Prince Lorasia is so strong with his powerful Thunder Sword, he looks at Warlocks and he says, I'm going to kill a Warlock in one hit. And instead of attacking the one with the fewest remaining hit points, he attacks the one with the most remaining hit points. That's actually something we can take advantage of in a couple of situations to guarantee that uh, when we go to fight Prince BDD and Prince Box, we're actually going to split targeting. We'll see that in groups of flames later on when I do the level grind. Um, BDD will be killing flames in one hit, but Box will take two hits to kill them. But it was a situation where I can kill three flames in two turns by attacking with both of them. It's a little bit of a, a speed up efficiency move there to do that. Yeah, BDD will read. I'm not going to target the one that's half dead. I'll save that for Box. Exactly. Oh, one of these things woke up. I missed the message. Very, uh, very intelligent for a Game Boy game. Yep. Um, I believe this cartridge actually runs on a brick Game Boy. It's one of those like black cartridges that's uh, mm -hmm. Game Boy Color enhanced. Like if you play it on a Game Boy Color or newer, then you get the more than four colors, and, yeah, you know, specific colors. Uh -huh. But it will run on a Game Boy, which is a pure, extremely impressive. A pure black and white one, yeah. The Dragon Warrior Three Game Boy Color uh, cartridge is a full-on Game Boy Color one that will yeah. not play on a regular. Got that Game Boy. extra bubble in the cartridge shell that will make it not fit nope. in a brick. I got ambushed by this fight, but we did not get put to sleep, so I should be able to fight my way out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is good. Right. Again, even if uh, the gargoyle is kind of useless, it'll still be faster to put it to sleep because we get a faster battle report on each turn cycle. We'll just say, gargoyle's asleep. No yeah. animations. It's not going to flash to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Um, monsters also have built-in specific dodge chances uh, that are specific to each monster. A sleeping monster cannot dodge my attacks, so that's another kind of bonus advantage to that as well. Um, but even though the gargoyle frequently doesn't kind of these throwaway actions like stop so nice, nice. critical hit, good that's, one shot that guy. Turn. Exactly. Uh, actually, let's do this. Um, it can still attack me for a fair bit of damage, so um, putting it to sleep for sleep spell now costs one MP because of the Hat of Happiness. Um, 
putting it to sleep for one MP is always cheaper than getting hit in the face and then having to heal for three. All right, um, our next focus here, now that we've returned to the cave and got our cool weapons and armor, is uh, to try and actually complete the dungeon itself. There is a special save shrine um, once we get all the way through this dungeon and go through a stretch of overworld. Uh, it's the final save point in the game, and it's kind of a unique and special one because it also is a full auto heal and auto revive. Um, and uh, it's going to be important that we save the game there. So that's going to be my focus, to try and reach the top of this cave and save the game at the shrine uh, in Roan. This floor right here is full of invisible pitfalls. If I step in the wrong square, I will fall in a hole and I will lose a lot of progress in this dungeon. Oh, wow, a bunch of scary dragons. Sleep at one that didn't go wow. oh, I dodged. Uh, 50-50, let's go. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna die. Oh. Real well. <laughs> Eventually, that will be the best encounter that we can see. This is Dragon Warrior. We had to warrior up some dragons there, and it did not go well. That was insanely unlucky on the sleep cast. They're sort of vulnerable to sleep. Uh, it should be 60% effective, so hitting only one there is definitely unlikely. Also, oh. at level 13, Moonbrook is probably pretty fast, too. And, um... Yeah, we got outturned really badly. Still, pound for pound, that's one of the most deadly fights that we could possibly have encountered. So. But also very rewarding. It is very rewarding if I could have cleared the fight, which is definitely what I was I was aiming for. But I was still 16. But that's okay. We'll just uh, we'll just give it another shot. Again, fairly merciful in the fact that we got killed quickly and when we moved up instead of yeah, getting to that floor. five steps away from the shrine and then dying. Right. We, we continue to get stronger. We're not running from everything. We're fighting our way up there. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's an important thing that I would like to point out here. Even if this trip up the cave takes me multiple tries, um, each time I am attempting this, I am earning more and more experience points. And a big part of finishing the game is going to be to earn enough experience points. So, and we got um, about 9k in the bank, too. So we didn't like lose a ton of money, either. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about the, the vault. The, the gold drop. We are working on the eventual pile up to buy the heal shield for 21.5 thousand. Yes, for sure. But um, at this point, um, oops. our main bottleneck for experience is getting Prince Box to level, uh, I think, 25. That's going to gonna be our spell. ultimate goal to finish the game. Yeah, yes. that's that's our like actual bottleneck for like um, experience. Technically, overall. there are some strategies that can finish the game at lower levels, but they are incredibly unstable uh, and will probably involve... Would it, uh, first off, I don't know the ins and outs of those strategies because they're, they're that unlikely to work. No, it's, it's a situation where once we get that powerful, the final bosses become much more manageable, but before then, they're practically unbeatable. I like this non-linear shortcut through the basement. It's like fewer tiles to go through there than above ground. Yeah, and I would rather run into Horks than the things on the first floor that cast Firebane and attack for tons of damage. Yep. Like the, the, the Saber Lions. Those and... Hunter Mechs. Oh, I don't know if they appear there, but yeah. Uh, oops. I love how sleep costs one MP now yep. that we have the Magic Hat. Yep. So Princess Meow's best action just became twice as good. Mm -hmm. got, it went from two to one, and the cost is rounded down. Yep, it's three-fourths rounded down, so heal more becomes goes from five to three, which is the same cost as regular heal. Um, Infernos goes from four to three, sleep goes from two to one. Those, okay. are the, those are the most notable ones. Our character's max HP is actually, heal more is starting to get very efficient. Uh, heal more was, was more potent in this era of Dragon Oops. Quest. Uh, it healed for 80 to 90. I think it's like 60 to 70 in every other game in the series. I'm, uh going the wrong way here. I, this Obviously, these halls all look exactly the same if I'm not... Usually when I get a battle, I can't remember. I can't see very far um, yeah, left, left and right. Actually, I want to switch armor here. I do want to switch. Yeah, Diener knows the encounter groups on every single floor. Uh, the Cloak of Evasion and the Magic Armor give the exact same defense power, but uh, there's more physical attackers on this floor that will take that evasion chance to take zero damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, as I progress up the cave, there are fewer and fewer enemies that have attack magic, and um, I would rather have the built-in dodge chance from the Cloak of Evasion than the uh, additional uh, magic resistance from the enemies that are not casting magic spells on me. Uh, Alright, just go to sleep and we'll finish this guy. Oh, yep. Mm. 
critical mm -hmm. hit. That'll definitely beat him. Um, but I would also appreciate if we could get an item drop from some of these item monsters, too. Some of these monsters can drop some pretty expensive items. I don't want any of those items, really, but selling them for lots of money would be good. Yeah, how much does that Devil Tail we got sell for? Oh, I forgot I had that. That's about a 1,000 gold. Very nice. So it's a pretty good drop. But in particular, hmm. these gargoyles, I think I have a 1 in 8 drop chance, and their drop item is an Iron Helmet. Iron that Helmet sells for, a lot. sells for about 2,300 gold, so that would be uh, a, lot of, a lot of progress towards my, uh, my goal. It's always strange when you see those uh, uh, enemies appear without a hork. Yeah, that's that that formation usually has that third monster that we continually see, but not this time. Okay, so once again, there are pitfalls on this floor, and if I step in the wrong place and don't get killed by dragons, then we can advance up without any problems here. All right, this mm -hmm. is the last screen. It's a really big Lost Woods maze, though. Uh, what level am I? 13? Yes, good. So we're going to start seeing, this is our first time really tangling with Roboster, the killer machine. That's his name in the in Japanese. The attack bot. The attack bot, yeah. Um, a killer machine. Oh, that, I don't have the yield shield yet. Silly. Um, okay, oh, here we go. 17 and got step, step guard. Good. Um, uh, killer machine is a very powerful enemy, so it's probably worth me talking a little more in detail about him. We're going to be seeing him quite a bit through the rest of the run as we continue to level up. He's a pure physical attacker with 75% chance to pick a double attack, and a very rare chance of doing something called a brutal hit, which we saw at the end of the lighthouse, ironically. <laughs> From the saber tiger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a, it's essentially a monster critical hit. It's a super high attack power, defense power ignoring basically at my HP level, unless I'm defending, it's instantly, it's instant kill. Uh, it does close to 100 damage. In fact, it can do more than 100 damage uh, with a good damage roll. Got the heals off. Oh, oh I got breathed on at the very end there. Oh, and block the wizard wand yeah. fireball imitation. Yeah. Okay, good. Nice. She reached level 14. All right. There's six more Great ability. timing for that. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm excited to, to see her level up there. That'll make uh, her initiative rate in this dungeon a lot better. Mage Vampiris, I want to neutralize them with sleep as much as possible before they cast defense or uh, dragons. I should actually be able to hopefully go a little bit quicker next time I run into a big group of them. There you go. She That's went first and hit both nice. of them. That mm -hmm. is That makes this fight a lot easier. There's a double attack on blocks from Robostur. Mm -hmm. Very important I'm... to take them out first because they're immune to all forms of magic. Yeah. Uh, the only things that I can hit him with magic-wise are status effect spells. I can surround him at 85% to lower his accuracy, and at lower All levels, right. that's actually a really good sh I still don't have the heal shield. I don't know if that works in the NES version, but even if it did, surround feels like it only it, lowers it, hit chance by 25%. Yeah, so it surround is completely worthless. Surround is not especially powerful in the original NES version, but it's, it's, it's much better in this version. It's really important to get sleep on those guys first, especially when they appear with the, the robots, because if they get a defense off and then the robot hits you, it's it could be a double physical death. That's the major thing I am worried about. Yeah, the Mage Vampiris can cast defense, which lowers uh, my party's defense power in half each time I get hit by it. And that's a huge problem. Um, I'm counting on Prince BDD's super heavy armor to tank hits from Killer Machine. If his defense power drops, suddenly he cannot survive nearly as well as he used to be able to. So Might as well be a martial artist from Dragon Warrior 3. Like, big HP, but no defense. Yeah. Um, so now that my agility is high enough that I usually will go faster than them, I can hopefully just put them to sleep and neutralize that their ability to, to do that entirely. Okay, this is a good time to see two dragons right now. Nice. Two Very good. sleepy dragons. All right. Great. This is Dragon Warrior, and I'm happy to see dragons in a Dragon Warrior game. There are, in fact, dragons in this game, and we are going to fight them. A lot of EXP. Yeah, the dragons give 480 experience points apiece and um, are actually not that hard to kill if uh, you know, we're going to switch to the magic armor once we get to the overworld. I'm really quick check out my HP and MP. looks okay. All right, we're out of our prison cell. Now we just have a short walk to get uh, to the shrine mm -hmm. and then exist in Roan Jail. Now that we're out onto the, the white ground of Roan... Oops, I don't want to waste tiles here. 
the encounters suddenly are now even more powerful, um, and I have to be pretty careful. Okay, Silver Devil's falling asleep, that's good. It says AG Devil, that, that's actually what it is. It's Silver Devil um, in Japanese. That's the chemical element symbol for, for silver yeah. AG. <laughs> Periodic tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, they were pretty creative with their, their limited character space here. Yeah, whoever localized this is a legend. <laughs> I think they use the same uh, names in Monsters. Yeah, Dragon Quest Monsters. All right, now the enemies have cranked up their power even more significantly, and... Oh, here's Bulwong. Ooh, I am actually going to tangle with this guy. Let's go. Okay, Fire Breath. Yes, good. If he falls asleep on any stop spell, perfect. I've got a good chance of taking this guy down. He's guaranteed to stay asleep the first turn, so I'm going to go ahead and his defense and lower his uh, armor a little bit while I work on building my HP. Yeah, he, might, he might wake up now, but... This guy's very durable and has a pretty advanced moveset and doesn't quite give enough experience points to be worth it. When NASCAR used to run the NES version of this game. Oh, oh yes! Yes! yes. For wizard ring. A fifth wizard ring. Oh, I, again. The holy grail. Again, apologies for yelling into the no, microphone there. No, that's awesome. There, Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, this this run has been blessed. Suddenly, after, you know, a lot of struggles, we've hit not only a metal babble kill, but it, a 1 in 32 prayer ring drop, wizard ring drop, that an extra wizard ring that could end up making, hopefully, if I get a little bit of good luck with my wizard rings, that could, uh, that could make a big difference coming into the end part of the game. So. Also, we got to the shrine. Yeah, yeah. actually <laughs> touched the shrine. That is a big deal. <laughs> That's a very, very long walk through the Road to Rome, yeah, which, as you yeah, can yeah. see, is dangerous I, the whole I, way. We don't want to have to do that walk uh, additional times, so um, we, feels, did, we did successfully save at the shrine. <laughs> that is fantastic. It feels unthinkable to get this far before level 20, but uh, here, we here, go. We, here we are. Level 14 moonshine. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've come back inside the cave. I'm coming in here just to earn a little bit more experience points. Ooh, boy. Let's yeah, the, the encounters are a bit easier. It's more efficient to grind in here. You saw how easily we can dispatch dragons by putting hustle. them to sleep. We get a bit lucky. Thanks oh, for the yikes. hustle. Yeah, I got hit by defense. Yep. You can see how much more dangerous this uh, particular encounter is once my defense power has been lowered that much. Yeah, that's a major difference. Uh, that was interesting. All right, whatever. That's not going to be a problem. In the sleep. Good. Okay. Um, before I progress forward on the next part of the game, I'm trying to earn a little bit more experience. In particular, I'd like to get levels 20, 18, and 15. At the bare minimum, I want print level 18 on, on Prince Box, which is the first thing that's going to happen. He's going to learn a new spell called Firebane. Um, Firebane is a group attack. Actually, it's a f entire enemy uh, attack. It hits all enemies um, on the screen at once. Any enemy that's hit by Firebane takes between 50 and 65 damage. It is ex substantially more powerful in this version than in the original. It's uh, basically as strong as Exploded in the other games. But then yeah. Exploded is in this game. <laughs> and it's even stronger than, than that, yeah. So we're definitely going to try and focus on earning a little more experience. There's level 18. Great. That metal babble sure There we go. Uh, sure nice. made that a lot easier. Yep. Now the grind gets even more efficient. All right, well, I spend a little bit more time uh, trying to get a little extra XP on Prince BDD and Princess Meow. Uh, I'd like to ask if the uh, host would like to read anything right now. Sure can. Yes. Uh, Tyler, the driver, donates $300. Yo, Tyler, thank you. Uh, BDD holding down the late shift. Wish I was able to make it out this year, but such is life. Kudos to everyone making it happen. Best of luck, Diener. Thank you so much, Tyler. And Lavakian donates five dollars. Oh, Lavakian, Lef good to see oh, you. Oh, Lavakian. Yeah. Who's ready for revive cut in a marathon? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I haven't practiced it at all, and it's not a strategy I have any intention of doing. Yeah, but I have no idea how you could do it. It is possible to uh, to do it. It's not stable at all, as I was alluding to earlier. Thanks so much, Lafian, for, for the donation. He's a fellow Dragon Quest speedrunner and a friend of mine, so good to hear from him. He continues, uh, sorry for the late donation, but huge good luck and props to some Diener. Thank you very much. And... Uh, Let's see. Prince of Canuck 
side quest is still at $125. Need $125 more. And then we can Yeah, yeah, please keep the uh, dragon questing. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh I'd really like to to show off that additional scene, so uh... Yeah, still, I'm, I'm curious too. I, I want to see it. Still have time, but um, it would be uh, it would be easier to, to get it out of the way uh, a little sooner. Yeah, Tyler. <laughs> Tyler saying in chat, mine didn't go towards an incentive. It did not, sadly. But um, not only. Can donating toward incentives help Nami, but you can also potentially win prizes. Uh, the At the end of this run, these prizes won't be available anymore, so get your donations in now. Dragon Quest 5 DS, $20 minimum donation. Dragon Quest Mousepad 2, $5 minimum donation. Kenshin Dragon Quest game, $10 minimum donation. So. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna head back to Baron now. I'm definitely not saving the game here now. We're gonna keep uh, the shrine and Roan as our save point for the rest of the game. Um, we've come back here. Uh, there's a couple more important things that I want to do before we head into the, the ultimate level grind. Uh, well, I guess we're still in three phases of it, right? Are we still in the top floor of road? Uh, no, I've reached level 20, and I've got Firebane on, on, on Prince Box, so we're okay. ready to move to Hargon's Castle to do the level grind thing. Oh, we don't do anything on the snowfield in this version. Uh, we do our best to avoid it, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's blizzards that like using defeat, which mm -hmm. can just get to kill whoever they want. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a quick peek if there's anything else in my bag that I can sell. How much money do I have in the world? I only have 9k. Oh, we have 14k. Close. Uh, can we kick back a shield? I don't think so. Mm, nope. Uh, 14 and 6, so... Looks like I need about 1,000 more gold. Are there gold orcs outside? I don't think so. No, not here. Um, yeah, I, we're still carrying a leaf. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just gonna... gonna fight some stuff while I go head out onto the ocean and get Rubus's charm. Normally I would repel oh, most of right. the ocean encounters, mm -hmm. but I think I'm just gonna have to uh There's two fifty, we're a quarter of the um, way there already. Knuckle down and fight a couple of things to 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 get this gold that I need. It's also gonna be inefficient to take another trip back through Baran, but it's not much I can uh not much I can do about it at this point. I do need this heal shield. Um as, as the effect from it is really uh, very powerful. Um, I didn't talk about it earlier, but the heal shield, the shield of strength, it can be used as an item in battle, and whoever is holding it will uh, cast the heal more spell on themselves for free. Uh, it's a super helpful... It ran away. It's a super <laughs> helpful um, efficiency, MP efficiency play, as um, heal more for free is, is really, uh, really effective. It does give extra defense power to Prince Canok, who's going to equip it. And also, um, the really unique thing about the heal shield is you don't have to have it equipped to in order to use it. In fact, uh, Princess Meow can hold a heal shield and use it, even if she, even though she can never actually equip it. We definitely don't have enough money to to get. Actually, let's fight something. Probably gonna be smokes and lizard flies, but we got, oh, some, this is fine. we got some vampirus. We're getting pretty close. Okay. Good. I definitely won't have enough to purchase a second heal shield right now, but there are some pretty lucrative um, items that I can get during our our final level grind that uh, can be potentially sold to earn enough gold to purchase an extra one or two shields. I think we're about three or four hundred away. I don't know our exact values, but that's... So you're holding like, what, 6,300 and then 14k in the bank? I'll and take a quick peek at how much I have on my inventory these now. Three fights. Uh, okay, we've come here and we have in fact brought all five elemental seals. Rubus will give us Rubus's charm. Uh, and that's that's good. 
Or do we sail Seven, back? Six. No, I have enough. Uh, so I'm going to just cast Return yep, and go through enough. the... I'm just going to cast Return and go through the shrine again. This isn't going to... Like I said, this isn't going to be the fastest way to go through it again. I would have preferred to just have enough money the first trip, but... Well, we died a couple times. That Say la <laughs> Went from 1,400 to 700 a couple times. Yeah, if we had to do a little bit more level grinding in that section, we would have earned more gold. But since we killed the Metal Dabble and uh, can progress... I mean, I guess you could that. always sell some wizard rings. I mean, the <laughs> game's just thrown them out. We got an yeah. extra one. I'm not going <laughs> to dignify that with a response. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting as prepared as we can for this longest sustained grind. But, of... you know, I will say that's that's <laughs> a thing that secretly, like, eats me up every time we do that Dragon Quest three run, is mm -hmm. we sell one pretty early on in that run. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. yeah, it's a thing we do. And not in this run. There was no way I would ever pawn a... Oh, I need to take the gold out of the vault first. So we're going to take the all the gold we stored, the 14,000 gold we've got. Great. And we're going to get rid of our old armor, the leather shield. This thing is not useful anymore. It's been very useful for a very long time, but it's time to upgrade. All right, and then one last time, we're gonna do this equip trick where we go nothing, nothing, heal shield, and then put it all back on uh, light sword, magic armor, and I'm also gonna check Moon's inventory. She's got a spot for this evade cloak, great. Ready to return. Uh, three hour shrine out is... Caught right back up. It's, it's, it's okay. It's yeah, good. Three, three o'clock flat. All right. I'm just going to rest up, and uh, now we're going to kick off the final level grind. This is, um, as Shiner alluded to earlier, our silver bullet to finishing the end of the game is going to be when Prince Kanok learns the revive spell at level 25. Unlike in the original NES version, this is full-on Kazing. It, it revives a target with full HP and can properly be used in battle. Yes. It's basically like a world leaf, but Very in spell deal. form. And you can um, put wizard rings in his inventory to recharge MP to keep using it multiple times in the final yep. battle. And that's going to be a critical part of our success at the end, is basically to... Our wizard rings can still shatter in the middle of battle, too, yeah. so the more we have, the better. Um, that, but yeah, that's going to be a critical part of our endgame strategy, basically to protect Kanok at all costs and uh, keep him alive while everyone else dies repeatedly and gets revived repeatedly. It'll be fine. Especially poor Meow at the end of the game. Oh boy, she's gonna have a little bit of a, little bit of a tough time <laughs> on some of those battles. But that's okay, she still has very important things to do in those battles, yeah. uh, nevertheless. Unusual it... feature of the battle engine was seen where, but all spells are blocked, printed out slowly one letter at a time. Uh, you can auto-fire, you can hit any button to uh, advance the text in battle. Ooh. Uh, well, we run you into have the, to use the A button for Run into the all-stars here. I guess they should just kill me. Thank yep. you. Okay, so... Uh, we spent our money, though. No big deal. Yeah, I don't care about gold now, so I can die as many times as I want. It's... We're just trying to grab experience. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's on the well. Mm -hmm. It's better to get into Hargon's Castle, where the fights are more efficient. Yeah, I was going to explain that part of it. At this point of the game, our best place of earning experience is the second floor of Hargon's Castle. Um, this prevents, presents a whole host of very unique, oh, number two. Very unique challenges um, and, and difficulties. Um, within this run, um, uh, as you can see, the enemies here on this, this part of the world, what we affectionately refer to as the white ground, uh, they're really bad. Uh, in particular, blizzards can cast defeat, which is one of the most horrifying things that can be pointed in my direction. And we also might run into the Gigantus, the, the green giants. I know it's one of your favorite enemies, and they look like they're having a lot of fun. And So happy. Yeah. Look they're at the smiles. They're pretty brutal. Um, the, oh, whoa, dodge defeat there. Defeat has a one in eight chance of hitting um, my party members, and it rolls separately for each of them. So uh, we got a little bit, for oops, we got a little fortunate there that defeat did not hit me. I got a decent dodge, so it looks like I can play attack, defend, heal. These Gigantes can keep, uh, definitely can do a brutal hit as well. Uh -huh. They have huge HP, so more Good. chances wow. to go for it. 
perfectly calculated. Uh, yes, that was good. Um, but yeah, the enemies out here in this overworld's part are not efficient to fight. They're dangerous, and they take a long time to beat and award good XP, but we can earn experience faster in the castle. But as enemies with less max HP is I would, the main thing. But as I was saying, this presents a unique challenge because to recover my MP or revive dead characters, I have to leave the castle and walk back through this part. I don't want to do that. I want to do that as few times as possible. Ooh, yeah, we want to get in step. there and stay there. Yeah. Uh, ideally, our best way of earning experience is to gonna, gonna be get in that castle and stay in the castle as much as possible. Um, How many trips do you think it'll take? Two. I'm gonna say two today. It can be completed all in one go, but um, considering it's a marathon, I, at some point I would like to go back and save the game at least once. Um, so, uh, nice, good. By clearing this fight, we're gonna get inside of the castle and we can start our grind here. Okay, good. So this appears to be Lorasia Castle, but uh, it's not. It's an illusion. By using Arubis's charm, we can break that illusion and get into Hargon's castle properly. Um, so up here in Hargon's castle, the second floor, there are five different enemies that can possibly appear in different combinations. The best one that we want to see is the dragon. Green dragon, this is dragon warrior, and we wanna fight dragons. Dragons we saw earlier, they were 480 experience apiece, and since I have the Firebane spell now, groups of dragons like this can actually be handled pretty easily well, hopefully pretty easily. I only have one with sleep, though. Um, with Firebane and this, oh boy, and this Bolt Sword, or Thunder Sword combo. But I took three strong breath attacks in the very first encounter, and I'm probably going to die, but... You want to get in the castle and stay there. The game is not listening to me. Well, actually, that was the best thing that that guy could have done, so I might not be dead. While it's unfortunate that I'm going to have to use my World Leaf immediately, um, using it to stay inside of the castle is better than leaving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this is also critically what the Wizard Rings are going to be for. Um, yeah, there's no telling when we'll have to leave and get another Leaf. We might not need it. We might just play perfectly and have good enough luck to just stay. That would be nice. So, um, and that's also critically what we're going to utilize these wizard rings for. Oh, she took two hits. Let's just heal. <sighs> turn order. What are you getting out of Wait, was that Xaxes? By... No, she took way more than that. Well, this was a bad first trip. Cleared two encounters. Great. Meh. I'm not happy. I used my leaf, and I basically fought nothing for it. But those were both very just bad luck scenarios. Yeah. Like, she is not supposed to get outturned by a dragon. And I suppose I could have played heal more defend, but there really was way too, way too much bad luck there. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to let it bother me. We're just going to revive. Save the game, of course. And head back through Baron to go get another world leaf. As much as I would like to go back into the castle, um, especially at this level, the probability of someone dying in that part is just too high. And under normal circumstances, we can use the leaf to actually get more than one additional encounter. But that was definitely a bit of a bit of a rough luck there. Um, then again, the grind is at its absolute hardest at these lowest levels, so it's not too uncommon to to get bullied there a little bit. So. Once we get going on the grind, you'll start to see um, all the monsters appearing in in basically very similar formations. Some sometimes two plus two, three plus one, one plus three for the dragons and the flames. And basically, um, you just um, use some percentages on which ones are more susceptible to sleep and which ones that you can maybe uh, BDD can uh, one shot, random things like that. And you'll see Diener kind of going through this in his head instantly and just by impulse going right to the specific thing that is going to give him the best result and as you can see um sometimes even even when you put your faith in the best results d 
DQ has a better option or it has it has its own mind. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it just it just it says no. Uh. And and you just don't like to see it what in one battle and then again in the next battle because it's just you're just like, oh, I just used all my supplies and gotta do it again. Yeah. But you know what they say. Independent, Independent events. events. Just because we got beat up in one fight doesn't mean we're not going to get beat up in the next one, right? But these things, these things happen. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's one of the most unique and interesting parts of this run. Um, I, I was saying earlier, it's definitely one of the most challenging. It's not going to seem like it sometimes, since it's just going to kind of sort of look like a walk back and forth level grind. I assure you, every single encounter that we uh, are looking at is pretty perilous and uh, one false step and a little bit of bad luck and it definitely does not go well. Um, on top of that, there are a bunch of considerations that I'm trying to make with regards to my MP efficiency. The more efficient I can be with my resources and the longer I can stretch my MP, the less likely I'm going to need to rely on the wizard rings. Um, and while I will use the wizard rings to recover my MP when I need, the more efficient I can be, the longer I can go without using it. The fewer times I use it, the less likely they are going to be to be broken by the end of the run. On top of that, this is supposed to be a speed run. We are supposed to be trying to collect experience as fast as possible, and clearing encounters, just the encounter clear speed, is also another factor. Um, and, and by and large, it's basically the three skill sets that you really need to master throughout the whole game, not just this part of the game, but this part of the game, everything sort of comes together in its, in its um, truest form, I guess, that uh, we're trying to juggle, one, our party's survivability, two, our resource efficiency, and then three, our encounter clear speed. All three of these things need to work together, basically, in order to give us Nice dodge by yeah. BDE. That was good. That's very unlikely. Okay. If this thing dies, that would be really good. Yes, mm -hmm. good. It doesn't always die in two hits to Prince BDD's attacks here at this level. Um, I'm actually going to cast Heal more and then use Defense. This is a little less MP efficient, but I want to defeat this guy quickly. Defeating, right, him, cause... defeating him before he wakes up to attack me is going to be better than... I mean, I was the one with the hat, so the MP spent on healing would be lower, yeah. but yeah, clearing the fight one turn sooner is good. Yep, that's the that was the, the thought process there. Okay, good. We took care of that fight. That's a pretty scary fight, but uh, especially at this level, I'm surprised we didn't have too much too much more trouble there. Yeah. But I got lucky with the Gigantes missing his first turn, and then <laughs> oh, this again. Another dodge! Oh, I'm gonna be exploded. Yeah. This close to the castle, I was going for the, the more likely result of actually just running from that fight, but, you know, bad luck. Now, yeah, on the second floor of the twice. castle, um, it just has the the one guy, mm -hmm. and not not with the uh, gigant or Gigantes, right? Yeah, yeah. Gigantes doesn't appear as a monster inside of the second floor of Hargon's castle. He can show up on the third floor, but we're not going to go up there and fight monsters. Yeah, the ceiling's too low. He doesn't fit. Um, but yeah, when we encounter Arc Demon inside of the Hargon's castle, um, he always shows up alone. He never shows up with other friends. And frankly, that's one of the things that makes him really especially dangerous is, um... Thanks for everyone. Yeah, I miss the sleep. This is pretty bad. Let's just go for it. Yes. Nice. Okay, good. Obviously, I'm right next to the shrine. If I die, I really haven't lost much progress, but... We want the fight, EXP. Yeah, we want the EXP. Yeah. Of course. I'd probably just nice crit. cast Return and heal again. No, that's not worth it. We've got the bonus wizard ring. If we get into the castle, then... I'm feeling comfortable. No matter how much MP I have to spend on the overworld, as long as we get to the castle, I'll be okay. Uh, I'm too much uh, of a perfectionist then. Uh, Didn't right. spend that much MP to win that fight. Uh, yeah. Wait. I cast an Inferno. Yeah, that that's not what I want to do in this fight. 
That's, this might be overkill for the blizzards. I think they have it's, 60 to 80 no, HP. No, they have 92, so they're max. Okay. Okay, okay, good. We're good. Sleep on the Arc Demon is probably a better play. That's that's all I'm thinking about right now. That's usually what I do. Um, if Firebane plus Thunder Sword is usually enough to start killing the blizzards, but it's usually not enough to kill all of them. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's got like a decent chance of killing them, but not a great one. Uh, those three effects combined, however, Thunder Sword plus Firebane plus Infernos is almost guaranteed to kill blizzards. Only if all three of those effects roll like their absolute lowest amounts could could a could a blizzard survive. Yeah, I think I can't remember what kind of spell resistance they have in the NES version, but I think that'd be a good option. Nice. That's good. Okay, great. All right, we're in again. All right, we avoided uh, what we call the white ground loop. <laughs> that is not, and that wasn't, doesn't quite cl classify as a white ground loop. Yeah, the white ground loop is a phenomenon where you're trying to get here in the castle and you die on the overworld over and over and over again so many times that it has its own term because of how like actually common it is. To, to struggle to get over to the castle. It's even worse than the NES version where there's bat goons that cast Sacrifice that can also one-shot your characters or yep. at least do massive damage. So okay. you kind of fight on the white ground in that route anyway because it would be so hard to get here. And uh, the other thing is uh, casting Step Guard is less efficient than that. As soon as you step off a damage tile, your Step Guard effect ends. Uh, yeah, it works, merciful and it works a little differently. On. As long as someone in your party is standing on a barrier tile, you can keep your step guard. Okay, good. We're back inside the castle and hopefully ready to... Um, ah, just use the wizard staff. He's dead. And hopefully ready to fight lots of monsters and earn lots of experience points. Okay, box reach level 20. He learns the increase spell. That's uh, going to be helpful if I have to get back through uh, the overworld. Fighting Gigantus is going to be easier. I can use that Increase spell to buff up my defense power. Increase is going to be one of the most vital spells as we progress through the final boss rush, however. My defense power is okay, but the enemies still hit way too hard. Uh, increasing my defense power with that spell is going to be pretty important in basically every single encounter in the end. Yeah, cast it except twice for, for Except for one. At this level, I still want to cast Sleep. If I could hit two dragons, good. As long as two of the dragons fall asleep, then Prince Canlock should not be in any danger in the encounter. So. Yeah, he hasn't got the breath resist that Meow does from the water flying claw. Mm -hmm. uh, Lodo's armor is also providing a 25% uh, reduction to... From breath damage? From, yeah. from breaths and spell Same damage. Same effect from the first game. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, uh, that's why I'm most concerned about about Prince Box in the middle. Not only is his experience points like the actual one that I really care about, he's the one who needs to earn XP to finish the game, um, but he's also usually the one who's the most likely to die. So uh, we'll keep an eye on him and make sure he's safe. Yeah, we could give him the water flying cloth, but then then Princess Meow is exposed. We're yeah. probably okay with the magic armor. Yeah, this is how we're gonna, we're gonna have this set up for this grind. Okay, good. More groups of dragons. This is the best possible thing to, to see in this level grind, is to find more and more dragons. The dragons uh, can spawn with 72 to 90 hit points. Um, good, that one died, so I can just do this. Um, they always get hit by attack magic. They have a 60% chance of falling asleep. And now that BDD has reached level 22 and he earns 6 points of agility at that level, all of my characters are pretty pretty likely to go faster than dragons. Moonbrook's agility against a dragon is over 90%. Even Prince Lorasia in the front, his uh, agility chance against a dragon is now above 75%. So It's actually going to change my strategies here a little bit now that BDD is level 22 and he's earned those uh, points of agility. Hang on, I need to use wizard staff here. Um, interesting turn order, but that should work out perfectly fine. Good. So flames are more susceptible to sleep than dragons, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, flames will fall asleep 85% of the time, but they have the same strong fire breath attack that the dragons mm -hmm. do. So um, that does about 45 damage to everyone in my party who, uh, before applying resistances. Mm -hmm. Of course, Moonbrook is taking half of that, and um, can, uh, excuse me, BDD is taking 25% uh, reduction. All right, so now in this fight, I'm going to play Infernos. Ooh. The combination effect of Infernos plus Firebane will kill most of the dragons, and my agility is high, really high. 
If any dragons don't die to this, the Thunder Sword will finish them off. Like 99.9% of the time. Nice. Because all four of them with Fire Bane. Very good. Four Dragon is the best encounter. Gives almost 2,000 experience, and you can see it was really easy to kill them. Yeah, do that four times. That's a metal bevel. Pretty much. Um, in addition to the dragons and flames, of course, we're going to fight Killer Machine, who can't be put to sleep and has those really powerful attacks, uh, powerful physical attacks. Whenever he shows up, he's always got to be my first. Oh, boy, sleep did not work very well there. Double sleep whiff. Ooh, and then she got hit a bunch by the killer. That's... Oh, and then targeted. Attack. Yeah, that's bad. This should kill one of the dragons and make this safe. Good. Uh, we're going to use the leaf that we got now. Why is BDD holding the leaf? Because he's the most best survivability. Yeah. We pretty much are always going to put world leaves on uh, BDD. The downtime of losing a BDD attack is a little sad, but it's most reliable. So mm -hmm. you can get the yeah. revive in the middle of combat, and then the one revive can receive experience. Exactly. That's why I was waiting for an opportunity when the encounter was going to be totally stable before worrying about reviving. I have before attempted to revive one of my characters only to have a different one die, and uh, that made me very, very sad. Mm -hmm. So I try to avoid that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we fight uh, dragons, flames, and killer machines. We're also going to occasionally see gold bat boons, the, the bat demons, the bat devils. Those guys are really powerful and um, can double attack. They have fire bane, uh, but they are can fall asleep at 60% rate and uh, get stop spelled at 85% likelihood. I cast sleep on the wrong group. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, that was a mistake. That's all. Well, now three quarters of the foes are asleep. Kind of weird how, uh, you know, a dragon, an animal that probably has sleep as a biological function, is uh, less vulnerable to sleep than a flame elemental that is uh, dubiously alive. Um, would now be a good time for some donations? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I'm happy to report that the Prince of Canox side quest incentive has been met and exceeded. Nice. Thanks to our lovely donation tracker updating Tyler, the driver's previous donation. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Awesome. Um, we will definitely head back to the shrine, save at some point, and, and check that scene out as soon as I get killed in this castle. <laughs> <laughs> for for lap three of the final grind. Thanks again for that generous donation. Yes, yes, thank you so much, Tyler. And uh, we have a couple more donations to read here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Some D Sadie donates $50. Yo, Sadie. Yo, what up, Diener? These warriors don't look anything like dragons. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good to hear from you. Glad you guys are watching. Uh, Geister Carl donates $10. Here be dragons and warriors. And, uh, there's bid incentives for the names coming up for the next run. And if I remember right, Isaac and Garrett's name gets cut off near the beginning of the run. So the name in the lead for Isaac is Robin with $5. And Ocean is in the lead for Garrett's name at $15. And Red is in the lead for the menu name, I think at $15. And 37 more dollars is needed uh, to the win the Colossal Tournament um, incentive. So just a little update on that. All um, right. So how many flames do, do there have to be for it to be worth it for um, Box to participate in physical hitting them? Um, three. OK. Um, uh... We described earlier um, that uh, if I have three flames, uh, because BDD and Box are going to target different flames, I can kill three flames in two turns. So if there's only two flames, it's not going to speed anything up. Uh, it's still going to just take two attacks from BDD, or three from BDD plus two from Box, which would be slower than just using two turns. Um, I thought I had more metacorps. Oh, he has them. Um, 
and technically I could do a double attack thing with four flames, but four flames is a situation where that's actually a little more dangerous, and I would like to see how the first turn plays out before I just dive headlong into fighting them. So here's a good example with three flames. I can do attack, attack, sleep at 85% chance to fall asleep. All three flames should hopefully fall asleep, uh, and then I can follow up a two-turn win by doing attack, attack, defend. Which will kill the one in the middle, and then the one on the right. Two-turn victory. Yep. Nice. Perfectly calculated. Good. So right now we're in the, the middle part of this level grind. Um, the Sama, or excuse me, Prince Kanok 20 to 23 range. It's going to be, hopefully, uh, we can settle in for... Um, in here for a good bit. Uh, if we're in the castle fighting monsters and everything is going fairly efficiently, then oh, that was a little weird that I... It's a stop spell. There we go. Yeah. Stop spell is 85% effective on these guys, but I didn't say so earlier. And it's very important to silence them. Um, these bat demons will still often try and times try to cast magic spells even after they've been stop spelled, which of course will not work. Uh, but in addition, a very wounded bat demon can still cast Sacrifice, uh, which will instantly kill all three of my party members. And that's horrifying. I don't want that. They will only actually cast it as part of their AI if they're below one-eighth of their health, their max health. Um, but it's actually a situation where it's pretty common for me to get them in that health range because BDD, two attacks from his sword at this level, is probably not going to quite be enough which will leave it with probably a handful of hit points and a, a finger on the sacrifice button. I do not want that. Interestingly enough, though, if the bat demons are stop spelled, they forget this logic and will just try and cast sacrifice anyway, which in, hilariously will not work. So they are actually more likely to cast spells when they're stop spelled than when they're not stop spelled. <laughs> hmm. It, which is very different. Some other enemies are much smarter. The Magus we fought in the basement of Lorejo's castle, he stops casting spells when you stop spelling. He will just keep punching you for lots of damage. But because of his spells are so powerful, we have to stop spelling. Um, but yeah, the Bat Demons are not so smart when they get stop spelled. And being that stop spell is 85% effective, uh, I told someone one time, it's you can think of it as magical surround, right? Surround lowers your physical <laughs> right. attack accuracy by 50%. Stop spelling a bat demon is a basically like there's a 50% chance that the thing is just going to do nothing. So it's the same kind of principle in, 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 that, sort of, in that sort of sense. Yeah. All right, we're going to use a wizard ring. It's our first time using one. It did not break. Good job. As my MP starts to get low, of course, I do not want to leave this dungeon and come back here through the white ground. That is, uh, that is going to be a lot more stressful than just staying in here. That's what these wizard rings are for. So, um, we'll ho hopefully continue to be efficient with our MP as we continue to earn experience points and um, stay away from breaking those rings. I was going to request we patrol a different wall to see more of the lovely architecture of Hargon's second floor, but we can see that very nice, uh, all that, like, mural and stuff on the southern wall there. The, in the NES version, this just looks like any ordinary tower, like all the others, just red brick and the, like, the mesh ceiling that you can go under to mm. look at other places. Oh, we got an extra suit of magic armor. armor. We should have I, enough money for another heal shield by the end of this grind if they don't die, right? Uh, it's pretty common. Or if a dragon happens to drop a devil sword, those sell for 11,000 gold. Ooh. It's half of a heal shield on its own. So it's pretty rare that they drop one. Uh, regarding walking around here, I've actually picked this specific spot kind of for a reason, although it won't hurt to, for me to take a, a lap around the perimeter. So I tend, to, <laughs> I tend to, for specific reasons, want to stay near these stairs back down. Um, uh, there's a specific reason because you can cast a return on the bottom floor. Um, if I want to leave the dungeon, it's actually going to be most efficient for me to just step downstairs and cast return or use a warp wing. Uh, especially if Canox the one dead and I can't cast outside. Um, but you also notice, um, and maybe it's a little bit difficult to tell from me playing, um, I actually lose a couple of frames every time my characters change directions that they're walking in. Oh. I would prefer as much as possible to walk in long straight lines 
So I like to walk along the bottom there because it does pass by the stairs when I'm on that side, but it does give me a nice long path to, to walk. Yeah, I think the screen is wider than it is tall. I, it might be a square, but... Oh, we got some cool arches on the north wall. Yeah, so we can take some a little... Some jade statues. We can take a little little tour around the around the, uh, the perimeter here. Argon, you have exquisite taste and harmonious feng shui. But yeah, it's it's really subtle, but you'll you'll sort of feel it move a little stiffly when I try and change directions. So um, yeah, that's why I prefer to walk in straight lines if I can. Uh, actually, defense is perfectly fine here. He cannot wake up this turn, so he can't he can't kill me. Absolutely brilliant, Diener. Everything is just and then he to find out. And then he should be gone. The Arc Demon's max HP is 230, and oh, he's level 22 already. Nice. We've been grinding up nice and smoothly here. Usually takes about yeah. about seven minutes per level in this section. Um, up to about level 23. Level 23 is going to be an important benchmark for Prince Box. He's going to learn another powerful magic spell at 23. Uh, Christo's favorite. <laughs> Defeat. Oh, yeah. Um, Defeat is... Uh, we haven't been hit by it yet, but the Blizzards have it. One of them tried to use it. It's an instant death spell. Every monster has different resistances to all the different spells and status effects, and every monster has its own... Defeat resistance. Um, as it turns out here in Hargon's Castle, second floor, these green dragons that we've been trying to fight and earn a lot of experience from, they die to defeat 85% of the time. It is extremely effective at killing them. Furthermore, the defeat spell, um, when we see it here in a little bit, um, when it kills enemies, they simply disappear. There's no animation at all. <laughs> we can turn a battle of four dragons into 1,920 experience in about three seconds. Um, so once we do get one more level up, we're going to learn that, that defeat spell and hopefully find lots and lots of dragons. That would that would be the uh, the idea there. So let's recover some HP. And, oh, no, maybe not. BDD went for Fine. It's trying to set up a little bit of heal and MP restoration in the middle of the fight where it's more efficient. Uh, okay, good. Great. Both Box and Meow using their wizard rings and neither one of them breaking. It is a wonderful thing. All right, three more dragons. This is, again, always, always a pleasure to find three or four dragons because they should go down without too much fuss and then I get good XP. Wonderful. This, this grind uh, is getting a little bit easier as we go. Of course, as my characters get stronger levels, their strength and max HP is going up, which is definitely making things less stressful. BDD's max HP is about 120 now, and it was only like 90 when we started. So, you know, 30 extra hit points is a very nice buffer. All right, another three dragons defeated. That's, that's definitely good. As far as grinds go, this one is very compelling with how strategies change with every single level up. Mm -hmm. It's way more fun than Dragon Warrior 1 where you just hit A and fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really can't stress that enough that this is far and away the most difficult part of the run and requires a ton of knowledge about what's going on and how to react to all these different situations. There's so many moving pieces and our strategies are constantly evolving based off of each different level up we get, so. All right, we're just going to keep on earning experience here. Um, Priya, do you have anything on the host uh, station that you'd like to read? Oh, good. Sorry about the delay. That's fine. RPG Limit Break 2022 proudly supports the National Alliance on Mental Illness, aka NAMI, to get involved nice. in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring. Reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook 
where they can be found as NAMI, or on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate. It's not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. All right, thank you so much. All right, that's one of the trickier fights here. Um, Killer Machine plus Dragon plus Bat Devil. Got a bit of a uh, tougher tougher fight there. I've had a, a bit of a discussion with some other other players here about using sleep on the Bat Demon versus the uh, the Dragon. The Bat Demon is faster, but the Dragon is less deadly. So um, you're probably they have the same chance, 60% of falling asleep. So that's sort of not part of the equation. But we are supposed to go faster than dragons at this point, and uh, I'm trying to think how can we best heal. I think this looks good. Okay, good. You see, I'm chewing my best to try and end fights with uh, good HP uh, and MP if I need to. Um, I can, of course, restore my, my health after a battle is over by going into the menu, excuse me. But um, that takes a little extra time, and in some cases, because of the heal shield or because of the hat of happiness, it's actually more efficient for me to try and heal up in the middle of battle. Oh, hey, it's a it's a friend. <laughs> um, extra experience, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, however, um, it's not always the case that I can squeeze in healing with in the middle of a battle. I will try to, of course, um, but I find one of the most effective ways to stay in here and continue the, the grind moving quickly is as soon as a fight ends, just start stepping and looking for the next fight. The less time, the less downtime we spend in between battles, the, uh, the faster we can get into more battles and earn more experience. Yeah, BDD being the slowest is a blessing in disguise because it's like, okay, there's one enemy left. We're waiting for BDD to attack and one-shot it. But then we have our two spellcasters. What are they going to do? Might as well heal and use a wizard ring so that they can you know, heal while waiting for the fight to end. No it, need to open it, the menu at the end. Exactly. Um, I want to end fights and then quickly get into the next fight so I can keep earning experience. All right, so Prince Kanok is probably almost level 23, and then we'll begin crinkle time, as we uh, affectionately call that part of the grind. Ooh, good, four dragons. I can't remember what defeat is called in Japanese. Uh, Zaraki. Yeah, Zaraki, that's right. Yeah, right. remembering uh, having to deal with that in Zoma's castle when I was learning that run. <laughs> yeah, the Balrogs. Oh, great. Box games. Wonderful. Oh, and we got a Devil Sword. Nice. Oh, we're getting that second shield. Yeah, absolutely we're getting a second shield. So we got to go back at some point. We have to to complete Prince Kanek's yeah, side quest of uh, falling asleep a, a little longer. All right, so now we're in crinkle time. Now I really want to fight dragons like this. So hopefully we're going to see defeat. Nice. That's the best. So quick. That's the best demonstration right there of how powerful defeat can be. Um, not only at clearing out these groups of dragons, but also in formations that are mixed that have dragons plus other enemies, I can now evolve my strategies to try and clear those encounters even faster. Yes. Good. Uh, she gets exploded at 19. Oh, we got another <laughs> devil sword. Nice. What? Uh, we've got a lot of devil swords. We might be able to get a third heal shield. Yes. Um, we can get shields for everybody. That'll make the, the stress, or, or excuse me, the um, our push through the final boss rush that much less stressful. So this is a good example of Oh, we a, can use defense. Yep. Of there an encounter we that we can uh, change our strategy in because Cannot can hopefully kill those dragons on his own. Um, we can combine the defense spell with Loresia's high attack power to hopefully kill those killer machines in one hit. Same as dragons, they spawn with 72 to 90 hit points, so I did about 89, 88 damage there, so I got a kill on that one, but it's not always the case that I get a kill. I'm going to play this encounter uh, the same as before. Um, the dragons die to defeat 85% of the time, but most of the other enemies in here are fairly resistant to it. The exception is the flame. Flames die at 60% to defeat, which is good, but not reliable, right? Not really worth risking the MP when you might break a wizard's ring. 
Yeah, Although, that's, uh, that's basically it. If uh, I've got a lot of MP, because I still have five. I'm thinking we could be that aggressive, because uh, if uh, we can get a third heal shield, we can just rely on that for healing on the road for the final journey, and then use our wizard rings for this part. Yeah, a little bit, that case, definitely. Um, uh, but for that particular encounter, I'm probably not going to open with defeat, just because of how powerful the killer machine can be. And sleep is so effective that we're, we can disable them that way. Yeah. It, like, defeat might not even make the fight faster. I love the little sound it makes. Mm -hmm. little... <laughs> nice, good. One turn clear on that again. That's amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't think that would be possible. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think defense works on attack bots in the NES version. Yeah, it's actually guaranteed to, to land on them, so I don't even have to like worry about it missing. Only costs one MP. Getting great turn order, great defeat luck. <laughs> We're I basically doing like probably 30 or 40 damage for one MP by defense working there, like mm -hmm. stripping away. The, the attack bot has pretty high defense, so exactly. stripping away half of it is increasing BDD's damage by a large amount. Exactly. Um, the damage scaling in this game isn't exactly linear. It's, it's kind of a weird logarithmic thing, where if it's high, but you take away a lot of it, you're adding a lot more damage. Nice. There we go. That's all. Awesome. Targeted the one that was awake. That's good. I'm gonna top off my HP here and finish the fight. Good. Oh, I still have that meta blurb in my bag. No, I used it. Okay, it's fine. You were right. Level 23 is a really big deal. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. Um, big deal. Diener confirmed. Oh, they didn't see me. All right. Even easier. I haven't missed a single dragon with defeat. I know, yet. it's this beautiful. Is so great. I'm I'm smiling. You can't see it on camera, but I got a big smile on my face. Okay. Um we're not gonna go all the way up to level 25 on this grind. We're actually targeting a very specific XP threshold of 128,150. This is actually sort of mathed out. Oh, I just missed two. Yep. Dang. Finally. My streak has ended. Two out of like 10? Oh, I think we hit more than that. Yeah, more yeah, more than 10 dragons were instantly slain. Yeah, so uh, yeah, let's get some MP up. Great, still 100% perfect on the wizard rings too. Um, this is really gonna help a lot for the last part of the run. Right, box reach level 24. So anyway, 24, it took, we got to 24 faster than 23. Exactly. Oh yeah. Exactly. Uh, we're going to just plow through the last level and a half's worth of experience I need in this end game grind once I get defeat. Again, another reason why we want to be here in Hargon's castle because uh, most of the enemies outside in the white ground are practically immune to defeat. It's not going to do anything, but dragons are one of the most powerful enemies in terms of experience that will very reliably die to this spell. Yeah, we got the dragons from the, the last room of the Road to Rhone, but the other enemies are more high value. We got these gold bat boons mm -hmm. and those flames calling reinforcements, but they, they just get disabled by sleep. They're just free for the taking. Oh, here's that four flame encounter. Let's mm -hmm. see how this goes. Yeah, here's a good situation where I will use defeat and sleep. It's sleep is... Defeat isn't reliable nice. enough. I got That's three out of four. That was perfect. That's great. Um, Three sixty percent. Um, Finally, the luck is swinging in our favor. You know, none of these but, brutal uh, hits from Saber Tiger, one space away from the railing, and <laughs> box getting killed in lava. Cave. You're not even supposed to get a fight because you're supposed to cast out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to yeah, trying to that, save the six MP. That's one of those situations where it's like I, you really have to understand some things about the speed run to really fully comprehend how ridiculous that moment was. I don't. I've never done this run, and I can see it was ridiculous. <laughs> Well, it's only eight steps. I'll just save some. Okay. So, so anyway, yeah, I said my target XP is 128,150. That's not quite enough to get to 25, but it is mathed out so that once we defeat the first two of the five bosses that we need to at the end of the game, that will be enough experience to get him to reach level 25, just in time for the third boss when we are going to need it most. So um, we're almost done this level grind, which is pretty good. Uh, once we got back to the castle this time, this has been mm -hmm. a solid, this has been a solid uh, s stick around kind of. That's so funny. We got we got kicked out in two fights the first time we came here, and now the second leg has been flawless. I yeah. mean, this is very similar to um, the, the Road to Rhone. 
He got kicked with, out on the first fight and then yeah. went perfectly, getting all three items. Yeah. Sometimes DQ2 is going to DQ2. Yeah, and I did say it's the, the second hardest in the series. I'm just going to roll with the punches. As a speed run, this is an ex extremely challenging run, and I've spent a lot of time practicing and learning as much as I can about it um, to play it this well. And even then, uh, it still is not yeah, afraid a... to give me a little bit of trouble. Great one to show off at a marathon because of the... Uh how difficult it is, how unforgiving this game is, and most I, people don't acknowledge anything before DQ3. I actually appreciate how fair the game is if you put in the work and learn how, how to deal with all the circumstances. It's, yeah. it's actually, it, it seems really hard, and things can go wrong, but like if you know how to deal with all the circumstances, then you can do your best and, and hope for the best. And it's, it seems very fair in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, while uh, while we've definitely had some some interesting bad luck scenarios in this run, there are a lot of situations in this game where when things go wrong, it really is because you made a mistake. And even if you yeah. don't know what that mistake was, um, it's a very complicated game with lots lots to learn and lots to figure out. So that's why I like it, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very challenging, but it's very satisfying, very rewarding when you do get a good time, when you do get a good run, when you do get that solid one-shot endgame grind that is just one and done. It's it's a hard game to uh, learn right away because there's, there's so much stuff that you actually do need to know. But as long as you're okay with, you know, sa being satisfied with well, right now I can get through the game and I kind of understand some things. And then you just keep, kind of keep compounding on that knowledge as you keep going. You'll be doing something in the grind, like practicing the grind. And like Diener and I were talking this week and it's like, he said, you know, I was learning things about the grind and all of a sudden things that happened an hour and a half earlier in the game made more sense. Like why I would target that specific enemy in that specific uh, formation. And so like you just learn so much of things about the beginning of the game from the from the end game. Yeah, uh, five hundred to go. Those 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 key things that I talked about: um, uh, survival, efficiency, and clear speed. Uh, those I think are we're done. Yep, those are important uh, fundamental concepts that really need to be applied throughout the entire run. But at the end of the game, it's it's the most important to master all of these these kinds of skills in this run. Okay, well, I, we're nice. all done earning experience. I'm going to head back to Baron, and we're going to do the event. And a couple other things. Let me make sure I have a world leaf. I don't, do I? Mm -hmm. I used it during the grind, yeah. which is totally cool. Um, we're going to do a couple of things um, chopping. So we're going to have to make a couple of trips back and forth to the overworld in order to complete this event. So... Uh, uh, as I don't have a world leaf in my inventory right now. But well, well, I don't know. Is it just going to be faster for me to get a leaf, return, and then come back and do the scene and then go get another leaf and yeah, return again? I think that's is. rather than sailing back and forth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, that's what I you think. Need. I think that is. It, I think so. These traveler's gates are awfully slow, though. Sure are. Okay, first things first though, we're gonna go to the item store and um, sell off a bunch of stuff that we don't need. Uh, we got tons of fancy cursed Two swords. Two devil swords, one that I, 32 drop. That I can sell here. And we got the wizard ring too, man. Like We got a lot of excitement. And I have 24,000 gold in my inventory right now, so. Yeah, 11,250. Oh, forget, forget heal shields. Who wants a mink coat? I'm <laughs> <laughs> eh, just kidding. Uh, you don't have any space. Yeah, just give it to Box, but do not equip it. And we're going to give one to Meow. Uh, she has no space either. Uh, someone has a Devil Tail, I think. We've got some silly stuff in here. This extra suit of magic armor, that can go. Uh, I don't need three warp lines. <laughs> one should be fine. All right, good. Uh, then we're going to buy another heal shield. We're going to give it to BDD. Ah, oh, darn it. I accidentally equipped it. Oh, well. It's not a problem. I just need to put Lotus Shield back on. Oh, you can do the order thing to put it at the top of the menu. No, you want Thunder uh, Sword at the top? Uh, yeah, I want the Thunder Sword at the top, top still, just because that's what I'll be used to. And it does, well, it won't get used in the end. Uh, 
it, it, I can't bubble it to the top unless it's equipped, and I want Lotus Shield equipped because it has higher defense power. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're gonna head back onto the Overworld and get a World Leaf, and we're pretty much gearing up for the the end of the game here. So, oh, I want Repel. That's what I want. Okay. Um, Repel should work on everything. It uses a uh, BDD's level. Yeah, surprisingly, this Baron area. I, I don't know exactly what level you need, but even when I come out here to get World Leaves at like level 23, sometimes I'm still fighting things there. So I'm not exactly sure what level you need to be to repel those enemies. But we're definitely going to be safe here in the ocean. And we're going to keep casting Repel just to avoid the, the power of Repel is gone dialogue box. Yeah, as much as possible, I'm going to try and sail a little bit further before the message expires, just recast it. Seems like it uh, doesn't last as many steps as it does in other games. It doesn't last too long um, in this game. I probably cast it a little too soon uh, before, but um, I usually use an audio cue, but since we cast it before we got on the boat, it's a little bit off. All right. And then we're going to return. And now it's time for the the Prince Canox side quest that I want to show off. Uh, thank you all so, so very much for, for donating to see this. Um, this is something I alluded to earlier. The inn in Baran has a bit of a special cutscene that uh, normally we as speedrunners are doing our best to avoid pretty much at all costs because it takes a little bit a little bit more time than we would like to. Uh, I absolutely wanted to show it off for this marathon, so. This is what happens when you stay in the inn in Baron with no one dead. Yeah, Hargon Should... saw us killing his minions at the, yeah, he's at really, the choke point in the staircase. He's, all, he's really upset. That, all uh, funneling in a little conveyor belt, killing them one at a time. You killed 150 of my dragons? I'm gonna, I'm gonna curse that Prince Kanak. I'll show him what's up. Yeah. So we're going to stay here at this inn in Baran. I want to point something out here. Um, Prince Box is missing HP. He has 61 HP. And we're going to stay at the inn, and he should recover those hit points, right? Okay, we've stayed at the inn, and everything is good, right? Good morning. You slept sound. soundly. Where's your other end? Yeah, wh what happened oh, to Prince no. Box? What, where did he go? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, he's ill. If so, we can tend to him while he recovers. <laughs> He's lying around in bed here. Oh, look at him. Oh, poor sad oh, Prince Box. Just like Christo. I can't move. I think Hargon has laid a curse on me. Fortunately, it affects me alone. I, I'm i probably doomed. Yeah, maybe. Go on without me. <sighs> no, we need defeat. No, we need defeat. We need revive. We need you, buddy. So, um, oh, please don't tell me he has the world leaf. He totally does. That's No, funny. no, it's in the box. <laughs> it's in the box. It's in you the know, box. They give you yeah. a box. It's in the box. The box we can hold. There's the always room in the we box. Can, we can have BDD use. <laughs> Just remember. World Leaf on box. The order is different <laughs> here. He's third in, yes. the, in the order now. This really oh, confused wow. me for a minute. Okay, so what happens is Hargon has cursed Prince Prince Box with his his vile magic. To recover him, we are going to need to use the World Leaf. So we're going to boil up the World Leaf, place it in Box's mouth. Color is returned <laughs> to Box's face. <laughs> and his health was restored. Thanks, I'm all better now. I'm sorry for all the trouble I put you through. Let's get going. Nice. Yeah, we get the we get the music jingle here for, for the party recruitment. And now Pr Prince Canuck has rejoined the party, so. Nice. We, uh, yeah. Thanks we're... everyone for donating for that. Yeah, 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 thank you. So the reason I want to point this out, he's still missing time. hit points even though we <laughs> stayed at the end. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much all set to, to finish the game now. Um, Once we get our leaf again. Uh huh. So we're just going to hit the overworld to grab another world tree leaf and then save the game one more time, and that's going to be the last save that I do. Unless, well, if I do part of the boss rush and die, we'll uh, be able to... Oh, I got to fight. If we end up doing part of the boss rush and then dying, then I'll probably save the game. I have five wizard rings still. This is... <laughs> And three Ooh. shields. One, yeah, and three <laughs> shields. This is one more than I'm used to having. And, well, this is frankly, this is some marathon this is frankly three more yeah. rings than I'm used to having, and just armed to the teeth. Two more shields than I'm used to having too. So that's not going to make the final boss rush like trivial. It's not going to make no. it a lot easier. It is going to make it's it easier. Gonna, we'll have MP to spare, but I mean, our max MP and max HP is the same. It'll be just as hard to beat Argon's three generals on the way up. There are some cool and interesting variations of strategies I can do since Prince BDD has a heal shield. 
Oh, um, I'd like to see those. Um, mostly instead of opening certain fights with defend, I'm just going to have him spam the heal shield yep. over and over and over again. And um, as he takes damage, he's simply just going to heal himself back up. Many of the final bosses that we're going to fight in this boss rush are substantially faster than he is. Um, ah, so he can reactively heal to whatever they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think his initiative chance against Zarlox is under... 5%. I think Hargon is guaranteed to go faster than him. Hargon is actually, aside from Metal Babel, is the fastest enemy in the entire game. I mean, he's a wizard, and wizards have high agility. In you're, you're, you were right all along. <laughs> all right, so from here, um, I'm going to head over to the castle one more time. I want to turn it over to um, the host real quick and, and see if there's anything else that um, would like to be read before we, we head into the final stretch here. that deserves special thanks is one that worked on our overlays, Oro, who can be found on Twitter at OroLen. And um, we want to send out thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash French restream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese restream. Those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon. Go check them out and send them some love. Uh, konnichiwa to everyone from Japan watching. Bonjour, comment ça va? <laughs> Thank you. I gotta say, for a Dragon Quest game, our max HP is hilariously low. Even in Dragon Warrior 1, where you finish at level 19, I think you have 130 max HP. And here, our uh, our epic meathead, BDD, I think the only Dragon Quest character who can beat him in an arm wrestle might be Carver. He's only got like 140 max HP. The HP scaling in this game is very weird. Yeah. It feeds um, right into what I was saying with how like every battle's a glass cannon fight. That's, that's what I described it earlier. It's everybody's a glass cannon in this game. Everybody can do tons of damage, but has not so much HP and, and will probably die pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to see a little bit of a difference in that with some of these final bosses when we get to the top, as some of them have a lot more HP, but yeah, this is a yucky fight. I'll take yeah. my chances. At this point, um, I'm not interested necessarily in earning experience. If I'm fighting enemies from here to the castle, it's probably because I think it's going to be safer to try and kill them than it is going to be to try and run away from them. Yeah, it's, not, it's not because I'm interested in earning experience or anything like that. Yeah, we got that 5,420 TNL to next level on Prince Box. I, I don't know how much the three bosses give, but if it's like 1,800 apiece, then we're good. It's, it's programmed, uh, it's planned out so that the second boss that we defeat um, Bazuzu is going to be the one who is going to flip us up to level 25. Oh, he might need revive strats for Zarlox. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yep. Because he can cast Explodet. And the, uh, I can't remember who said actually. <laughs> I know uh, Explodet is in there, though. Explode it, double physical, and heal all, basically. Uh, That's pretty much. I, he's got strong breath, too, but. Okay, pretty much going to be. Takes us to the next floor. Going to be the protagonist of his own Dragon Quest game in, in the future, maybe. All right, so we're going to move up to the final boss section. Um, yeah, again, this is just going to be easier for me to deal with normally. Um, and if I do end up fighting a couple of extra encounters and I get revive early, that's not certainly not going to be a bad thing. I can heal everyone for free in the fight while all the flames are sleeping with a heal shield on everybody. But we also have five wizard rings to restore all our MP with complete impunity, so yep. take your pick. Yep, if I get an opportunity in battle to heal, I will. If I don't, I'll just heal up outside of battle. All right, so now we're moving up to the third floor. The third floor also has random encounters. These guys are pretty mean. We're going to probably see, if we do see monsters, we'll probably see a lot of metal babbles, but unlike in the TAS version, we're also going to see them mixed in together with not-so-friendly monsters. I kind of don't want to see things here. If I have to stop and fight a Magus, for instance, I will. Um, excuse me, stop spells. The Black Wind right? Howls. Okay, so uh, we fought this guy a lot earlier, and uh, he was a real, real pain, but uh, at this level, we will find that he is far less of a problem. 
as he dies in two hits. Yep, two shotted by Thunder Sword. And, and it's actually a chance, but they do have the a level. they do have a drop chance of bolt staff, so you can get more bolt staffs. <laughs> nice. That's, that's how you're gonna have. Actually, Zarlox drops bolt staff too. Okay, there are no more random encounters once we reach this part of the castle. Instead, there will simply be five monsters standing between me and the end of the game. So, before we fight our first guy, Atlas, I'm going to do some inventory stuff. We're going to move the magic hat and the water dress to box and equip up with the water dress and the magic hat. And we're going to put the evade cloak. Ah, we can't equip that. On Moonshine. All right. And we're ready to go. Atlas is our first guy. He is a pure physical attacker. He always Hello. attacks twice per turn and um, gets his own background. Um, it's pretty mean, so we're going to use... Oh, no, just... Sorry, just fight him. Increase and then defend. Oh, good. We cast Increase before Atlas went on the first turn. This means I'm probably going to win without too much too much fuss. Ah, I tried to use a Warpoint. That's not going to work. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> critical hit. Save Save from there we go. Well, there we go. Oh, box is 25 already. Yep, we got it early because we killed, killed some monsters on the way up, which is cool. Okay. And why does she... Oh, because I moved the items out of her bag, of course. Okay, up next is Captain Howdy, Bazuzu here. Bazuzu is pretty interesting. He's got a ton of powerful spells that he can use, but he's also the one who's the most vulnerable to status effects, including sleep. Uh, there's a pretty good chance he falls asleep. He didn't this time. Stop spell missed. Oh, nice. and he, he died to defeat. Wow. That's not super common to kill him with defeat, but he can die to defeat, and that's the fastest way to beat him. So nice good luck there. All right, moving into the third fight, Zarlox. Zarlox is a giant troll because he has the heal all spell. Uh, once his HP falls below half, he may at any time decide that he wants to heal himself back to full and effectively reset the, the damage on the fight. In the early turns here, I'm going to focus on, again, increasing my defense power with this increased spell. Um, I'm going to cast it two times. And from here, pretty much just hang out and uh, keep attacking him. Attack magic is only 50% effective. It misses 50% of the time, so um, it's not super, super helpful to try it. Uh, it's not very efficient. He cannot be hit by defense. He cannot be put to sleep. There really isn't a whole lot I can do against this guy, except keep trying to bash through him and um, hope he decides to either not heal himself or if I can score a timely critical hit when he's a little bit wounded, he'll simply disappear, and that's going to be the best best outcome. If he's really weak, I might try to throw um, some, uh, some magic, attack magic his way, um, but that's really only going to be practical if he's nearly dead. So we'll just keep trying and be patient. Okay, this looks pretty good. We might have him gone. Uh, I'll just try everything I've got. Okay, nice. he didn't heal himself. If oh, one of these spells it. hits, hit, I'm hit. pretty sure we can oh. get him. Hit. Nope. As you can see, magic does not do much. No, I was wounded, weak enough anyway good. to still beat him. Okay, was that one heal? Yeah. That That's not bad at all. It was a lot better than 20. We did a practice run earlier, and wow, he cast heal all so many times, I think he ran out of MP. <laughs> they keep track of MP? Uh, yeah. And that guy can run out of MP. He has like 250, though. It's it's for him to run out of MP is actually kind of insane. Heal all costs eight, I think. Mm -hmm. And explode it costs like nine or something. He's constantly spamming that at you. All right, we're juicing up with the wizard rings. I'm trying to max out my MP, and oh, the there's our first. Silent. That's oh. our first broken ring. Oh no! Only four I left. I only have four left. Wow, we can only. Oh yeah, I... the mini bosses stay dead, right? Yep. So right now there's only two enemies left. I have to defeat. First is the almighty. What's his name? I think his name is Ar Argon. All right, we're gonna fight him. Um, and um, oops. Uh, we're going to see a pretty similar setup here with Zarlox. In fact, the fight is going to go pretty much identically um, where I set up with Increase, and he's going to cast Explode It and do a bunch of double physicals. He does not have Heal All, however. He only has Heal More, which is basically going to heal him up for as much as I do each turn. So it's kind of just going to delay the fight. Oh, why am I using Heal All? She has a shield. So, we have more wizard rings. We've got to flex. <laughs> so, um... Oh, sweet breath. That's sweet breath is pretty rare for him to use. And frankly, him 
putting Box to sleep is kind of stressful. Okay, good, he woke up. Um, it really is the Box show right now. If, if Prince Box is alive, I'm winning, and if he's dead, I'm scrambling to try and revive him with my World Leaf. Um, and I'm still using Heal All, and that's how I'm used to having this many shields I actually am. Yeah, everyone can heal themselves, with, but BDD's got to keep attacking, so yeah. someone has to put a heal on him. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing a box. He's wearing the magic hat right now, so nice critical nice. hit. That should Ooh, defeat nice him. Good. Right on. All right. Way We're more gonna... HP than the NES version, where you just get one bite, 255 Blast HP it. at the most. Blast it. Yeah, no, uh, this is time for the final boss, Malroth. He's called Shido in this version. That's his name in the original Japanese. So, oh, there's another <laughs> one. Only three left. Yeah, I think we'll be okay, probably. Uh, uh, you must know everyone's max HP and MP numerically. You're going to try the final battle at the exact mm -hmm. same level across the board. Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to really quickly uh, double check my equipment before I fight this last guy. Uh, Thunder Sword, Heal Shield. I'm actually going to pass this to himself and heft it. Uh, Have it at the bottom? Yeah. I can press left on the inventory and it'll show up. Okay. Now, Shido has a lot more than 255 hit points. Uh -oh. I believe he has 1,850. This is a very interesting battle. We're first going to set up by bu building up my defense power with increase and lowering his accuracy with surround. This is very important. His, his physical attacks are extremely strong, so... Surround. Yes, first try surround is very good luck. He hit me once, but that's okay. We healed. I'm going to cast Increase again. Now I'm going to start casting Defense to lower his defense power down to nothing. When he uses this strong Fire Breath attack, it does close to 100 damage um, unmitigated to all of my party members. I actually need to cast Heal All. Um, and it's pretty uh, bad. Uh, this is fine. It looks horrible, but it's not as bad as it looks. I kind of misplayed. I shouldn't have used the shield earlier. Also, why am I attacking? <laughs> All right, so we're going to see a kind of a seesaw battle from here. Uh, what's going to happen is every time uh, he uses that fire breath attack, I need to sort of slow down and make sure everything is safe. Um, and every time he uses increase to buff his defense power, I'm going to use defense to lower it back down. Every time he uses defense to lower my defense, I'm going to build it back up by casting increase. And then the rest of the time, I'm just going to try and heal up, stay stable, and um, deal damage. What we're looking for is for him to miss physical attacks. Since we've lowered his accuracy with Surround, I need to do Defend Heal All play here. I like uh, this slower music. It's slower uh, than in the NES version. If he, if he misses his physical attacks, I basically get a free turn. He's using a lot of Fire Breath, but he picks Fire Breath 3 eighths of the time, so it's not uncommon to get this much fire breath. Oh, people, you're, you're targeting Meow for healing, but other people are getting healed anyway. I thought this was like the NES version where if you target a group that's gone or someone who's dead, then you hit air. Uh, but it looks like the heals are redirecting. No, they're not. Okay, I just can't follow fast yeah, enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably just... Uh, uh, let's use the wizard ring. I'm got decent MP. You know, let's go with the Dream Man. Yes! <gasps> oh! This is like 12%. Like, he almost never falls asleep, but this is so funny. He's asleep. I'm gonna crush him now. <sighs> I've never seen this. I've I've hit sleep on him maybe twice ever. This is so This is I mean, so you, mentioned it, you mentioned it yesterday, and I did I I'm, had I'm no so clue. glad this happened in the marathon. This is so fun. Oh, yeah, no. He finally woke up, but he took an enormous amount of damage. We, were, we did a lot there. I was just gonna try it once for the for the for the laughs, and we actually hit it. That's that's wonderful. Okay, we're gonna use heal and heal all here. Good. Yeah, heal more does hit for about eighty, survive. but our our max HP is just high nice. Enough for nice heal double more. dodge. Nice, very nice, good. Nice double dodge there. So that's gonna give me a turn. Let's keep attacking here. Good. He hasn't been using any of his magic. He's just been using breath and attacks only. Good heal all play there. I'm, I'm glad I picked heal all. Okay, instead of heal more there. Okay, good turn order. Yes, nice. that was a super easy kill. Wow. Thank you, sleep. <sighs> all right, and with that, Hargon's castle crumbles, and all that's left is to head back home to Lorisha and do last input. So while I head back and do that, I've got some, some shout-outs I want to make. 
Um, so first off, thank you all so, so very much for having me on here. Um, it, was, it was a good time. I had a great time coming on and playing. Even if the run didn't go super, super smoothly in some parts of it, 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 was, it was a roller coaster. And uh, that's, yeah. that's the, the, the perfect embodiment of Dragon Quest speedrunning in general. You had a huge valley and then a huge peak. Um, uh, I want to shout out uh, everyone, all my friends in the Dragon Quest RTA, Dragon Warrior speedrunning community. Um, we have a, a Discord channel um, that you can come and, 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 and join. Um, we've got tons of guides and resources on practically every single Dragon Quest game that there is, if you're interested in speedrunning one. And uh, in particular, I got three people in the community I want to shout out. Uh, my friend EvilAsh25, um, who put together some, some extra work for this game uh, in putting together the adjusted buy-sell menus, which are different in this version that I used earlier today, and then blue ones, but that's okay. Thank you so much, Ash. Um, second, I want to thank my friend Star of Violence, um, a good friend of mine in the community, and um, one of the people who really helped get me into Dragon Quest II, Dragon Warrior II running. And um, lastly, my friend Pop, Popson from Japan. Thank you so much. Domo. <laughs> Pop is a world-class Dragon Quest II player and just an awesome personality in general. And, uh, I, I can always just talk to him and ask him questions when I'm, when I'm struggling with something in this game, and, and he's, he's great at teaching me more things about it. Um, my friends and, and family watching back home, SCMD, mom, dad, love you guys. And um, yeah, you all at home for watching too. I hope you enjoyed Dragon Warrior 2. You guys have any additional shout outs you guys want to get? Uh, I think you got it all. Yeah, I, I haven't got anyone in particular to add. Shout us to the DQRTA community. Well, I'm really glad that you guys were here to join me. And I'm going to be asking to, to stop the timer in just a moment, as last input will be here when I'm declared the king. Thou must. Prince Box, Prince Meow will step forward, and that's time. Nice. <laughs> Amazing run, Diener. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We hit um, the estimate. One, four ten. One, one last thing um, that's gonna gonna happen here at the end uh, after a very long fireworks show here is the ending credits theme. And you all have met the incentive. I will be singing Konomichi Wagatabi for you all. Uh, I am not a professional singer nor a native Japanese speaker, but I will do my best. So uh, this fireworks scene will actually take a little bit. So let me. Uh, let me get prepared here, and um, then we'll sing the song for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed. It, I didn't it, have time to learn it. Take it away, Diener. Yeah, Maybe I'll just hum the accompaniment. I do love the credits music in this, this one. Is, this is one of my favorite ones, and probably a, of the, the post credit songs that I sing. Um, it's it's kind of tradition to sing along with the songs if, if you know the words. So. Uh, I gotta invent some I, for Dragon Warrior 4. I think this is I think this is my favorite uh, song to sing. So I'm happy to happy to get to the end of Dragon Warrior 2 to be here at RPG Limit Break 2022, and I'll be singing Konomichi Wagatabi. It plays the whole theme here, so it's almost done. And thus the young heirs of Loto's blood again restored peace. Prince Box, Princess Meow, and King BDD. King will, BDD. Will for, be forever known as legends. All right. Shonen Jidai no Mihatenu ono yume. Ima demo kokoro ni. Iraki tsuzuketeru Ima asayake no sora o Miyagete chikiri ni kono mune uzukaseru Pack
この道我が旅果てしなく続く出会いと別れを繰り返しながら今夢を熱く燃えたぎらせ明日へ明日へ歩き出す少年時代の見果てぬおの夢今でも心に抱き続けてる今星空の下で佇み遥かな思いを抱きしめるぬくもり続けてる夢たちと影ぼうしが道連れ雨も風も左も嵐も友達だったこの道我が旅果てしなく続く出会いと別れを繰り返しながら今夢を熱く燃えたぎらせ明日へ明日へ歩き出す明日へ明日へ歩き出す Thank you. Thank you so much. Domo, Domo, Domo. All right, and with that, that is it. The end. Dragon Warrior 2, Game Boy Color version, the end. Thank you so much. One last time, my name is Sam Diener, and I hope you've enjoyed、uh, Dragon Warrior 2, Game Boy Color version. And that's going to be it for me. Congrats. What a lovely song. Thank you so much, Sum Diener, for that amazing Dragon Warrior 2 any percent run. Great couch commentary from Portable Mario 920 and Shiner CCC. So the time has come for the princes behind the curtain, the tech crew, to cast sleep on the stream. The stream is going to restart right now, but we'll be right back with Plexus Golden Sun any percent, no SQ run. Le Grand Grand will be your host for that run. And、uh, this concludes my first time ever hosting for a run. It was an absolute blast, and I hope I'll be able to do it again next year. I'm RP Priya signing off. Please enjoy the rest of the marathon, everyone. We'll be right back and mash that refresh button.
Welcome back everyone to RPG Limit Break 2022. I am Legrand Grand and I'll be your host for the, for the run of Golden Sun done by Plexa. Uh, so if you don't know what RPG Limit Break is, well, simply, simple enough, it's a speedrunning marathon that's going to run up until Sunday this week and it's going to be 24, uh, it's going to be there all day long, so it's going to be a really, really great uh, event. Um, if you are not really good with English and you would like to still follow the stream, we would like to thank uh, the people involved in our foreign language restreams. So we've got our French restream that can be found at twitch.tv slash le French restream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them th some love. Um, We have a $10 donation for the Burning Hunter saying, how could I not donate after that awesome ending credit performance? Awesome Dragon Warrior to run. Donation goes to run our choice. RPG Limit Break 2022 is coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. We're raising money for NAMI, the National, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which was formed in 1979 as a grassroots advocacy organization by a group of parents whose children suffered with serious mental illnesses, and NAMI has maintained the f that focus to this day. 